back by popular demand, introducing the one, the only, Gemporia Festive Ball. Party with your favourite presenters from Gems TV, Hobby Maker, Jewelry Maker and Sewing Street. We're all together for a night that's going to be the talk of the town. Situated at the fabulous Stratford Manor, close to the world-famous Stratford-upon-Avon. Tickets are just £99 per person, including a welcome drink, a three-course dinner, half a bottle of wine and music that'll have you dancing all night long. There'll also be a shop at the party and even a tombola if you're feeling lucky. Numbers are limited, so order your tickets today to avoid disappointment. Let's make it a night to remember at the Gemporia Festive Ball on Saturday the 25th of November. See you there. Hey, <laughs> good morning everybody, Stuart Hillard here. How are you? Welcome to Thursday Sewing Street. And it's also International New Friends Day. So I want to say a really big, bright good morning to anybody who's tuning into Sewing Street for the first time. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. And talking of new, we're in a new studio. Have you noticed? We've got this glorious new space. It is absolutely, look at all that space. I can't wait to mess it up. It's also, this is interesting for lots of us, International Gin and Tonic Day. So um, yeah, that's tea sorted, I'm kidding. <laughs> really nice to have your company. We're gonna get straight into it. Let's start as we always do with our early bird. Now, our early bird is a game of two halves. Storage. Storage, it's what it's all about, isn't it? I aspire to beautiful storage, to being neat and tidy and organized. So this is a double whammy. We've got two amazing storage boxes, particularly useful, I'm thinking, beads, buttons, bag findings and hardware, needles, embroidery threads, if you've got your special Valdanis, look at this crash. This is for two, 44 99 Almost half price there. Uh, now these are beautiful quality. Do you know, I bought some new storage boxes recently, just big plastic crates. Um, they're a lot of money. They're, I was surprised. I was surprised at how much they were. This is an amazing deal. Look, inside, I mean, obviously you can customize these, but inside you've got all of these amazing boxes. Two, four, six, seven, eight. So you've got 16, 16 boxes within each. Absolutely brilliant. If you think about organizing, perhaps your reels of thread in here by color, your skeins of embroidery floss. What about if you do a lot of beadwork or button work, or that fabulous diamond dots. I love that, that kind of thing. All your tools. What about your Santangle pens? Some of your smaller stencils, perhaps some of your embellishments as well. Um, you don't have to keep those small boxes inside, of course. These could come out. You could have these um, on a shelf and use the space differently. What's lovely as well is these, these boxes do not just kind of float around inside. Let me show you inside, you've actually got these design, these dividers down the side. So when you put these boxes in, they're actually held. 
So for example, if you needed to divide it up into two, use one of your boxes. So now you've got two separate areas that you can use your box. Maybe your EPP, uh, in, well, perhaps your, your um, papers in one box, <clears throat> your needles, your thread, maybe your working fabric and your completed piece of work. I mean, all sorts of ways that you can use this. You can divide this up. I'm just going to divide mine up there. So now I've got four small open sections plus my boxes. Really, really useful storage. The other thing, of course, is that you can get your storage box loaded up. It's like a small suitcase. You can see what's inside and then you can take these along to your class, to your workshop. Nice and safe locking system there as well. You're getting two for $44.99. What about pre-winding your bobbins? What about sorting all of your thread? I don't know about you, but I have got hundreds of reels of thread, most of which are on the go. Isabel says, morning, lovely Stuart. It's pouring with rain here. Uh, so I'll be inside doing some Jacobean crawl work. I love crawl work on a large curtain panel I've made. Heaven. Absolutely gorgeous. Thanks, Kat. I've got some gorgeous threads here. Ah, I've got a gorgeous new embroidery machine and actually thread storage has suddenly become a really, really important thing for me. They are, they're really nice tight locks those actually. Oh gosh, this is going to fit loads in here. Let me see just how many reels of thread. I reckon that's probably comfortable. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve reels of thread. You could have some pre-wound bobbins in there as well, couldn't you? Yeah, absolutely brill. Love that. Really nice and secure too. And of course you could just load one of these up with your current project and take that with you. Pop that into your bag um, and take that along when you're traveling. And you've just got a nice secure little box there. You're absolutely not limited, are you, by the size or the structure. These are not fixed in here. You can take them out, you can move them around. You could keep one half all boxes, the other half completely empty. Uh, so for example, I'm thinking if you do things like cross stitch, I love a bit of cross stitch. Um, you could have things like, thank you, you could have things like your, um, your hoop one side, your working fabric, and then your embroidery floss. Karen says, morning, Stuart, what are the measurements of the boxes, please? Both the outer and the inner. I will do it for you now, my darling. Uh, right, have tape measure. I'll have to give you an in inches, is that all right? Right, so um, width of the box, 15 inches. The um, depth of the box, with hinges and everything, 12 inches. Are you thinking, is this going to fit inside a cupboard or a bookshelf? And then, clever, I'm thinking the same. And then the depth, five inches deep. So that's your outer measurements. And then your boxes inside, each one, it's mm, a shade under seven inches across. This way, a little under five inches. And depth-wise, I reckon that's going to be about an inch and a half. Mm, no, about inch and a quarter, about an inch and a quarter deep. Um, now remember, you don't have to keep all of the boxes inside the case. Uh, you can take them out, you can mix and match. Remember, you're getting 16 inner boxes plus one outer, and then you get a second one. You're getting exactly the same. Look at that, all of that for 44.99. Amazing. What about if you do things like cake decorating? What about things like painting? Um, what about things like, if you do, well, cookie cutters. And you know, if you do um, flower craft, things like that. Um, pencils, crayons. What about organizing your shed? Um, all the screws and nails and bolts. And I'm saying these words like I know what they mean. 
mini screwdrivers. <laughs> Am I right so far? Um, you get two. So 32 inner boxes, two outer cases for $44.99. You should be paying $79.99. And having just bought a load of storage to try and get organised, that is a brilliant price. Uh, good morning to Claire. She's morning, Stuart and all. Morning to Pam. Good morning, Sandra. Blowing a hoolie up here today, she says. Um, thanks, Storm Babbitt. Uh, a day inside, thanks. Um, yeah, exactly. Princess says, morning. Oh, dear. You do realise these are photograph storage boxes. Um, no, not, not at all. I mean, you can use them for that. But um, all sorts of different things for these. They would be great. They would be absolutely great for storing photographs, wouldn't they? But, I mean, you can store anything you like in here. I'm thinking buttons, beads, embellishments, bag finding. To organise my bag hardware, these would be perfect absolutely perfect now that's for two but i've got a second early bird we're more limited on this but i'm going to offer you a second early bird which is for one regular price 39.99 for this let's see our early bird and it might be that you want to combine and get three 24.99 great that's a better price that's a great price, in fact. 16 inner boxes, one outer case. Absolutely brilliant for whatever storage you want to use it for. Um, now, we are doing a very, very slightly better price for two. You know, it's often the way, isn't it? But if you want to get three, if you want to get five, it just gives you the option of mixing and matching. If you just want to get one and give it a try for $24.99, very limited stock of this though, I'm afraid. So if you do want one on its own, you'd need to be quite quick. Uh, now, do we have any messages in? I'm just gonna try these for um, embroidery floss actually, because I think that would be brilliant. Oh, Sharon's emailed in to say good morning. Good morning, my lovely. Oh, I want to say a big bright good morning and lots and lots of love to um, Jennifer this morning. Thinking of you, lots of love to you. Um, just trying some embroidery flosses in here. And I mean, this is absolutely the perfect length. So I'm gonna use this one for all of my neutrals, my browns, my tans, blacks, things like that. Just a great opportunity to get organized, isn't it? And not only that, but you can see what you've got in the box. And I think once you can see what craft supplies you own, it actually stops you doing that thing that we've all done, which is buying the same thing twice or three times. You know, and it does slightly. Yeah, I mean, it's true, though. It, it, it's much better to be organised. Know what you've got. See, there we go. I can see what I've got now. In it goes. And now I can organise my greens. And I just feel this way, you know what you've got. And also as well, when you're thinking about what you're going to craft. You know what you've got, you know what you can work with. Morning all, I store my stamps and small dies in these boxes. Gillian, that's a brilliant idea. Yeah, for paper crafters, if you're a stamper. What about sewing machine feet? Um, we've talked before about how quite a lot of us have got more than one sewing machine. I'm not judging. <laughs> but um, sewing machine feet, brilliant. Yeah, love it. Right, it's time for the menu. I will leave that one with you. Uh, the menu for today, let's have a look. So at 8 a.m., we're starting out with Sandra from Santangle and the Santangle fold-over bag and bag handles. Already going on pre-order. These are absolutely fantastic. Uh, that's coming up at this hour. Now then, at nine o'clock, we've got Gary from Juki here with the Juki DX7. I think it's fair to say a sewing machine that really does do it all. Now at 10 o'clock, Santangle artwork project folder. It's brand new with Sandra Rushton. And also, this has blown me away, haberdashery and haberdashery clothes tangling. This is so cool. You will love it. 11 o'clock, Gary's back with the Juki MO1000 overlocker 
I am going to put him through his paces. Uh, <laughs> and then at 12 o'clock, it's Yarn Lane. Sam Sabido is here with her Shades of Winter crochet shawl. Four beautiful colorways, an absolutely gorgeous project that I know you're going to love. Great day coming up. Super, super busy. Thanks for uh, spending your time with us here, by the way. Now, if you're brand new to us, it's National New Friends Day. If you're a new friend and a new viewer here, this is how you can shop with us. Go to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. Now, once you get there, you'll just notice in that bottom left corner, we've got a call center, UK call center. If you want to ring and speak to a person, you can. 0800 001 4433, UK based. They're upstairs. They're great people. They can help you. Uh, otherwise, shop online with us. You can send us a little message there. Hello, Hannah is here. Oh, you certainly are. Excellent. Um, it's too early for her to spell her name correctly. <laughs> and then if you scroll down, you will see two columns. Today's show deals refers to everything that's already been on air. And then coming up on today's shows is everything that's yet to come. Look at those new handles, bag handles from Santangle. You can paint them, you can tangle them, you can glitter them. You can leave them as plain wood. If you do pyrography, so many options. And the pattern that Sandra has written to go with those handles is superb. The handles are interchangeable. You could have a different handle for every day of the week. Uh, just gorgeous. Uh, there's the overlocker, Sam Sabido's shawl. I mean, it's going to be a wild morning. Uh, good morning to Jan. She says, good morning, everyone. Good day to stay in and watch Sewing Street, isn't it? Just Becky Alexander Frost watching too. Morning, Baffer. Hilary says, morning, sweetie. Mwah. Right, let's get crack cracking. Right, the fold over bag. I need to say good morning to my fabulous guest, Sandra Rushton. Hello, my darling. Oh, look at all the space. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it all. Show us your new bag. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, let's put the kits in first. Thank you. Um, let's start with the kit. Right. So our new kit from Sandra is for a brand new bag. It's called the fold over panel bag. You get your full pattern. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. So you get your uh, pattern for your bag. You also get, and if in there, full instructions, full size templates. You also get one set of bag handles, and these are exclusive. Um, you're actually producing these, right, we Sandra? Them ourselves, yeah, everything you see there, we've actually Absolutely made brilliant. ourselves, yes. Yeah. So you've got these beautiful wooden handles, customizable in so many different ways. You also get seven wooden buttons with this, and um, that's all part of the bag adding system, if you like. They're buttoned on, so you can actually remove them and change them. You've also got button pockets as well. So all of that for $19.99. Sandra, that's an incredible price. Well, we, we want you to not only get tangling, but we want you to get sewing as well. And I think if you've got everything in one set, you can then decide what you want to do. Having said that, it's not just one bag, is it? Because no. You can change your handles, you can tangle, you can actually use those handles different ways. So you've got two handles in one, really. Yeah. But then all the other different sort of shapes, we've loved it. We've yeah. Absolutely. Do you want to see one? Brilliant, yes, please. This. Beautiful. So this is the handles that you actually get in the bag. And of course, what we've actually done is we've tangled the buttons as well. I've actually done a bit cool. of tangling on here. But the nice thing about this is actually if you undo the buttons, I'm going to do this. Here we go. Yeah. That's it. And that one there. Because if you want to wash your bag, mm -hmm. you can't wash it with handles on. But if you take the handles off, you can then put this in the wash if Amazing. you want to. Amazing, yeah. You can switch yeah. them round, yeah. change the shape. So you can have a plain side and a tangled You could, side. yeah. And if you've got, say, a, a black bag, mm -hmm. you could have different col coloured handles. Yeah. Depending on what dress you're wearing at the de on the day or whatever, yeah. you can actually change your handles out. So Such a clever idea, yeah, it's isn't, lovely, it? isn't it? Or, of course, you can make multiple bags, have one set of handles, and then just change the handles over depending on which bag you want to use. Absolutely. It's a genius it's idea. It's just lovely. I mean, I've got one here. Look, it's a purple one. 
And this one, we fun. haven't put the, the pocket on the front here, just so you can see the difference. So you can choose what you want to do. Gorgeous bag, crochet knitting, oh, take it out as your day bag. It's a brilliant work bag as well, isn't it? Of now, the only way that you can get the instructions is within this kit. Cassandra wants you to have a go and have everything you need to get started. All you're going to need to do is add some fabric. So you can make this bag with just plain fabric, you know, in terms of no added inners you can add interfacing medium weight interfacing you could use h630 or 40 quilt wadding you can use bosal in our form you can There's, you can use anything for the guts yeah. if you like <laughs> um just change the look absolutely fab right so that's that now we've also got extra handles if you want to mix things up so you get this pair of handles as standard in your kit Okay, but if you want additional handles or you've got another bag panel and you just want to buy some um, new handles. So the first one are the hearts. So you don't get any instructions with this. This is just the handles, $8.99 for a pair. I love those. Well, I've got, I've got a set here that are decorated already. They remind me of Welsh Love Spoon. They're just <laughs> lovely, aren't they? Gorgeous. But there's something a little bit different. They're actually, they've got a purpose, yeah. but they're beautiful as well. Really So beautiful. these ones have tangled on the front mm -hmm. and then on the inside, done a little bit of inking nice so whole new can, world yeah so if you don't want to actually do any drawing that'll do it all for you and you can switch these around but it's just lovely to handle as well actually quarter of the stock of the really hearts nice is already gone well different. done if you've got yours these are going to fly by the way so if you want any of the handles don't bother listening to my waffle just jump straight in and buy them now these i think might be my favorites i want to make a big uh knitting bag with yeah, these of course. and of course you don't have to uh, use my bag pattern. You could actually have those handles and create your own bag and still stitch them onto yeah. it if you want to. Mm. Just that the, the actual size fits. But Absolutely gorgeous. Well, of course, as well, with that slot, you could crochet through that yeah, you can. as yeah. well if you want to make a crochet bag. So not just for sewers, these. These are for everyone. Tunisian crochet, that would look amazing. Those ones, I think, Sandra, definitely yes. are my favourites. And nice. also, as well, I love there's a big space there that you could tangle on. Yeah. You could also, if you do things like decoupage, you could, mod any, podge. Anything you want to do, because they're double-sided and every single one is unique yeah. because it's a natural wood veneer yeah. on both sides, so you don't know quite what you're going to get, no. some are more, more, more straight. Do you know, one of the things I would do, I would get some paper napkins with something like leopard print on them, right. and I would mod podge That them would be on. fabulous, wouldn't it? Really durable, works brilliant. Right, next ones. I'm going to have to be quick because these are flying. These are the ones you get as standard. So if you're loving the look of those, and these are real kind of classic, like knitting bag, everyday bag. Um, the, these are the ones to go for. They're all 8 99 That's a brilliant price, Sandra. I know. We have Tommy on the lasers running a day price. and night. <laughs> um, the bag itself, if you're thinking, how much fabric do I need if I'm making my own? It's a metre. Half a metre for the outer. Yeah, I, I like to have lining. different ones. So, yeah, half yeah. a metre for each. Fab. And then the last set of handles, these are gorgeous. Quite contemporary, aren't they? Really, really, really cool. But yeah. They are. They are. They're really smart. They're sort of, yeah, sleek. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. So you can really bring, I mean, you could just um, oil them, varnish them. Of course you can. Absolutely. Yes. They're real wood. They're, not, they're real wood. They're not plastic. They're fabulous. They're nice and light, though. What wood are they? You've got an MDF core, yep. and then on either side, it's cherry veneer. Ooh. So it's natural cherry veneer. Lovely. So you've got the strength of the MDF in the middle there that's yep. going to hold it in for you. And then, of course, yep. your veneers is giving you that beautiful finish. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, a whole collection. A whole collection. Sandra, there is no stopping you. Love these. <laughs> now, you. of course, if you're going to be doing some tangling, you'll need some pens. So I've got a set. Uh, I know lots of you already have your pens, but don't forget these are your consumables and it's always worth having a set of pens in stock. So here you've got three Suntangle pens. You get two that are O3 three, yep. and, two that are, and, and one, one that's, that's O5. five. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so your O3 are your fine. 
They are, yes. That's what you draw with every day, day in, day out. The 05s, if you're going to do a little bit thicker lines, or if you want to actually fill something in, then I'd use the 05 because it's going to save your 03 nibs. Perfect. So you've, you've got both. Thank you. Now, just to recap, the hero, the instructions with a set of bag handles to get you started, 19.99, details are on screen. You get your seven wooden buttons. Now, of course, for Sandra's bag, she's used those seven um, wooden buttons. But once you've made one, you could dive into your stash. You could use novelty buttons. They could all be different. Of course. Is it eight buttons or seven? It is seven, but seven. We've, we've given you an extra one as a practice, oh. just because we're nice. Hey, that's nice. <laughs> I know some nice. of you a little bit. Oh, so you do you actually get eight buttons? So we, I have, I've actually well, given you that extra one. Oh, thank yeah, you no, very so much, your details Sandra. are right, but we've just. Love that. Excellent. One. <laughs> like a little um, button closure. Yeah. Nice. Okay, right. Keep going through for your pattern. Sandra, I'm coming over to Come you. Come on. Yeah. Come on over. Bringing me iPad. Right. So where did you get your inspiration from? Well, this one, it's something that I wanted to carry a few bits and pieces together. Yep. Um, and sometimes you, you, you've got your zips and the, your fastenings in, they're great. But if you just want to throw something in and put it in the back in your, in your car, yeah. then you don't need that kind of thing. But then totally you think agree. if it's th in and out your car all the time, you've yeah. got to wash it, you know. Absolutely. So, and I thought, well, how do you do that if you want a, something, you know, a stronger handle? So I yeah. thought, well, we'll take the handles off. We could tangle on that and then you can wash your bag. But then, as I say, if you've got a, a, a bag that maybe is black or white or a, a certain colour, yep. what you can do then is you can have different colour handles and you can change it up so you don't have to have seven or eight bags, although you can if you want, seven or eight bags in the cupboard. You just mm -hmm. have the handles and you just swap them One out. set of handles, I know, that is brilliant. ever so yeah, clever. Absolutely. And to change the handle, it's literally as simple as this. Yeah. You've three buttons. Undo your buttons. So you do... <laughs> beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> Literally that. And this also exactly. means that installing the handles is easy because some easy. handles can be very difficult yeah, to install. This is it. You just literally slip it, slip it through the, uh, yeah. the top of the bag. Yeah. So that's your, just your through that little off, slot. There, fasten the buttons. And then and button you, back you up again. Spare. Very quick. Very easy. Love that. Not I'm thinking as well, it might even be possible to do a reversible version. Of course. Absolutely. Of course you could. Yes. Think about all the possibilities. Yeah. And with two half metres, or of course you could mix and match your fabric and add some patchwork, make one bag, change the handles. I know, so much fun. You could swap with your friends. You could. <laughs> you could make one bag and then and then have multiple different handles, as you said. Yeah, yeah. Some plain, some really fancy. Whatever you want to do, yeah, absolutely. Depends Brilliant. Where you, go. you could even put your little scarves around, your little ribbons, things like that if you want And I love to. also that you've got this open area at the side of the bag. So rather than just being limited to this centre portion opening, which would be quite tight, they really do open up yeah. nice and wide. Is that a cheeky pocket in yeah, there, I see? Yeah, I do actually like a little pocket inside, mm, absolutely. Me too. So, yeah, if you want, you could actually reverse that. It's fab. If you <coughs> wanted to add a magnetic closure, you could. But actually, because of the profile of the bag and way it's constructed, it's actually very, very secure, just yeah, as it is. is. Yeah. And what a gorgeous, slim profile, too. Yeah. It's a beautiful bag. I love it. Thank it's you. really, I really stylish. I appreciate that because it's something I like and mm -hmm. it fits my little tangling bits and pieces, my purse, my keys, my phone, which yeah. is what we always carry. Oh. And you just th throw it in the car and you know you've yeah. got everything you need there. You could so easily do a jelly roll version of this as well, couldn't you? Build up your strips oh, yeah. of course and you use could. that. Whatever Patchwork, you want to use, orphan absolutely. blocks. Yeah. It's just really pretty, isn't it? Ugh. How do I start? How do I start? This is the thing. You have got written instructions for a start and a full-size pattern. Um, I'm one of these people, I do like to have a full-size pattern. We've yeah. got our seam allowance on the sides and anything that you need. Excuse this. John's dyslexic, bless him. So you might get a Burton hole, but it means button. <laughs> that's fine. Well, that just, like, yeah, just sounds like I'm just going Burton with hole. it. So you've got your button hole markings, yep. you've got your pocket position, and this is, and you've also got you know your little tab, you've got your pocket, but you don't have to use that if you don't want to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So really nice to sort of work. I'm going to put that to one side because I've cut one out ready anyway. Full size pattern, by the way, is included within your Absolutely. instructions. Yeah. The value is superb. Remember, you get eight wooden buttons, a set of wooden handles and your full size pattern and full tutorial. Everything's photographic. Loads and loads of explanations of all the different steps as well. This is an absolutely superb addition uh, to your stash. It is. It's, it's a yeah. lovely little one to do. And if you've never done anything like this before, so I know some tanglers haven't, mm -hmm. it's nice a nice one to sort of start with. Mm -hmm. 
So third of the stock, by the way, Here has go. gone. Well done if you've got yours. Nice message across the bottom from Janie. Morning, Stuart and Sandra. Love these new projects. Oh, and your blouse is gorgeous, oh, Sandra. Thank you. I was thank admiring you. it too earlier on. <laughs> I was thinking it'd be nice on a quilt. Uh, morning, Sandra and Stuart. This is Leslie in Lincolnshire. Morning. I've come into Santangle HQ early to watch the show. Leslie Elf. Oh, thank you, Leslie. Love you. <laughs> It's <laughs> my friend. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. Okay, so what I've done, I've cut out the two that says on the pattern, look, to cut out two on the fold. So I've folded my fabrics in half. They are cut on fold line. Great, perfect. I've got two. One of them I've actually added a little bit of uh, structure to. And the other, again, this is completely optional. Yeah. Just because I like to. I've added a little bit of inter oh, pin interfacing on the top there because that's what's going to be folding over and doing a lot of work. Yeah. So I think it's nice just to add that little, little bit, bit of extra firmness. So you've used Decaville Light. I have on that, yes. On this one. On the one you picked up earlier, I did, I used a Mosul. Yeah, so, so that's the point at which you'd add your It certainly innards. is. It certainly is. I'm just going to take that pin out Absolutely. so we don't... We don't I uh, do that on a daily basis, Sandra. I know. Every single day. So yeah, so you can use whatever you want to use with it if you want. In, and if you've got a heavy or fabric... You don't have to use it yeah. if you don't want to. So here we go. This is my inside section. I thought what I would do, I'd show you how to put the pocket in place. Lovely. Because it, it's quite... So that's the lining. This is the lining. Fancy. I know. Wait till you see what I've got for the outer. <laughs> Love it. So um, I, I do like to mark patterns and things like that. And sometimes, though, I think I've cut my notches off here. But if you are going to put notches on, yep. you see here, you need one here. Let's just bring it in a bit. One here, so this is where you're going to sort of stop sewing. Mm -hmm. Then I would put my notch outwards. So I would never snip into my bag. If you find sometimes you think oh, I'm going to snip in, you go too far. There you go. See, look, I've got my yeah. notch yeah. there. So that's absolutely fine. And what we've done is we've given you the top section of the pocket. Mm -hmm. Pocket's very easy to do. You've got two pieces. So all I've done, look, I've stitched top and bottom. Now this is a little bit different, I suppose. Top and bottom, and I've turned it around the right way. And then what I've done, rather than actually pressing it so the seams are at the top and the bottom, I've left a little slither Ooh, smart. of the inner fabric along the bottom there. Ooh. And it just gives it a little bit of a, a difference, a bit of a A little up. flash. You well, I've see just that seen that. You can really look. see here. And I thought, is that piping? Yeah. But what a smart, clever way of doing it. Looks it looks really, like, really difficult, doesn't it? It's but like you're a really advanced sewer to do something exactly. like that. Exactly. But you don't have to be because that's all we've done with it. Love it. So the steel lap, <laughs> don't mind. <laughs> that's fine. So what I've done here, look, if I actually mark, I've got my pocket position at the top. So again, I put a little notch. Let's just put a little pin there for now because I'm not going to stitch it. And then my pocket is going to sit across the top there and it's going to match here. Mm -hmm. And then all I would do with this is I would top stitch across there. So doing a little stitch in the ditch is going to hide your stitch oh, as well. Oh, perfect, yeah. So that's just stitching in between the two fabrics. Mm -hmm. And then I would just stitch up there inside the seam allowance and up here to hold it in place. Mm -hmm. And whether you wanted two pockets, you didn't want one at all, that's how you would do that. And you could subdivide that as well. Absolutely subdivide it. And do you know, I'm, I, I like to do that. I like sections for things. I like mm. my pens, I like my phone mm. and that kind of thing. So mm. that is the inside section. Okay. I see. So, Looking at the outside section. Oh, I know, look at that. Hello. So this pocket look has been stitched on and I, look, I have subdivided it there. Mm. And I wanted to do this just to sort of show you how to put it together in terms of where we start. Because you think, well, I'm going to stitch this together and I'm going to stitch the other one. We don't do it that way. An easier way is to take this lining and this pocket, oh, sorry, this one as well, and actually stitch it. If we put it all together, let's just do this top section. And what I would do is I would stitch from that notch mm -hmm. all the way around the top there and stop here where that notch is mm -hmm. and then I would do the same here across that bit mm -hmm. I'm just going to take that and out. stop at the same point stop at the same point absolutely and once you've done that let me just flatten that out I didn't want to take all the time up sewing today so absolutely there's so much tangling that we can do so once you've got that then you would take the whole piece pull it up there we go. So you've got this, like that. Mm -hmm. And then you would stitch along here mm -hmm. to the mark and along here. Although you need to leave a little gap so you can turn mm -hmm. it out. Mm -hmm. Now I've stitched that and I've left it inside out so you can see exactly how it looks. So looking at this one, you can see here. 
So this I've used a fleece inside, a little fleece mm, one. I've stitched, like that. let me take that one out of the way. So I've stitched all the way around here and I've done that on the top mm -hmm. and the bottom. I've then taken this piece, I've stitched it all the way down here to that mark. So you've done outer all to the, outer, outer, to outer and lining to lining. And then lining to lining here, that exactly the same. Yeah. And then to do your little corners, what you would do is you'd open your bag up. Here we go, I'll do it on this one. Open your bag up at the bottom. So you sort of form a little bit of a point at the bottom of the bag. And then you can see there that I've stitched across it. Mm -hmm. And then you don't want all of this here because it's too bulky. Mm -hmm. So, pair of scissors. It's quicker, isn't it, when you don't do something? It's, yeah. <laughs> well, you get to see every process. Exactly, yeah. So We've I, seen sewing straight lines yeah, before. Yeah, of this course. This is straight line sewing. Yeah, so if I trim that off, you see, now I've got my seam there. Mm. And then, hopefully, a bit of my lining. Here we go. <laughs> Today is a good day. So this could this could take a while. I usually give this to John. And he, <laughs> so I'll say, is John good at turning bags? He is, yeah. Apart What's from he the like at sewing up knitting? No, no. Uh -oh. No, no. I'll find somebody one day. And colours as well. John's colour blind. Oh. So, um, being married to an artist. Yes. <laughs> like, do you like this colour? He's like, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Could be anything. Could work. So, yeah, this could take me just a moment. But I really wanted you to see the inside. And I yeah. wanted you to see how, when you turn it out, it's not going to look completely prim and proper because you do need to press it. Sure, of course. But, uh, of course. Here we go. See, it's all going in, look. Nice effect, though, with the um, fusible fleece. And I was just mm. thinking as well, Sandra, that you could use um, something like Thermaland if you wanted to make, like, your lunch bag that you're going to pop your lunch in to, to keep it warm, you yeah, know, that absolutely. sort of thing. Or a shopping bag. H630. H630. If you want a light bag, just a bit of oh, soft yeah. padding. Yeah, Any, anything and anything would work. H630 is my new best friend. Is it really? Do you like I that? love it, especially when I'm doing multiple layers because it's very, very it's thin. It's kind of nice. Oh, yeah. sold out. Oh, ah, nearly. What am I doing? <laughs> I love it. I love it's it. It's almost there, Luke. You know these things, <laughs> you, you don't realise they exist. And then when you yeah. discover them, suddenly you're like, they're oh everything. my goodness, me, absolutely. <laughs> that fabric's absolutely it's amazing. It's beautiful, isn't it? And there we go. So I've got, it looks like I've got a little bit of a what on earth going on here, but you're going to get this same thing in your bag, aren't you? Of course. So you've got your outer, and then you've got your inner, and you've got this sort of little piece. This is how John normally leaves it, look. Oh, no. So, John, no, 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 John, you have, <laughs> you have to move finesse, it a little John, bit. Finesse. Okay, so you've got the two together. What I would do then is I would, obviously, I'd press all my sides, mm -hmm. certainly here across the top. This is where, look, I've used one of those background stencils, a little bit of ink. That's it's just oh, nice. giving it a little bit of detail there. So, if you don't want to draw, do you don't have to. And then this one goes on the inside. So you just stitch up that hole in the lining just, by hand or machine? I'd like to do it by hand. I, do you? I'm, yeah, I do. Okay. I, do, I don't know. I just, oh. just oh. Yeah, I'm a bit old oh. school. Okay. <laughs> no, it, it's great. Yeah, now everybody's got their own way. You could do it whichever you like. So that's entirely up to you. So there you go. There's your shape. Oh, look, I've done a John. But don't you, do it. Don't. No, you get the idea. So on the inside, look, you've got this lovely little pocket and you've yeah. got that little thread of fabric so on the smart. top and it looks like you've really made a big job of that yeah yeah it's my little pocket there and then of course this you do your buttonholes mm -hmm. and that gets folded over and you put your handle through it so it looks like love that. that so yeah and you've got that love lovely that. little hint of that cream sitting in there as well. Yeah. It just, I think it just changes the bag a little really bit, doesn't smart. it? really smart. Can we just thread a, ha a of course handle we can. through? I just so we can just, I'm just wondering if we'll a bit of a pin it. it go in. We yes. can, would you be able to do I'll that? Do just, that I'd love you. to see how it yeah. looks with the handle. I'll do that I'm just going to go and recap the big bundle because over half the stock has gone. It's a brand new launch today. It's a brilliant bag. A brilliant bag. We just want to see the handle going in, actually, if that's all right. These are the ones you get yeah, in the kit. Of course. It's, it's just because I haven't pressed it, you know, yes, I just, I just need to make sure that it, I can press it. So I'm just going to slide it in. Here we go. It's always better when you've pressed it. Yeah. Well, I suppose that's the thing. The thicker the innards, yeah. um, the snugger it's going to fit. Yeah. But, of course, a good there press, go. and that goes straight through. A good through. press, look, and you'll be absolutely fine with it. So that, just going over that little bulk that. in the corner there. 
and, and then, then your buttons go on top. Yeah, your which buttons gives such will a sit smart here. finish. Yeah, and then that one of course, will sit underneath. And Absolutely. And I think the nice it. thing as well, because this sits just slightly over this mm -hmm. and just slightly over your pockets, your front pockets are secure as really well secure. because nobody can get into them yeah. because that's sort of holding it in the way there. Yeah. But it doesn't stop you getting in the... I thought you had to unbutton the handle to get in the pocket, but of course no, you No, not at all, because your buttons are here. Under. Yeah, just slide yeah. your hand under. Of course, you've got this one. It's more for sort of a, a, a looks and appearance. Yeah. You and don't really like need it. it's a double layer of security. It certainly is if you've got something really important in there, but... The, the shape is just beautiful, isn't it? It's there absolutely it gorgeous. That, you could literally just varnish yeah. the handle, couldn't you? Use a matte, a satin, a gloss varnish. You could stain it, first yes. of all. You know, if you just want a simple effect, you could do that. But once you start tangling, my goodness. I know, once you start tangling. And I have got a handle here that I've started to tangle, so I can show you how to Brilliant. do that. Now, to recap that bundle, in the, in the kit, you're getting your all-important and superbly written instructions. So you get your full instructions, all of your uh, tutorial, loads, and I'm very, very impressed, actually, with the number of photographs and step-by-steps in here, because... Um, if you're an absolute beginner, you are not going to be left behind. You're not going to be searching online for how to do something. It's all spelled out. And yes, of course, Sandra has put some lovely detail here on how to do tangling if you want to add some and you've never done it before and some just some nice background texture. So you get your full instructions. You get your full-sized, good quality, great quality cartridge paper patterns because... Trust me, you're not just going to make one. You're going to make loads of these, which is why you need to buy some extra handles. The good news is, of course, the handles for your first bag are included. This is the set you're going to get with that classic round handle, gorgeous, sleek, smart profile. So many things I could do with those wooden handles. They're lovely, aren't they? Yeah, and the choice is completely yours. Absolutely gorgeous. And then you've also got eight wooden buttons. You need seven buttons for your project. And of course you can use your, your button tin as yes. well for blinging it up. I'm thinking as well, because these are completely flat buttons, again, it gives so many opportunities for things like decoupage. You could use fabric, Mod Podge, fabric, Mod Podge on top, punch your holes with a braddle and you've got fabric covered buttons. There's loads you can do with those as well. Of course, it's a really good base. And of course, because it's out of the same material that the handles are out yes. of, everything matches. Yes. Even if you want to actually color them with an alcohol marker nice. and then spray finish them, they work, they're beautiful. The actual, this one is actually, I've used alcohol marker for the buttons because they Delicious. were original. They just give you a different, just brings a little purple yeah. out. So you can choose to have whatever, what you want to do with it. So I love. I don't know which one I like best, I know, actually, lovely. and I'm making a couple more as well. So. Well, of course, the best thing is that the handles are completely interchangeable. Yeah. So if you want to make one bag and have four different sets of handles, you can do it. If you want to have four different hand, uh, sorry, bags... Yeah. For one handle, yep. you can do it that way it's, round. It's very cost effective that way, yeah. isn't it? Because every, every time you see the bag, it's going to look different. Every because time. You've got something different going on in there. Love it. Such okay. a clever concept. You need this yes. as, your, as your sort of key bundle. This is your starting point, your pattern, your full size templates, and one set of handles and buttons to get you started. For under £20, I think that's an absolute steal. The other thing, Sandra, of course, here yes. on Sewing Street, we have lots of gorgeous fabric ranges that we do by yes. the half metre. And for this, you need half a metre of your showstopper fabric for outside and half a metre for lining. Absolutely. Easy. Now, extra handles. I know you'll want these. They've been very, very popular. The hearts, they are in the lead. Oh, they are really pretty, aren't Romantics. they? Romantics. Oh, wait to see these rectangles. <gasps> I know, they're my favourite. Um, now, I'm just going to measure the gap. Just so that you know, that gap... Yeah. About eight inches. Eight inches. Yeah, there we go. Eight inches. Joan in the West Midlands says, Sandtangle handles can be used for long, thin wall hangings. Joan, you genius. Oh, absolutely. Of course. Fantastic, of course. Spring, summer, autumn, winter, yes. cross-stitch. 
tapestry. Yeah. Joan, you're a genius. And then it, it looked beautiful on the top with the different shapes, and you could tangle on that as well. Oh, oh. brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, fab, fab idea. Yes, both Bell sides. pull. <gasps> Both sides. Like a bell pull. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Joan, you're a genius. Oh, we love you. Thank you for inviting us. <laughs> we love our viewers we do. so That's much. That's brilliant. brilliant. These are in the lead, by the way. If you want the heart-shaped handles, be quick. Be quick. Over half of those have gone. Rectangles. These are close behind. These are lovely, and I, I feel yeah. invested in these. I love the fact here. Can you see along the top? You've actually got your finger sort of holes, if you like, indentations. My fingers miss. It's because <laughs> I'm trying to do things back to front and looking at <laughs> the screen. But look at my poorly finger, yeah. honestly. And it's but a lovely little shape, isn't really it? Really comfy. Li that little hint of designer almost. Oh, yeah. 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 Nice. And, uh, and these are quite a Scandi. Yes, I think. Quite a Scandi. Yeah. Do you know what I'm thinking with these? A calendar. Yes. A calendar, absolutely. A fabric calendar or an advent calendar. Yeah. Are you yeah. with me? You could even, you could hang something off of the bottom of it as well. I think that bells. Yeah, lovely, wouldn't it? Yeah. Bells, holly, oh, ivy. So many ideas. Loads of ideas. Oh, let's do it. Let's do an advent calendar. Yeah, we it's need an to. Advent calendar. Oh, it'd be lovely that would, wouldn't I it? I need to get a set of these. Let's oh, get a set of these. Right. Lovely. Okay. Yeah, you could do the same technique as Sandra did with the bag. Have that flap with the buttonholes and the buttons. Yeah. So it's interchangeable. So you can use it year after year. Fantastic. Oh, so many ideas. Yeah. Next up, that classic round. So if you want more handles the same as the kit, you do get these in the kit. You get one pair. But maybe you want to make a second bag and you love the look. I love the look of those. This is classic mm. sort of knitting bag, crochet bag yeah, handle. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. classic look. I feel um, like uh, Leslie and myself, we actually spend one one day or one evening together and we actually do a project that's nothing to do oh with work. Nice. So if you had the bag pattern and two lots of handles, you could yeah. both work like on that. making the bag and you've got your handles. It's, it's such really a good nice. base pattern. Yeah. It's absolutely. such a good base pattern. And then last one, these very chic, very modern, sleek, lovely slim profile, and they all have a lovely slim uh, profile actually as well. All of them eight ninety nine for a pair. Absolutely amazing value. Be careful with the hearts because that is close to oversubscribed. All right. Also, be really careful with the main bundle, with the pattern, the set of handles and the eight buttons, because again, over a hundred of those, over a hundred of those have gone or are in baskets. Do check out your basket. I would hate for somebody to take that out of your basket. Now, um, we've got some fabric bundles. I know you've got a stash, but... But it's always nice to see some other fabrics. Now, you used this one, didn't you? I did, yeah. Would Can you like have a the bag over that? there so you could see it? Yes, please. There you go. That's the same please. fabrics there. I mean, of course, you could have it all plain on the outside, outside and patterned on the inside if you wanted to. Yeah, you absolutely could. You, the choice is yours. Oh, yes, it could be reversible, actually. It would work that way. Yeah. You would have to hand stitch the lining. The, yes, you yeah, would. You would then. So you yeah, you would. It. Absolutely beautiful. So you get that sort of, um, it's almost like a stone print, isn't it? It is. Um, and then you've got that solid red, beautiful. Ten ninety nine. That's nice, isn't it? That's amazing. For two half metres, Dan yeah. Morris. Beautiful. Yeah. Fewer than 20 of that bundle left. Love those flashes of pinks, lilacs, purples yeah. in with the red. It. It's beautiful. Yeah, that's why those yeah. little buttons have brought that colour out, so you can actually pick what you want to really bring out. Absolutely, Thank absolutely, you. love that. Um, the cream and the Dan Morris. <gasps> may I just borrow you? You can, yeah. Just because there's please. pins in that now, so the right. handles well, are I'll on. I definitely yeah. stab myself. <laughs> <laughs> so that's this version. That you could take to a wedding. It's beautiful, isn't it? That you could take to a wedding. It, absolutely, I, yeah. I, I love, love. You that really fabric. could. I'm thinking you could even add a few little bits of beadwork. Absolutely, yes. Stunning, yeah. absolutely stunning. So your your um, mix there is a gorgeous Dan Morris, almost like mandalas, and you've also got your natural seeded cotton, which goes beautifully, doesn't it? That's a fantastic combo. 
gorgeous it's stuff. Worked really well. I've, I've enjoyed working with those two actually. I bet fewer than twenty of those left. I think I'd have to get my blingy buttons out. I think with that one, yes. A bit think. of sparkle. Yeah, but then again, you could always add sparkle to your wooden buttons. Of course you can. You can do whatever you can. want if you want to like, glitter them. Gold leaf them. Gold leaf them. <gasps> Gold, Gold leaf, leaf the them. handles. Abs absolutely. Anything it's so you easy do. to use, isn't Any it? Is it yeah. Dutch? Do they call it Dutch um, leaf? It, yeah, it's but you can actually get different colours of it now, you can. and it's very easy to do if you want to just mm. have it in areas. So you could actually draw with a glue pen. Mm. There's a, a oh, nice. a, and then you could let that set a little bit, so go full over things. the top, and then you've got patterns within the wood as well. Love it, so. love it. Sorry, sorry, I get carried away. Oh, no, <laughs> so well, many ideas. It's a rabbit hole, isn't it? It's Our last is. fabric combo. Again, Dan Morris, you should be sponsored by Dan Morris. I do love his stuff. <laughs> I do. It's very tangly. It is that very works tangly. So well, that is just a beautiful colour. Evening bag with a little yeah. bit of gold. Yeah. Oh, oh that would look gorgeous. It would look gorgeous, wouldn't it? Again, the price is superb. Ten ninety nine. Susan, you're an absolute genius. Hi. All these handles could be used to hang my meter long stitch library instead of a trouser hanging. What a more stylish oh, way of doing it, Sue. Yes. That's a brilliant idea. Absolutely. And then it becomes a beautiful thing on your wall. Yeah, it, it does. Yeah. The envy <gasps> of everybody that sees it. Yeah. <laughs> So many brilliant ideas. Um, the key to all of this fun is your starter pack, which is full instructions, full size, good quality cartridge paper, um, uh, pattern pieces, eight flat wooden buttons, and your first set of wooden handles. Cherry wood veneer handles, gorgeous. Sandra, can we tangle? Of course we can. Um, I'm going to show you. I've actually made a start already. Um, Oof, I look, you look at this just... and you're like, gosh, how do you even do that? But honestly, I'm going to show you how to do it. It's not tricky in a sense at all. So it's um, very, very straightforward to do. Are you sure? So I did. So I've, now we've had this conversation. Yeah, we before. have. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, so what I've done, I've actually used, uh, I've used my long ruler here, my mm -hmm. quarter inch, and I've put myself some squares. So I've got a grid. Now I could do the whole thing, or I think it's kind of nice to do one full, and then do one just as a statement. Nice. So we can change it about a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I've got all these little squares, and that breaks it down. So rather than looking at the whole piece, we're going to look at a square. OK, yep. and looking at that one, all I'm going to do with it is I'm going to put a curve in. So let's go this way. It doesn't matter to, if it's not the same. I think it's nice to have two different. Mm. So I'm going to put a curve in. Here we are. Like that. Yeah, let's do a few of those. So from, from the diagonal, let's do one off the edge. All the way down. All the way down. Like so. You see? So I've got those little curves and then if I take Brilliant. each one of those so I've got two sections in here take this one let's start at that point and I'm going to come up and create a loop and then a loop a loop so if I do a few of those and then if that way you see as you sort of start and it's the same with any sort of tangling project we do it starts looking a little bit overwhelming but then you think well it's just a loop do you and know, now you've know broken it, that down, Sandra, I'm thinking, well, just give it here, I want to go. It looks easy now. It's easy. You can, do you want to go? You can have a go. I don't want to mess you. All right, I'll use a bit of colour on this one while Stuart's doing a little bit of that. Okay. So, here we go. So, you can, use, um, you can use anything on it if you want to. You can use paint, you can use inks. I've got ink tents here, but you can use normal pencils on this if you want to. And I can colour in each loop separately. Or I could go in and look at the grid space in here. So I'm going to come in and, and mark off all of the, the lines. Let's just do a few. I'm just going to go on the sort of the left hand side of each line there. Can I do a few more? You can. And yes. actually, that's really easy to, to tangle yeah. onto the wood. Yeah. Really easy. That's it. <clears throat> there you go. Let's put a little bit of a lighter colour in. There you go. Now, I need to let you know, this rectangular wooden handle that I'm working on now, there are seven left when you've all checked out your baskets. You get a pair, of course. <laughs> yeah, a little bit hard without. <coughs> it would be hard, just the one, very one-sided. Yeah, yeah, Although there, there are definitely bags you could do with one, one. handle. Yes. 
Um, and also as well, the ideas that we've had this morning. Absolutely. For it's using brilliant. them as hangers for small quilts, calendars, stitch libraries. Amazing. Ooh. Yeah. So all I've done here now, yep. I've filled in the gaps. Colour in the gaps. With a little bit of ink. Yep. So it's it's relatively straightforward, isn't it? It's really straightforward. I mean, you can go as detailed as you want. You can add some the other side, but it's kind of nice just having that one, isn't it? And uh, if I just, I mean, I'm, I'm working quite quickly on these, but there we go. So I'm just here like your little sidekick, aren't I, Sandra? <laughs> You're having too much fun. Look at this. I love but it. But look, you know, there look, you go. <laughs> I'm crafting live. Live. <laughs> Watch me craft. Oh, it's such an accessible yes. hobby. And you know, it actually works with other things as well. So it's not just a standalone and it, it's going to bring that little bit of uniqueness mm -hmm. to what it is that you actually do already. Yes, for so, sure. It's not like a, a new hobby. You've got to completely start Am I allowed fresh. to add any more embellishments within can, the loops? You can, yes, absolutely. Can I? I'm just, yeah. I'm only thinking that a little, a little line. Yeah. Going almost, so they're almost like little petals. Exactly. Might be really... And this is a nice thing, because now what I'm going to do, every time I turn my bag, I'm going to have a different handle for a different design on each side. And you'll so think, why did I let him do <laughs> so this? Have, so I've got four different it's ruined, designs. It's ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> You're very kind and generous. You're no, very honestly, in terms of tangling it, everybody's got their own little characteristics and they do their own little thing. Um, I wanted to ask you earlier on, Sandra, yeah. can I buy the buttons on the room? Will you bring them next time or...? You can, they're here today. Oh, we've got them now. They're here. Oh, OK. Well, if oh, you brilliant. want to, if you want extra buttons. Ace. Ace. Yeah. Right. So you get you get eight in here, don't you? You do, yes. You get eight button, button, buttons. So I'll practice eight buttons. one. And then so, yeah. I think we should call them from now on, they're, they're buttons. buttons. <laughs> you get eight buttons for three ninety nine. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's a great price. Yeah. You can tangle on them. They're completely oh, flat. Yeah. They're really nice to tangle yeah. on, Stuart, because they're small and yeah. they're not too intimidating. Can we yes. get more buttons? You can get some more buttons. Yeah, that'd be brilliant. Yeah. I'll tell John out, later. You see. They're going to sell out. I'll tell him later. <laughs> I want to I wanna put fabric on them. Yeah. I want to get my tilde scraps, my precious um, Liberty lawns, Tana lawns, a layer of Mod Podge, Fabric on top, let it dry completely, don't trim it, mod pudge over the top and then trim them down when they're dry. And they're nice. We're going to get more, aren't we? We are, yeah. They're sold out, yeah, but we're going to yeah. get more. And they're not heavy, are they? No, they're not. They're not, not heavy at all. at all. Not at all. Do you know, I think this might be the, the, the project which has inspired me and lit my fire most. Really? That you've brought so far. Oh, that's lovely to know. About. Just on yeah, a personal this, on a yeah. personal level, because yeah. I do love a bag. Oh, yeah, exactly. And look at this, how it's just... Good. Rather than, you know, focus on all the little loops, just adding some colour. I mean, I could bring colour completely across the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I could ink a little bit of it, you know, or you could just draw it or leave it and spray it, whatever you want to do with it. And that's using intense pencil. I have, yeah, I mean, you can use any pencil yeah. On, yeah. The, on the wood, but you've got your ink tents in your stash because you're working on your fabric. Yeah. It will actually do the And same. would you varnish over the top? I of would, yeah. yeah. I'd use a spray varnish. I, right, I like, yeah. my, everybody's different, but I like a spray mm -hmm. varnish. Yeah. Very light dusting. And then give, let it dry and then do a second coat and then it's it's Bad. good to go, absolutely. Um, everybody needs a set of these pens, I think, everybody. You get two 03s and 105, two, yeah. two fine and one slightly thicker. Um, tangling is like patchwork, says Jeanette in Merseyside. Oh. When you break it down into its simple forms, it makes it easy to create lovely That's designs. That's Love it. the bag handles. How well put. Oh, thank really you. Well Love the handles. Love the handles. Now, the key bundle, well over 100 of you already checked out. When everyone's checked out, 12 left. Sorry, 12 left. There's a lot of work goes into putting these kits together. There's a lot of individual elements. There is. <laughs> 19 yes, there It's is. a brilliant price and a lovely opportunity to get a brand new bag pattern that you're going to make again and again and again. The handles as well. I really like the fact, Sandra, yeah. these handles, you've custom designed and, and made these. Yes, uh, yes. These are not expensive handles at all. 
$8.99 is a brilliant price. Yeah, thank you. I say we wanted everybody to have a go and we like to make it accessible. So yeah. Santangle is that. You can work on sort of, I say, basic equipment. Uh -huh. That's everything you need except your choice of fabric. Yeah, yeah. And you've got a designer bag. Yeah. Um, talking about having a go, <laughs> <laughs> Patricia in Kent says, the pattern on Stuart's shirt could easily be a tangle pattern. Hey, hold on. Wait a minute. <laughs> Loving the inspiration. Of Patricia in Valencia. Yeah, of course. Well, it, ah. it is. When you start seeing tangle. ta tangles Could you patterns. tangle me? Absolutely. Yeah, don't stand still for too long. I'll get you a tattoo gun. <laughs> <laughs> and some numbing cream. <laughs> um, fab. Now, just very quickly, uh, you mentioned earlier on about I using did. background stencils. Yes. These are a whole new world. They are, yes. <clears throat> really fun to use, actually. I'm, I'll, uh, I can show you how to do that. Now, apparently I've got Day of the Dead. Is it these with yeah. the rainbow? Yes, 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 yes. Right. This is Day of the Dead. So we've got here, uh, I'm just going to grab a piece of coloured card just to make it a little bit easier to see. So this one is an all over rose print. Yeah. That's beautiful. It is. And I know we say Day of the Dead, but it's all about, a, 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 you know, a fantasy. A, a, Festival, isn't it? Yeah. I've actually got the handles here. And then you also here. get this floral here. They they show the Day of the Dead, Stuart, on the handles there. Okay, thank you. So I've actually inked, but I've oh. drawn around the flowers. So just on the handles. And so you can see it's it's got that lovely just draw sort of, through, yeah. Yeah, just draw through it if you want to, and it's it's giving you something that can cover the. the sort so of you get shape. both of these two stencils in the Day of the Dead set, both floral. So no skulls, nothing spooky. No, nothing spooky. It's more like, yeah, flowers Those and florals, hearts and isn't that it? kind of thing. Yeah. And then the other set that we've got, I, you could use um, matte varnish on a roller. You could, over the yeah, top, absolutely. You? Any Just kind have a real paints, subtle effect. Um, then the second set's called abstract. Ooh, this is a bit of me. Yeah, you've hello, got lots hello. of bits hello. of Look things you can do. Yeah, yeah. Those are gorgeous. So you've got almost like um, nautilus shells. And then the top one actually really reminds me of um, sort of quite abstract quilting. Yeah, they're, they're, there's a lot of different things. So you can use little bits of it rather than the whole thing. Mm. It's, it's really Gorgeous. quite, uh, quite an, a useful little uh, stencil, that one is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could imagine mm. doing all sorts with those. And also, again, using your ink tense pencils. You can do if you want to. Yeah, absolutely. Whatever you, you want to push through them, really. Fabric mm. paints, mm. fabric inks, mm. that kind of thing. Lovely. Um, the star of the show is Sandra. The second star of the show <laughs> is this brand new bundle. It's to make a whole brilliant bag. Absolutely. I am just think this is superb. You get your wooden handles. You get a pair of wooden handles. Customizable. Use them as they are. You don't have to do anything with these, do you? No, if you don't use want to. You don't even are. have to varnish them if you don't want to. They're going to they're gonna last you really well, so... Eight flat wooden buttons that you can yep. tangle, paint, decoupage, glitter, whatever you want to do, cover with fabric. You've also got your full instructions, step by step, loads of photographs, loads of photographs and full size paper patterns. So no enlarging required. No, it's exactly as it is. You just take your two fabrics, fold them in half and pin that on. Away you go. <laughs> as simple as that. I've I want to make I'm one not now. It's lovely, aren't they? Love it. Love it. And um, we've also got additional handles. Do be careful with these because some of them really are in danger. Um, hearts, super, super popular. Rectangular ones as well, been very, very popular. Sandra, that was an amazing hour. Yeah, it's just nice to have something different, isn't really it? Really different. I think. Something that's uh, really... Loads of people already shopping ahead for the haberdashery and the haberdashery clothes. I can't wait Lovely. for that. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Um, I'll see you in an hour. I'll see you in an hour. Absolutely. And I'll see you after the break. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? 
just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your mates, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! Back by popular demand, introducing the one, the only, Gemporia Festive Ball. Party with your favourite presenters from Gems TV, Hobby Maker, Jewelry Maker and Sewing Street. We're all together for a night that's going to be the talk of the town. Situated at the fabulous Stratford Manor, close to the world famous Stratford upon Avon. Tickets are just £99 per person, including a welcome drink, a three course dinner, half a bottle of wine, and music that'll have you dancing all night long. There'll also be a shop at the party, and even a tombola if you're feeling lucky. Numbers are limited, so order your tickets today to avoid disappointment. Let's make it a night to remember at the Gemporia Festive Ball on Saturday, the 25th of November. See you there. If you're a Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Follow Sewing Street on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times, or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy myself something fabulous. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! Thank you. 
If you're a Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Hey, it's really good to have your company here on Sewing Street. If you've just joined us, where have you been for the last hour? I'm kidding, I'm Stuart, it's nice to have your company. Um, we are having a fabulous time in our brand new studio. Have you seen it? Look at all this fabulous space. We just love it. We've got so much space here now in the studio. We don't know what to do with it all, but we will mess it up. Sooner or later, don't worry. We'll 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 create we'll create mess. It's what you always do, isn't it? You grow into the space you're in. Now, this hour, I am joined by Gary from Dukey. Hey, Gary. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> morning. Tonight? I'm really well, thanks. How Good. are you? I'm brilliant. Thank Absolutely thank you. superb as always to have you here. And thank you for the invite back and lovely studio. Absolutely, Love my it. first time. Yeah, again, yeah. obviously very new for us in this yeah. one. So it's yeah. beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah, as you say, space. So much space. Yes. Yeah, Good yeah. Work on there, lovely, brilliant. And of course, Gary is such an expert, such a professional when it comes to sewing machines and overlockers. He knows everything. So if you've got any questions or anything you want to know about the sewing machines that we're showing today or the overlocker that we've got today, get your messages in studio at sewingstreet.com because Gary is keen to have literally anything thrown at him, not physically, yeah, no, but in terms of questions. <laughs> <laughs> We've got missiles lined up, Gary. I'm so <laughs> sorry to just throw that at you. Now, this hour, the focus is on a fabulous sewing machine. I said earlier on, it really is a machine that does it all and gives you everything that you need, including an exclusive extra foot package, which I know you're going to love. It's the DX7 from Juki, and this is Juki UK, Juki UK support, customer service, all that backup. When you buy from Sewing Street and Juki UK, you are starting a friendship, you're starting a relationship. It's the start of something. It's not the end point. I think so often now, you know, I buy things from the internet and it's like, I don't even know where to send it back if I don't want it and, you know, if it doesn't work. Whereas with a Juki UK, you get that relationship, they're always there for customer support and you are big on customer well, support. That's the one thing. The one in is sort of the saying I do like the best, don't just buy a box. Right. Yes. Yeah, you buy a box, you're stuck, you're out there. And as we, we all know, you can look and look and look, and sometimes you can get a slightly better discount here. It's like, but you don't know where you're buying the machine from. You don't know where you're going to get the backup service right. from, etc. Obviously, ourselves at Juki UK, we do have a, a network across the UK, but mm -hmm. ourselves as essential, we're based in Essex, Essex boys, and there's a lot of you it. Obviously, certainly are. we've meeting a lot of you out there at exhibitions and things like that. Yeah. So you recognise that tone. Well, but. We're not just one base. We right. have multiple classrooms. We have multiple showrooms on there as well. Obviously, we have our own engineers. At the moment, we're up to, uh, say, we've got about seven engineers at the moment. Fantastic. We are, and we are looking for more still in there as well. Oh, if you're watching and you want to be an engineer, yeah, yeah. do you get in touch? Please get in contact. Duke <laughs> UK, absolutely. No worries at all. And a two-year warranty? A two-year warranty. Brilliant. Again, completely backed up, full back to base service as well but nine times out of ten again with the the, the quality of the Juki people yeah. sort of know what they're getting with the machine it's that higher grade it's a higher build oh, performance on amazing. there amazing and nine times out of ten when you've got something of this level it's not an issue with the machine right it's just something we're doing when we're getting used to it right absolutely so we have phone lines we have facetime we have email oh, we FaceTime. Have, absolutely sometimes you need to there. show somebody something don't you and you offer that too well you can talk and talk and you look at something you think oh you just haven't switched that <laughs> see you don't get that from the long river do you <laughs> don't get that from the long river that's absolutely brilliant i'm gonna facetime you yeah absolutely I love so it. there's a full team and whether it's a sewing question
question, yeah. whether it's a engineering question, there is a query, whatever. We are there to help on whatever side. Absolutely uh, fab. Absolutely. I have a Juki in my studio. They are incredible machines. Absolutely superb. Uh, I'm a year in and I'm still discovering amazing things that my machine can do. Now, this is in a very, very competitive price, £1,695 for the DX7. Plus, you're also getting a free accessory bundle uh, worth £97.60, which is an amazing array of extra feet. But, Gary, you really do get everything with this machine. Um, no extra PMP is £3.95. Three ninety five for your postage, um, and, and and that yeah, it's amazing. I think that's amazing. Uh, Carol says I bought this machine from you. It is fantastic. That's Carol in the. Thank West you, Carol. Place. Wonderful. Love it here on that. And I say Carol. we do handle everything as well. Yeah. yeah, we have them in stock. They are ready to go. So we we. They come direct them. from you. Direct from us. Absolutely. Brilliant on that. So no, absolutely brilliant. brilliant. Now, with your DX7, you are getting over 270 different stitches. You're getting all of your utility feet. We'll go through them one by one in a sec, but all your utility feet. You're also getting an extension table. But also, but also, you're getting a semi-long arm machine. You've got eight inches of throat space for quilting for larger projects. You're also getting four full alphabets, upper and lower case, and all of the numbers, and, and you did assure me earlier on, you do get That's it. all we, we the numbers. We had a count on that, and we did All the numbers. numbers. <laughs> um, you all, but also, you get a darning foot, free motion darning foot, you get a walking foot, you get a quarter inch patchwork foot, you get a Teflon or non-stick foot, you also get the exclusive Juki box feed. Yeah. Explain that to That's me. It. Well, within the engineering terms on that, obviously, we're ourselves, a lot of people do relay ourselves with the industrial side and to be fair that's in the UK that's what most people will automatically connect with the name of Juki mm -hmm. on it but we are a domestic manufacturer first we right. first made a domestic machine but the thing is obviously with the development we put into that high power quality construction our industrial side took up took over and we now make over 40 percent of the world's manufacturing machines incredible so a huge amount of machinery that way mm. and Obviously, the great thing about having the technology in the industrial, why not put our technology into the domestic market? Sure, and that's where sure. we've got the great advantage that way over a lot of the other manufacturers that way. Mm -hmm. So we look at certain functions and features on sewing machines and think, right, we can live without that, we can't live without this. Mm. And to me, it's the sewing aspect. And to be fair to you and to mm. virtually every mm. other sewer out there, the basic sewing should be the key thing. Oh, the most important thing to me is, is, is what's the straight stitch like? That's um, it. And what can it handle? Lynn says, I have three sewing machines. Is that all, Lynn? <laughs> they got nine now. So far. Isn't it? <laughs> nine, three so far. <laughs> but she says, if I had bought the Juki first, I would only have one. Um. Uh, it's brilliant. That's Lynn in Herefordshire. And that's if it does the job, if it does everything you need. That is it. It's something also you can grow with on there. And the box feed, it's, it's a gain of your quilter. Then it eliminates the amount of use you need to use the walking foot on there. Right. Going because over, normal elliptical feed, which is most yeah. machines, kind of goes like this and it's sort of a bit... It's slightly hit and miss, isn't That's it? it? So if we had, like, if we looked and we say had our piece of fabric, so on the engineering, elliptical feed comes up, it touches, comes back down again, comes back up and touches. A box feed will come up, travel a full distance and then drop down through, up, full distance, drop down. So again, if you're getting, I'm going to put a lump in my fabric in my hands, mm -hmm. so it will touch both before and after is one of the great um, parts of this. So when you're going over big seams, certainly mm -hmm. like things like bag makers at the moment, where you're sure. using strapping handles turning up denim jeans etc that way mm -hmm. again it will grip the fabric and what a lot of people sort of recognize this at home as well you get to a certain bump and you have to sit there and suddenly you're pushing your fabric through right well to me that's or it just sticks this is it or you stick so therefore you, you are then helping it and usually that, gary it's when you're doing the final top stitching yep. it's got to look great and suddenly you've got a thousand tiny stitches in one little well, lump you've turned that yourself to the feed the system no that's right it yeah so it, it travels it through a lot lot smoother mm -hmm. uh, but also in, in undulation of fabrics it will grip it a lot better as well so this is why basically every 
industrial machine has a box feed, yeah. why wouldn't our domestic machines have that system? Yeah, why don't all sewing machines have a box feed? Because it's quite a mechanism um, in there as well, but also something that we are so proud of, and myself as well, I love engineering, and it's a big part of my life on there. We do get ourselves involved with the manufacturing, with the engineering, with design aspects of these machines. And as we know, there's machines out there now which can offer full embroidery systems, they will feed sideways, they will feed diagonal, they do wide, wide zigzags and things like that. The problem is now with a lot of those features, once you start messing around with the feed system, you mess around with the, the width control, you will never get a great straight stitch mm -hmm. because the machine's just trying to do too many other things. Right. So even with the developer of these machines, and people will know, or some people out there will know with this system, well, we've had this on the market now nearly 20 years in our domestic machine. It's not a short-lived thing. Right. And over time, the redevelopment, redevelopment, machines have changed, machines are doing more things on there. We have not changed our sewing system. That is the one because thing. it wasn't broken, it's so you exactly. haven't needed to fix it. But also, is uh, at the moment we say if we can't make it better, we're not going to mess around with it as well, just Absolutely. to try and make it do something a bit different, which the market may not have seen. Now, but, now Gary, you mentioned yeah. earlier on about uh, most of us do straight stitching all yeah. the time. That's what we do, and the DX7 has got a special feature when it comes to straight stitching only. Absolutely, yes, indeed, we've got a, a full switch on here. But let's let's get it started. This we do some let's stitching do it. on here, let's and I can it. run through those. So, yes, please, what we're going to do? We're just going to thread it up. Let's start from the beginning. Start from the basics of how easy it is as well. Drop-in bobbin system. It's a deep fill bobbin, which is nice. So. Threading and using the machine, to be fair, 90, sort of 95% machines, they thread up the same way. The bobbin systems are virtually the same as well. So it's not a lot of difference, but we have assisted. So if we look at the front of the machine as well, it's all arrowed and numbered. So it's very, very simple to follow. But also the bobbin winding. So with a lot of the machines, when you're winding a bobbin, you declutch the machine or switch the needle off and there you for you're winding a bobbin when without sewing. What we can do is we've got a fully independent bobbin winder. So we can actually wind the bobbin at the same time as we're sewing as well. Oh nice. So again that industrial feature. You want to I do that resent speed. having to stop. And that's it. Well we, we know how it is. You've got in the middle of a big quilt or something mm -hmm. like that and you're running out of bobbins and suddenly you've got to take it all down. Well you can wind as many bobbins as you want as you're sewing. So nice. it makes life a lot easier. Very but nice. we are just going to wind the bobbin conventionally. So it just comes from around the guide number one one, number two, under the tension, number three, and then we just take it across to the bobbin, we wrap it round a few times, and then we've got a little thread trimmer, which then will cut and oh, hold the that. thread on top of the machine. Engage the bobbin winder, it will then just wind, and we leave it, and away we go. Fabulous. So, very quick, very smooth, that's a nice, it's a set speed, and once it's full... I can't hear the machine going, that is so quiet. Thank you, well that is the thing, it's once with the engineering side as well, and once the machine starts rattling or clonking, you know it's never going to perform as much as well as it should do, but also, if it starts making banging noises and that, yeah, yeah, you're putting yeah. a lot of strains and that through the machine, yeah. so it's that overall design, which may be not as strong to start off with. Interesting point. And as we know with Dukies themselves, we're not on a budget level, to be fair. Obviously, it's a machine that people usually aspire into on that. But as uh, we said before, a lady's got three machines at home. So sometimes you start with a basic, you think that's what my budget's going to be. You yeah. spend a little bit more, you spend a little bit more. So before you know it, you spent quite a lot of money. Right. Where, obviously, we say, you, if you'd invested in, say, the DX7 to start off with, it might You'll never need only exactly. machine, as I say. Yeah, yeah. Ten so, years, still which sewing. Is absolutely great. And that's the thing. When we design a machine, we don't just change the design every six months, every 12 months right. just for the sake of changing a colour or a shape. We design it and it's kept on the market for a long, it's long a time because it's right. Jeanette from right. Merseyside's got in touch to say, I love, capital letters, Gary, I love my Juki DX7. It's just amazing. And how it manages to sew through absolutely anything without messing with the tension blows my mind. That's a brilliant point, Jeanette. None of us like messing with the tension. That's None it. None of us want to touch those dials, really. We, we don't. It's, we want to just sew. We just want to get on and go yeah. on there. So the drop-in bobbin, I've just located it in there. And say, so, as with Jeanette say, the great thing about it, with different types of fabric, but also it's a different type of threads as well. Is because a lot of people would be thinking, oh, my machine doesn't like this thread or it doesn't like that thread. Yeah, that all the time. A lot of way, you can't really understand why it doesn't like different. Mm -hmm. different. Fair enough, there's budget threads out there which not many machines are going to like. No, we shouldn't it, be using them. Which those. we shouldn't be using. No. It creates a lot of fluff in your machine and it will throw the tensions out that way. So it's not always the best of ways. But we want to know 
This at the moment, this is a 40 thickness thread. I've got 50 thickness through here, I've got 60 thickness through here. So with 40 me. is quite thick. It's the heavier way out of yeah. it. So just so it stands out a little bit nicer on yeah. there as well. But obviously we want to use the lighter weight threads, absolutely no problems. Now obviously that's a mini um, cone. Yes, yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, you can use any kind of reel of thread on this, can't you? Yeah, it can these... be like your general Gutterman, Orofil, anything like that. That's it. So at the moment we have got a uh, thousand meters, say, uh, mini king cones on here. So I'm just going to put the needle in the highest position. So, because we have got the built in needle threader. Hurrah. So it just hooks in. Little lever on the side of the machine here, my, on there, just in there. As it comes down, it will then twist in. Little hook takes the thread through, and there you go, threaded. Lovely. So again, you're not lining up. It is actually doing all the work for you that way. I was celebrating the joy of the automatic needle threader this week on my social media. <laughs> it's, sometimes it's the smallest things that, that, that are what we need. Well, exactly it. It's just like everything now, we, we say life in general, is there. there's a lot of hurdles out there that we're, we're, we're getting through and we get over as we do. Mm -hmm. So little things like that, mm -hmm. if you can just take it out of the equation and you can sit there, you should enjoy showing it. It should be making you smile. Oh, absolutely. We've got to sit there for 10 minutes, lick, cut, for Don't do it. <laughs> it's frustrating. Don't do it. Absolutely <laughs> on there. Yep. So another thing with the machine as well, even though now we have got the electronic cyst, so the nice thing about it, we've got electronic foot, lift on the front of the machine. Lovely. We do also have our foot lift at the back of the machine, which is on there. And if I lift that up again, if we watch, we have extra high clearance as well. So I'll get my whole finger under there. So again, this is over the thicknesses for quilters, for mm -hmm. bag handle, mm -hmm. but also for the free motion using your hoops, etc. that mm -hmm. way. But also the industrial development, it does also come with a knee lifter Fabulous. as well. So for those at home who are not sure what the knee lifter is, it does plug into the front of the machine into here. And using this will drop down underneath the desk, which obviously I can't illustrate on here. But you're using your knee, which to move left and right, which will then higher and lower the actual foot itself. But again, it gives you both hands free. A lot of people, it's one of those things. Is as I say, it's like patting your, your sort of your head and rubbing your stomach at the same yes. time. It's unusual to get used to it, but once you're used to it, oh, it becomes the third hand. Absolutely, because you've got both hands there. You're yeah. holding. You've got it's fantastic. I've always said way. I would not consider a sewing my main sewing machine without a knee lift because it is my third hand yeah, exactly and building so a plique in particular anything like that for turning and that's another nice thing about here saying about the third hand we have now put in a pivoting option into oh, the machine nice. okay. so we can press a button on the front of the machine and what it do every time it stop it will then uh, automatically lift the foot but leave the needle in the work so lovely. it gives us that system on there lovely so that's superb actually i was using that just the other day when i was doing some chain piecing so when I'm sewing long seams, I'll turn it off. Yeah. So that I'm just, even though I stop, um, I'm just there to adjust myself. But with chain piecing, it means I can introduce the next piece. And then as soon as you start sewing again, the, the foot drops yep. and or lowers the and then you carry on sewing. Exactly brilliant. Yep. That's it. It's again, these little functions and features like that until you start using it, don't recognize how good it is because it's also it's something and now with a lot of sewers you naturally do every time you sew but yep. it does it for you and you and say you program it for different types of sewing same as with the foot control as well so on the foot control you've got your normal accelerator so we can just press the front and it will then just work that way mm -hmm. and then on the back of it is what we call a heel back so I press the back of it and again it will then change it into other things so what I can do at the moment it's not going to sew at all because I've got the foot up and things like that mm -hmm. That's another great thing, safety features as well. It doesn't actually allow you to do any foot wrong. So I press the foot, it will actually come up on screen saying lower presser lever or press a foot on there. Mm -hmm. So again, Brilliant. it looks after you. So even though it's sort of going into that considered purchase on there, as a beginner, yeah. it's so easy to get onto and to grow into. So Gary, just going back to the foot pedal, so yeah. you've got a heel tap function. Yeah. Uh, can you program that to do different things? Yeah, that's it. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to put the fabric under so we can start playing. So at the moment, I'm just, if I put my foot down, I just press the front, it will just then so as yeah. it would normally do. So we've got good variable speed. We have got speed control on the front of the machine because I can unplug the foot control and use the start stop as well. Mm -hmm. So I have that facility. But away we go. Again, it reduces. You've got up to a thousand stitches a minute. And you can say even on full speed, 
I don't have to shout over it. It's smooth, it's quiet, it doesn't vibrate. Can we just take out. a moment to appreciate what <laughs> Gary's just done? He's sewn a better straight seam than I could behind the machine and he's standing at the side of it. And again, that's the box <laughs> feed system. Again, it yeah, gives you nice. that much better travel facility on there. So at the moment, we have the pivoting on. So every time I stop, the foot is then just lifting yep. and away we go. So I know oh, Jojo's message. Jojo, you win. You win. I have over 70 <laughs> mainly vintage sewing machines. That's amazing. We are good. We're going to have uh, that I always day. turn to them for a perfect straight stitch, but my DX7 does a perfect straight stitch. Wonderful. That Thank you, sense. Jojo. That's really and a lovely collection. On, That's I really have nice. no doubt on really that. Really nice. Fantastic. So then going back to the heel back, if I press that now, that's then on reverse. So I keep my foot there. That will give me then oh, my nice. auto tie off on there. Now I can put my foot down at the front and then just go again. So again, that's the function I've got set at the moment. But if I go into the little toolbar on the front of the machine, so I, and there it's got a picture of the spanner and the screwdriver, press that. So on. intuitive. Indeed. And that's the nice thing about it. It is there in front of you. So literally a picture of the foot. So what I can now do, if I turn that to foot lift and press OK, it will not only ask me to switch it on or off, it will actually give me then a choice of foot lift. So if you look at the foot now, so if, <laughs> I'm, if I'm doing quilting like with a heavier wadding, look I at that. Just, yeah, exactly it. So I can override look at that. the program and get it exactly tailor made to what type of sewing I'm doing. And then you control the, the, the press of foot lifting with your heel. And that's it. Yep. So Stop then it. on there, I can then Love that. take that back. And then if I take it forward again, on there, let's then press OK. And now I'm going to switch the scissors on. So when I have that, it will automatically then cut when I've finished. Oh, so, so all you do is you tap your heel on the back. That's it. So when I go now, there, stop, there, through, finish. Oh, it does help us all say switch it on. And then I've got that control. So when I'm finishing it, I can then operate the machine. So if I want to go then backwards, I can then go backwards. If I want to then finish, I can then stop, forwards, cut, needle up, foot up, take out, and then, so... That's amazing. Again, it's one of those little things as well where it gives you that complete control for different types of sewing Can you just there. show the what you've sewn, please? Yep, you just indeed. hold just it up. Pop that back on the Camera floor, two, yeah. please, to our cat. So, obviously, with that, I, we are just then uh, oh, sewing a little piece of calico on there. So, if I then switch that over, as you can see, well, it's quite funny when I see people out and then I'm start, start sewing on different types of fabrics or we're mm. doing different types of sewing. One of the first things, oh, can I just have a look at the back? I love it when people ask that. Oh, yeah, me too. Because, again, it tells me their machine, they're just putting up with a stitch because yes. they're expecting it to be like their sewing machine Mangled. rather than being perfect on the yeah, back. Yeah, exactly. And the great thing with that, it doesn't, obviously, a piece of calico, nice and easy to sew. Most machines should be able to sew that without any problems at all on there. So from one to the other, this is an upholstery vinyl oh completely contrast the fabric of this is a completely different different thing. thickness different <laughs> type of there so i won't adjust or touch anything on the machine at all i'm just going to pop i'm already thinking box feed that's exactly it so you're going to pop that down put the foot down and then oh, i'm just going to sew that again i'm not going to treat it any difference the auto tie on at the beginning is still there the machine doesn't bang it doesn't struggle we're going to then get to the ends again we will stop i can press the foot backwards it will then tie it off for me, stop, finish, cut, and then needle up, foot up, and then we can just take that out. Absolutely. So it might be a little bit harder to see on this one because it is dark. Show me the back. We've on there. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and I want to see again, the back. That's what I like to hear. Look at on that. There. So again, if I was to put that on there, you could pick that up and you wouldn't actually know what was the front or no, what was wouldn't. the back on there. It's all the start of the finish. It's absolutely superb, absolutely isn't perfect. it? Perfect. Um, and the, did you notice as well how the machine didn't act any differently? It wasn't laboured. It wasn't going more slowly. And also no pushing and no pulling out the back required. Yes, You've got well, to let the machine do the that's work. That's the thing. It's when I sit there and you sort of, you go around maybe the different classrooms or schools and things like that. And sometimes you sit there and you've got that and they're pushing or pulling the fabrics in. Right. 
you never obviously, first of all, you're never going to get an even stitch, but the chance is obviously bending and breaking needles, which is then going to mm -hmm. damage either your needle plates mm -hmm. to the inside. As soon as, what I, I and say, rule of thumb. it's making such a chew of it, as, as it. we say in the North. Yeah. You know, it's making it hard work. It it's, it's not like that. You just relax. Well, you should have a machine that should be machining, not having a machine that you're actually helping to machine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. On there right. as well. Very much on that. And then Now, the, before we go any further, yeah. I just want to talk about split pay because because you can get this machine home for £339. And this is how. So on some of our high priced items, we offer what we call split pay. And that means that you can split the price up into two, three, sometimes five. And in this case, five installments. You pay your first split pay today. And then Juki sends you the machine. You don't have to make all five payments. So you make one payment, you get the machine home, you've got a month to enjoy it. Next month, the next payment will come out and so on for five consecutive months until you've paid the full amount. Now, within split pay, you do not pay a penny in interest, not one penny. You pay exactly the same price as paying the whole amount in one go. Um, also, there are no credit checks, there's no forms to fill in either. It is simply when you get to check out, you'll be offered the option, would you like split pay? Yes or no? And it's as simple as that. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, a message across the bottom for you, Gary. My DX7 is the most reliable and easy machine I've ever owned. Juki offer fantastic customer service too. Well, Sally, thank you so much. Thank and that's you, really Sally. brought back yeah. full circle to the beginning. Yeah. We were talking about Juki UK and what's so important in your business. Oh, the backup. It's, it's say we can all we can out go out and buy the, the different tools, but if we don't know how to use the tool. Right. It's it's not worth having it. And some, as we say, sometimes it's such a simple question, and you think, ah, oh, oh yeah, but having someone to speak to yeah. is so much nicer on there as well. And also as well, you guys are in this for the long haul we're all in this for the long haul Absolutely. aren't we well, and we know we see the same customers and it's five years 10 years 20 years more exactly that's the relationship that you're starting very today. much so well, as you say, you, at the amount of time, obviously, I've, it's now 35 years for myself um, that Is I've been it? in the business. I started as that engineer straight from school. That was my passion. That's what I love. And mm -hmm. over the years, it has developed. And I, I always remember as the years went on and we started moving on and sort of coming into more of the sales side of it and the engineering side, one of the questions I got asked, probably one of the most um, of the sort of questions on that was, why don't machines last like they used to? Mm. Like when they were built, of sort of well, they do, but I'm afraid just not in a budget level. Right. There and there. Full metal construction inside, metal chassis um, on there. So it's built to last. Naturally, you are going to get stitches. That's the next question. Oh, a basic machine. Mm. Well, to be fair, I can build this machine with 10 stitches on or 280 stitches on, and it costs no difference in money. Right. The stitches are a bonus on there. It's yeah. what controls the stitches, which yes. is underneath. Yes. But also, like That's yourself. That's an interesting point, actually, Gary. Yeah. It's an interesting point. Yeah, it's, it is just a bigger program on there. So it's, oh, we haven't changed the feed system to produce more stitches um, or anything like that. So we haven't messed around with the machine. So we know the performance level. It's just whether you're a quilter, whether you're a patchworker, whether you're a dressmaker. But you can be literally that. all of those things. That's exactly. And this machine is the machine for you. Lynn's asked a question, Angus. Yes. Morning, Stuart and Gary. Can I ask, uh, is the bobbin top loading on this machine? It looks like a great machine. Yes, it is a top loading bobbin on there. Could you just show us how it goes Indeed. in? Indeed, so we've got the, the clear view, which is nice on here as well, so obviously we can see what thread colour we're using and obviously how much thread we've got left on there. So that just pops up. The bobbin then just drops out. As I say, it's a deep fill bobbin as well, which is nice. And then all we do, it just drops in. I don't know how well we're going to see the bobbin top, but it is arrowed and numbered as well on top mm -hmm. of the bobbin. So mm -hmm. it's very simple to follow. Number one, number two, Number three then just cuts the tail off like so. That's it. It's like a little it. channel, isn't there? There is a little channel we just follow around, so it's very, very simple. Once the plate's on, I don't have to bring the underneath bobbin thread through ever again. Yeah, so fab. And you can just start holes, sewing, can't you? And we can literally just start sewing. So, Gary, a little thing, Yes. But yep. it's important to me, and I know it's important yeah. to you. How many bobbins do I get with the machine? Oh, well, this is it. And like with most machines within there, you get basically about four bobbins three, with the machine. Four, three, yeah. four with the machine. Yeah. But we are putting a bonus 10-pack with it as well. 
So as well as, as, well the, as the, so what do you get like 14 so it's going to be about 14 <gasps> bobbins that you nice. want with the machine as nice. we know you can never have too many bobbins on there so true yeah, absolutely so, so true a question yeah a question good morning gary could you please sew a buttonhole to see how even the two sides are i'm trying to choose a machine to buy for tailoring christine you are asking a quality question absolutely there. and i like it that's going to show us a buttonhole we do like as well as well because it's those little things that as you just say if the buttonhole's not right it's on the front of your garment yeah. Gonna notice it's going to final finish out. exactly it. it right so so, <laughs> so what i'm just going to do here is literally as you say just to finish off from one to the other because this will actually lead on to the buttonhole questions as well which yes. is fantastic because at the moment obviously i'm just doing straight stitch seams on a multiple layers of and types of fabric on there but it's not just about how a machine handles thick fabric is it it's about how it handles the finest the, the flow again like the crystal organza so uh, how fine that is you can still sort of just about see me through on there as well so again if i hold that up beautiful. on there and if we have a look on there that is beautiful. so oh the front and the back obviously which we know is going to be perfectly balanced and it was the same was obviously completely different yeah. contrast on the vinyls that we did and the stitch doesn't change the tension doesn't change but also which is very very important the stitch length didn't change as right. well because again sometimes you go to heavy to light as you know the stitch will get longer or shorter absolutely because the feed's not gripping it's it not really. coping so this is where again the box feed why we like to show those specific things i know yeah. uh, again, i think this is why when when people have been caught out and had those issues with other machines that's when they ask the question show me the back and that's what it. does it look like uh, on the because back because they know you've had the problems they've had the problems in here before as now, well now next would you show us a buttonhole, please? Absolutely. And while you're getting ready to do that, can I just ask, that's, this is for you, Christine, um, but also Collector in Bristol has asked, how heavy is the machine, please? That's Maggie. Thanks, Maggie. About 10 and a half kilos. 10 and a half kilos. Yeah, on there. Again, full metal chassis. <coughs> um, it has got... I'm just going to wind a separate bottom, but I'll take that off for the moment. So the lid just closes down, which is yep. nice. And it has got a full double handle built into yep. it. It comes with a solid hard cover as well. Nice. And the pockets are storage in the hard cover. So, yes, we have got, uh, you can tape around the classes. It is well protected. It yep. does fit in, uh, you don't need the extra, extra large trolley bags. It will no. fit in just a large trolley bag That's with the cover on as well. That's so again, for that information, we get asked quite a lot on there. Yeah, yeah, so, for sure. Uh, yeah, and it is quite happy to be moved around. Obviously, Good there's thing. some machines you read say... You wouldn't. No, exactly. True enough. So, which is nice right, we'll that you can carry it for a buttonhole next. And I want to read this uh, question, or a comment really, from Leone, who says, I love my Juki DX7. It is such a reliable, all-round workhorse. I love that word workhorse uh could i just have the message back please uh love that word workhorse don't you um, i am a quilter a bag maker and occasional dressmaker it does it all fantastic and that's the point isn't it you're getting thanks for your message leone that's the point you're getting all of your utility feet so things like your overlocking foot your open embroidery foot your utility foot, your regular zipper foot, um, your buttonhole foot as well, your uh, blind hemmer. But then you're also getting perhaps those more speciality feet, which you might reasonably expect to have to buy as extras. A walking foot, a quarter inch patchwork foot, a Teflon or non-stick foot, a darning foot. Those all come as standard. You're also getting your extension table, your knee lifter. Did you notice as well that there was that second spool pin so that you can wind your bobbins independently, but also do twin needle work? Now, also, as well as all of that, you're getting an additional package. And this is specially selected uh, by George, I believe. It is, a yes. A special selection of extra feet added in for your delight. And we'll show you those right now. So, Gary, what am I getting here? So, in front of yourself at the moment, we've done some samples in the, in mm -hmm. the hoops. So, starting at the top left on there, you've got the bias binder. So I'm looking at the screen. Yep. Uh, so it's in the middle for you at the moment. Yeah. The middle one there. So you've got the bias binding. So we're sewing on bias there. binding. So again, with the attachments that we put with it, as you say, you've got all your overlocking, your hemming, all your different feet, utility that way and creative. But on the dressmaking side, these are the ones we've, we've specifically picked out of the ones we get asked for the most yep. as extra. So, so you get your the bias, bias binding attachment on there. Yep. Next across on that is the concealed zip foot. 
Right, concealed zip. zip. Up. So that's this one here. On I there. get asked about that all the time, Gary. Yeah, all the time. Well, it's one of those things. Once Usually you actually have to buy it, that's it. And well, I, um, most machines will not. Yeah, come with that. And to be fair, it is probably our biggest selling foot on there because once you put an invisible zip in you generally never look back you wouldn't do a standard zip on there no so, so obviously the invisible zip foot which is then very nice yeah i've also then got a gathering foot so a bit of creative sewing on there as well next these door. are all extra no extra charge this is 97 pounds and 60 pence worth gathering foot adding skirt love the mini dress you can make a full-size adult one as well you know <laughs> yep we get that. Um, we also get our, uh, what's the next So that's thing, the double piping foot. And double I like when piping. we sort of first saw that. Oh, so I guess you've not seen too many double piping feet around. I have there, not. Right? Look at this. Again. See, I, love, I love adding piping to things though. Yeah. It looks so beautiful. double. And this is the sort of thing when you're actually putting piping on, uh, this is specifically like the industrial. So it sits over the piping. So it mm. traps it, but also keeps the fabric taut as well. So nice that. really nice. So love that. The double piping foot. Then you've got the roll hem foot. Yep, rolled so hem. So we all just put some <coughs> very nice, neat. It's about two and a half millimetre roll hem edge yeah. that it puts yeah, on there. Yeah, particularly well. nice on really fine fabrics like silk or ganza, um, really fine chiffon blouses, things like that. Um, my friend Sandra did a gorgeous um, blouse with like a big ruffle all down the front that was all tiny rolled hems it was gorgeous liberty lawn that would be nice yep what else and then next on there we have the narrow zip foot yes so as most of the time obviously what the zip foot comes as standard with the machine and uh, i know we had a little bit of a laugh earlier on this one but it has got sort of little, like little sort of buttocks as we said out the yes. back of it on. yes so the narrow zip foot as you can it's see got booty. It's, it's got a booty that's exactly so this one we've removed that and two reasons. One, as the illustrated on there at the moment is with the piping. Yes. So again, you can do really nice tight curves. So on close there, to it. And it will butt. Literally, no, no, uh, sort of pun on that one. But yeah, it's yeah. right next to the piping on yeah. there. But also, it allows you to use all different size of piping as well, which is Gorgeous. really, really nice. Yeah. But also for them, for the real chunky zips. Yes. So on that, which then you won't uh, butt up to. So, which, so again, a lot of flexibility within that. So yep. Which is really and nice. And then we also get a button sewing foot. And then we? the button sew on foot as well. So again, it will then clamp it, a nice rubber base on there to stop the mm -hmm. uh, foot, the button from slipping. Yep. We do get a button sew on stitch built into the machine as Fabulous. well. So you have got the best of both. So we can do the buttons, yeah. but can we do the button holes? And that's, the, that's the important. Sewing buttons on, we can most of us do, if not by yeah. hand or by machine, but the button holes are one of those things. If it's not right, it can look dreadful on there. But and also, Christina wants to see both sides, and so, so do I. Brilliant. And <laughs> uh, get consistency as well, obviously, yeah. a button hole. So, that's our button hold attachment on there. And to be that fair, looks scary. Exactly it. A lot of people sort of look at it and think, what do I do with that? Again, the machine will assist you and be intuitive that way, so it won't allow you to do anything wrong. But what, the main thing, whatever size button you've got, goes into the back and it will then just take a measurement. To be fair, most button hold systems are like that now. They've got that. Piece. So they, they have that where it will gauge and then repeat the button hole on there. So that's going to measure the button to well, create the perfect exactly size button. Exactly it, hole. indeed. Yeah. But with our button hole, as you notice, first of all, we've got a little jack plug mm -hmm. uh, on there. And then I'm we've also got two layers on the button hole foot. We've got the underneath plate and then the main foot. Same as our industrial machines. Again, it's that industrial design system, the way we do it. The fabric doesn't actually touch the feed at all. Okay. So. With a buttonhole system, you want it to be obviously a satin stitch as smooth as possible. So you want the machine to actually give you that perfect system. Mm -hmm. And the only way it can do it is gauge the fabric at the same time as sewing. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference where the sensor system will allow it to do that. So what that basically means, if I just pop that into place, so the button goes to the back, press a little leave at the back, that will just drop the foot off. So nice and easy that way. Use the extra high clearance on the foot lift. I can lower it under and then just pick the foot up. So it just nice clicks and simple, on. easy, just clip on feet. And then the jack plug will then just go into the side of the machine. So I go on to buttonhole first. So we've got our different section of stitches. So using the three buttons on here, which will give us the option to go in. So I'm going to go to the one, two, three button. And as we can see now, come up with the different groups of stitching. So I want to go to the buttonhole group. 
using the arrow key there. Now, can I just ask, and yep. I'm thinking as well of Christina here, how many buttonholes do we get? 16 different styles of buttonholes. 16? 16, absolutely. I wasn't expecting so, that, Gary. Why do we need, do we need it? Yes, we why? do. And I say, why not? Because again, if you're dressmaking, you have yeah. different styles. You're tailoring, we have yeah. different styles. Different well, stretch fabrics, stretch fabrics. different buttonhole to non-stretch. Also creative and decorative buttonhole yeah. now to make it a little bit Vertical, different. Vertical, horizontal, they're different buttonholes. Exactly it. So having those uh, different options, yeah. it is gonna give you then more flexibility, which yeah. is a lot nicer that way. Yeah. So what I've done, I've changed the thread to, this is a 60 thickness thread. So yep. it's obviously a lot finer, so we're just using the 40. And I put a nice bright orangey color on there as well. So we, we can see We it. want our buttonholes to stand yeah. out on that. That's yeah. why I'm not afraid of the quality on there. Good. So we're gonna go in, standard buttonhole, so zero two. So I'm just gonna press zero two on there. And that's just a standard buttonhole comes up on the front. So this is like a poly wool mix. I'm not going to use a calico or anything. This is like you would make a suit out of trousers sure. of sort of nice fabric that way. I'm not just going to do a fold. I'm going to do a proper triple fold. So like a button band would be as well. Mm -hmm. So is that proper setup? Then the actual fabric itself. Now remember at home, Gary's working from the back and sideways. It's much easier at home. <laughs> is it? Every other angle, I feel like, yeah. you know, every time I try and show a sewing machine, it's so awkward, isn't it? But we're trying to give you the best view possible. And this is a game where the assistant comes in as well. So, so that lowered, fabric's sandwiched between the layers of the foot. That's it. So you can see it's not actually on the feed at all. That right. Way. So what I'm going to do is just lower the presser foot down. I'm actually going to unplug the foot control. Okay. So with a buttonhole system, the, the smoother and the even you can keep it with speed, the speeding yeah. can slow down cause an issue that way. So I'm going to set the speed to about three quarter. Also, I'm going to ask it to then cut the threads and finish for me. So I'm just going to press out a little symbol appears within the window of scissors and the finishing Neat. stitch, mm. so which is nice. And then all buttonholes will feed backwards first. We have got a little gauging on the front of the machine. So at the moment, this light is red. Uh-oh, what haven't I done on there? Obviously, it's not happy. So I'm going to press the button, and it's telling me I haven't inserted the jack plug properly. Obviously, it was a purpose thing, just to let you know. Absolutely. That, that has now turned green, so we can see everything's OK. So we don't have to pull down that little no, thing at the side, because I was just wondering, when are you going to pull that down? Exactly, and the problem is, the, the little lever at the side, once you pull that down, and it's happened many, many times where you've suddenly got your lumps and bumps. If you catch that lever, it then sends your buttonhole back the wrong yeah. way. It might not be the correct size. Yeah. If, it, if, it, if it sticks on the lever, it will start sewing on the spot. I'll just tell you a really quick, very quick story. Yeah. Second, second show on the Great British Sewing Bee, I made this like asymmetrical, beautiful blouse in silk, right? all beautiful. The last thing I did was the buttonholes. One, perfect, two, perfect, three, four, last one, right at the collar, yeah. mangled. That's it. Completely mangled, and I thought, curtains. There was about two minutes left, curtains, I thought. Uh, stitched the buttons on, uh, whacked it on the model, and do you know, I think that May, Martin the judge, knew what I'd done. Yeah. But she, because she, when she looked at the blouse, she went, let's have a look at these buttonholes. <laughs> and she went, yeah, beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous. And I thought, uh-oh, here we go, here we go. And she stopped before and she got to the top stopped. one and went, right. fabulous. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm grateful every day. Yes, and that, that proves that, but that point. You know, and they were really basic sewing machines. They yeah. don't do a quality job. But again, you get to that bulky area. Yes. And it, and it just changes it. That's when it lets you down. And that's exactly Let what me see you say, the most important bit as well. So I'm just going to press start. So... Where most machines, again, will do a three or four stage buttonhole, this does two reinforced stitches up the side B. It's actually a seven stage buttonhole. So it's more like a tailored finish on there. Beautiful. Christina, I hope this is ringing bells for you. So I haven't changed any width, any length, any cutting width no. at all as well. We've kept it as standard. So all I'm doing is then finishing it off. It will stop, it will cut, needle up, foot up, and we can then just take that out. So. That is just a standard buttonhole. Coming in for a yes, please no. do. Have a look at that. That is lovely. That is uh, just completely, uh, as you say, even, I like the question, is because 
what the problem is with a lot of machines now, it will stitch one side forwards and one side backwards. Yes, it so does. The stitch is laying it's a different, different way. The pile is then different on the fabric. It is different. Because it stitches the same direction on both ways. And again, the back. <laughs> you have look to have at a look that. The back that is, there, that is, is beautiful. Lovely. That is beautiful. Have you got a little scissors there? I just want to trim the thread off because I... Yeah, so we've got the little we've quick got some little on there. I just want to take those last two little stitches those off little because legs. I want to show you and then why you're... just the beautiful quality of this. Gary, there's a question on screen for you. Do you want to read it out? Brilliant. Yes, indeed. So, morning both. Please, Gary, can I use different weight thread on top, bobbin? Yes, you can. So, again, an even stitch and even tension will generally require the same weight of thread top and bottom. Yes. But we don't always, i.e., perfect example is buttonholes. You yeah. want buttonholes, you need to look its best on top. So, you can always use like a 40 thickness on top and a 60 thickness underneath. Gary, it wouldn't matter which side of this buttonhole you use Thank on you. the top. Thank you. Well, this is... Because now, would you, would you even know, would you even know, I can tell you that is the wrong side of the buttonhole, but would you know? That is beautiful. And if you're, on, if you're on a tailored jacket where you have the jacket open, that you are going to see, as we know, front, thank you very much, front Especially and back. Especially when I'm on, on the there. dance floor. Exactly. Hello, hello. Well, this is it. And so to make it, and obviously I think there's a Pacific a designing place out there who makes tailored jackets, things like that. They use orange and red buttonholes to oh, make sure. it a feature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It? So that's just sort of on that. But oh, I bet those Juki boys wear jackets like that, don't they? Absolutely, we do. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> and they're matching plaid jackets with the novelty buttonholes yeah. on there. Christine, please, please get back in touch. Did that impress you? Because that impressed me. Well, what that I'm going to quickly me. show you on there as well. I've, all I've done is changed to a double round end buttonhole this time, and I've put the organza under it. So I've not touched anything else at all. Put the auto cutter on, press that. So complete contrast of fabric again. Again, I'm not going to touch it, support it, or hold it. Let the machine do the work for us. This oh, is a yeah. bit dangerous, isn't it? Well, so in a buttonhole on crystal organza. A lot of machines it would be, as you know, on that. You While that's sewing, we've it. got a quilty question. How wide is the space? When quilting a quilt, will it go under and sew without having to push and pull the quilt through? Sandra from Deal. Sandra, I know the answer to this. It's got an eight inch throat space. There is loads of, and actually it's really high as well. So there is a really good sort of, if you're a roller, then there's really loads of, of space to roll. It's referred to as a semi-long arm, so it has been That's geared it. up When it was for first quilting. developed, it was basically a long arm machine. Yes. Uh, yes. The 8 inches, 20 centimetres there, yes. it was sort of the biggest available. But then, as we know, years go on, it gets to redevelop, redevelop. But once you start going above this, we find it, you are then got a machine that you should really leave in place on your work room. They're difficult to transport, they're, they're very difficult they? the bigger they are. Because they are that bit more fragile as well, so yeah. you have to be a bit careful of that. Yeah. So, yeah, so we sort of just go on and say, literally, as we say, from one coming to the in, other. Coming in. On there. So we've got the edge on there. Yeah, that is beautiful. On there. And you just say the satin stitch, absolutely brilliant yeah. on there as well. That is absolutely cool. I can't believe how, like, it's not puckered. It's not distorted the fabric at all. And also, good because we haven't made the, the zigzag width any wider or anything like that, there's no puckering. It, there's less chance of obviously it pulling the threads down. But having the support with the fabric plate, mm. again, that's why I can literally swap from one to the other without adjusting or moving anything at all. So, no. And again, it's little things like that, yeah. which I find is so more important than, yes, we've got some lovely quilting, we've got yep. cross stitch, we've got our Reed. alphabets all on there as well. Yep. But as you say, you are going to be doing your buttonholes and your straight stitch a lot more generally. <laughs> Gary, we've got about two minutes. Oh, right. Any we're chance you could time, show me sewing through the really thick layers of denim where you do like the triple fold? Because yeah. I just want to bring it back to the quality of the machine. And, and you keep referring to it as well. The, all the fancy stitches and the buttonholes, they're all lovely icing on the cake. But what's the cake like inside? It's all about the motor, the quality of the feed, and that's what we're going to end with. Uh, morning, everyone, says Joe. Wow, Gary really knows his stuff. He really does. Thank you, Joe. Oh, really man. enjoyed this show. Thank well, you, I still have a passion. I, uh, like yourself, we can talk about sewing all day, and we will do it with a smile on our face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it is something we, we really enjoy. After all these years, yeah. it's something that we still just love to do enough to get one on. of the best things about gary speaking as, as, as sort of a host of a show it's lovely when you have a, a pro comes in 
who is as cool as a cucumber, who I can ask to do anything live on air and there's no sweat and you don't worry about it. And I, and I know that there are no demos that I can ask him to do that, that will be the wrong thing to ask. It was like, oh no, don't make me do that live. <laughs> You'll do literally any demonstration on a sewing machine or an overlocker, won't you? Absolutely. Because, because you know the machine's up to it. Well, that's the key thing Check for me. Check this out, this is the, It's just knowing that the machine is going to cope with it as well. Uh, on there, everything is a vast, and this is why I don't just stick to a plain piece of yeah. calico. I've just put it back to normal straight stitch. Yep. On, on there, I'm going to put it up to three mil because it looks a bit nice. Lovely. This is an eight ounce denim, so it's quite Big a weight. Denim. Yep. And to be fair, this is three layers, nothing at all. And this yeah. is what most machines should just glide through. You can say it just takes it straight through, no worries whatsoever. I'll get to the end. Let's cut. What it. size needle are you using? This, this is a size 80. 80. Yeah. yeah. An 80. Crystal organza and thick denim. <laughs> Would you believe? Amazing. So because of, because of the okay. power and the feed of the machine, it copes yeah. with it. So this is just your three layers of denim. Yeah. Obviously, most machines should cope with that. No problems at all on there. Oh. But what we're going to do is a jeans hem. Yeah. Turn so the hem up. the jeans hem, obviously, we do the fold. So we've got two layers, basically six layers, two layers on yeah. there. That is not a jeans hem. A jeans hem is let's fold Stop. it again. So we've got three layers, nine layers. That's nine layers, layers of yep. eight ounce Stem denim. On there. So this is where your average machine is going to struggle. It's going to get blocked once it gets to those nine layers. It's going to stick. It's going to do loads of little tiny stitches all in one place. And this is where you would be doing your top stitching. So this is that one line of stitching that you can see. So this is the one that needs to be good. So again, straight up to the bump. So I'm not going to help it. I'm not going to push it. I'm going to let the machine. It doesn't strain. It doesn't struggle. Hello, hello. Again, it just goes through. <laughs> Absolutely no problems at all. So that is it. As you can, as you get to some machines, you get there and it's like bam, bam, you bam, just bang, taking it out and we'll have a look. Ooh, and then have a little look up there through. And then here you say, we'll have a little look at that on there. <laughs> and um, there, this is, this is the wrong side because Gary was sewing from the other side. Look, this is nine layers. This, and I can tell you the stitches are exactly the same length. There is no change. There is, and there's no bump in the seam either where Gary went over that big lump. Let me move that over very slightly. Look at that. That is absolutely fantastic, Gary. I'm Thank impressed. You. Yeah, again, it's, it's a good machine itself. It will take it, whether you say, whether you're repairing a pair of jeans, whether you're recycling a leather bag, whether you're recycling, turning sort of jeans into bags and things like that, knowing you've got those multiple folds, a lot of machines mm -hmm. will say struggle, will break needles yeah. and will damage. This, absolutely no problems at all. So, Brilliant. Yeah, thank Last you. question of the hour goes to Christine. She says, thank you for the buttonhole demos, Gary. They are impressive. Wonderful. Can the gap between the sides be set to two different widths on this machine? No. We can say three different whips. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I, sorry really? Yeah, three, two. Three. So not just two, but three. Three. If I just quickly show you on there, in the toolbar, again, there's <laughs> so, good as so much more we can do <laughs> on here. So I go and press OK. We, then we have the three different whips in there. So if you're using a high dome button, using obviously a flat button. Yeah. Yep, no problems whatsoever on that Absolutely one. Absolutely <laughs> brilliant. Not two whips, three whips. That's brilliant. Thank you so no, much. Thank you very much. We're going to devote 15 minutes in Gary's second show to this machine as well, because we know we've got some more questions from you to answer. So we're going to have 15 minutes in the 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock show um, with Gary for that. We're also going to have 45 Five minutes at 11 o'clock on this fantastic overlocker. Gary's going to be threading it live. We're going to be putting it through its paces. It's an air threader. And also don't forget that we offer split pay on both the Juki sewing machine and the overlocker. We also give you 3.95 is your postage. And it doesn't matter what you buy from us. You could buy an overlocker and a sewing machine and a new crochet kit, and some fabric, and some sander, and it will all be 3 95 for everything. Even though your overlock or your sewing machine is coming from Juki Direct. Christine says, great, and I can't think of a better way to finish the hour. Great. <laughs> Fabulous. Thanks, Gary. Absolutely. Thank you very much. I'll see Thank you in you an all. hour. Yes, indeed. And after the break, I will be joined by Sandra Rushton. We have got wooden buttons back in stock. I shop those during the break. Heart handles are back in stock as well. So shop those during the break. And then we'll 
be getting stuck into a brand new art folder project and more beautiful uh, haberdashery stencils from Santangle. Back by popular demand, introducing the one, the only, Gemporia Festive Ball. Party with your favourite presenters from Gems TV, Hobby Maker, Jewelry Maker and Sewing Street. We're all together for a night that's going to be the talk of the town. Situated at the fabulous Stratford Manor, close to the world famous Stratford upon Avon. Tickets are just £99 per person, including a welcome drink, a three course dinner, half a bottle of wine, and music that'll have you dancing all night long. There'll also be a shop at the party, and even a tombola if you're feeling lucky. Numbers are limited, so order your tickets today to avoid disappointment. Let's make it a night to remember at the Gemporia Festive Ball on Saturday, the 25th of November. See you there. Follow Sewing String on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times, or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy myself something fabulous. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! If you're a Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times, or four times. So that means you pay once, 
Then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy myself something fabulous. Follow Sewing Street on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Hey, really good to have your company here on Sewing Street today. I'm Sewing Street and this... It's Sandra Rushton. Hello there, again. Hello. Again. again. It's so wonderful to have you company. Oh, lovely. Thank uh, you for having me again. <laughs> and again, yes. tickling our fancies with more gorgeous projects. A bag, but like no other, this yeah. is a gorgeous art folder. I'm thinking straight away, sketchbook in here. Yeah. I want my paper dressmaking patterns in here. This is a beautiful bag. Pockets on the front, inside, love that snap fastener, inside you have got poppered sections where you can put um, sort of like a, a stiff card yeah, or it's gray, board. Like grey board, yeah. Just like grey board. If you want to give it a bit more structure. To give that lovely structure. So if you are using this for things like your paper patterns, for your art materials, um, absolutely superb. But you don't have to put those in at all if you don't want to. Of course, being removable means the whole bag can be washed. And I'm all for it, aren't yeah. I? I like I like something that you can wash, you can remove, you can take things out. And so I'm practical. Really, yeah, yeah. So practical. Now, for your thirteen ninety nine, this is what you're getting. So you're getting your superb pattern. So full instructions, all spelled out, all in colour, loads and loads, <laughs> all spelled out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an expression, you know what I mean. Um, all spelled out for you in detail. All of your pictures, lots and lots of words as well, all in the right <laughs> order. And you've also got lots and lots of ideas for how you might tangle if you want to add tangling to your bag. So that's what you get. You also get full-size dressmaker-style pattern pieces. So no measuring to do. No, again, you don't have to I have a rotary no. cutter. I, I like them full size. I like to be able to put them on my fabric and know they're in the right place. And I've got the right amount of fabric yeah. to do what I want to do. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's easy to do that way as well. Yeah, isn't it? it is a really good way of doing it. And then also, you get two pieces of grey board, which is that really nice, thick, solid card that Sandra's included in her bag to give it stiffness and firmness. They are put into sort of openable sections in the bag yeah. so that you can take it out for washing. Exactly. Or if you don't want to put those in and you think you've got enough structure with whatever you're going to use, yeah. you can use them as pockets to put your pens in. Yeah. And paints, things like that, wherever you want to Absolutely. Because on this bag here, you've used a little bit of light, maybe H630, 40, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Inside a bit of quilt bit wadding. Of wadding. Um, this one doesn't have the boards inside, but it's made with Decaville light. So it's got a nice firm structure, but it doesn't have it, it doesn't have the same hardness to the bag of course i think if you're putting paper in if you've got artwork it's nice to have those boards because you know even if you take them out the pockets and put your artwork in between the two mm -hmm. you can do that and it's you, you like to know that you're not going to get tatty edges around it exactly yeah now what sandra's done here this one first of all this is your full-size pattern that you get in your pattern along with the grey board, full-size pattern pieces. Now on this one, can you see, Sandra's customised it a little bit, has made it slightly shorter, slightly shorter. But I'm thinking as well, Sandra, it would not be difficult at all to make it 
a little bit longer. No, of course. And if you do need to do that, then of course you're going to need a little bit more fabric. Yes. Because I'm trying to work yes, within half fair. meters, of just course. just to keep your costs down. Yeah. So going smaller is not a problem. If you mm. want a real small little purse or just for an A5 book, then it's brilliant. But if you want to go a little bit bigger than the, the actual pattern, then you will need a bit more fabric to that go That is with absolutely it. So fair enough. Just be aware enough. of that. But I'm just thinking it would be rather nice for taking things like your smaller rulers, templates, that yes. kind of thing, storing them, taking them to classes as well. It's a lovely little sort of almost satchel style bag, isn't it? Almost, yeah, yeah. And this one, no tangling, but this one... You can see where Sandra's left those plain sections of fabric where you can go to town and add some extra embellishment. Um, loads of you checked out on this before the hour even began. Well done, you. $13.99 for all of this. You get your two pieces of grey board to provide stiffness inside the bag. You get your full-size dressmaker-style pattern pieces. This is really good quality, heavy cartridge paper. So reusable again and again and again. And then full pattern, full instructions, everything spelled out. Everything spelled out. Even and all pictures, your everything. Yeah. Even the that's, pictures. That's my back garden as well. Is it? It is. It's my little swing on Gorgeous. my back garden. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> it was Obviously funny, a sunny yes. day. It wasn't yeah. yesterday, no. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So that, and, and again, amazing price, $13.99. This is what I always refer to as a pattern plus. Always get a pattern plus. Um, now, would this fit a 16-inch laptop? I will tell you. Hold it right there. Um, oh, I had oh, a tape measure. Where, I had a tape measure. It was in there. Oh. Hi. It's amazing how these White things... Ah, oh, there it is. Thank you. Thanks, Cap. Right. Let's have a look. Right. No. So this it currently is a 14-inch. But with some extra fabric, you can easily make it wider. Easily, easily. make it wider. You'd need to add a bit of extra fabric and you'd obviously the boards would need to be bigger. Absolutely, yeah, but it's, yeah. it's absolutely possible and just it's really easy to do because you think rectangles. Yeah. I mean, I could have actually just given you the measurements and say measure it to this point, but yeah. the patterns are so much easier and then, of course, you can add to it or take it away if you want. It's, I'll, I'll show you. It's very easy to do. I agree. I agree. Um, Janie says, so excited about these projects, Sandra. I have Aww. ordered lots of Christmas presents for me under the tree. Oh, fantastic. But you know Aww. what? You can actually make your own, but then you can make one for somebody else as well. Yeah, you can. So you're justified then. You say, I've got one. And when people say, I love what you've got, you go, I've made you one for Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Best yeah. friends or what? Yes. Absolutely. Let's talk fabric. Um, love the fact that you design these around using half meters of fabric yes because it's one of my favorite ways to buy fabric so this one is a gorgeous dan morris print I oh do. jason yenta big uh, i do like jason yenta dan morris and that yes Ace. they uh, could the be related they could they? be they could be distant cousins so you get two half meters you get your jason yenta and then you also get your solid to combine the two together, that's a beautiful combo. It is that. And it's tangleable on that purple, you can tangle on that. It's a, a nice, not too dark, so you'll no. be able to see what you've done with it, yeah. Um, less than 20 of these fabric bundles available. And just a thought, I could actually use these for your yeah. first bag. That of we course you could, because again, it's two half metres. Two half metres. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So beautiful. Less than 20 of this bundle left, though. It's been very popular. Now, I've got another purple option. You love your purples. I, do you know, purples, reds, anything that's a real strong colour, yeah. I think. Yeah. 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 Oh, love this one. This is so vibrant. This is a bit of yeah. me. And that's the one that I made up, so you can yeah. see in its uh, finished form. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. And that's what these two fabrics together look like. Nice, Fabulous. Yeah, really beautiful. Gorgeous combination. That, again, the price is amazing. Ten ninety nine for both half metres, outer and lining. My last option is beautiful, cool, vibrant blues. This is Jason yes. Yenta. So you've got your patterned. These are digital print, by the way. I know they look batiki, but they are actually digital print. So the printing is absolutely superb. 
superb quality, mm -hmm. plus your kind of turquoise blue feel. Yeah, lining. yeah, and I've, I have got one of those mostly made up, <laughs> if you know what I mean, so you're able to see that a little, Gorgeous, a little bit. Gorgeous, yeah. Later. That's like swimming pool blue. It is, isn't it? It's mm. very summery sky, but mm. in, in a different country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Not, not the UK. <laughs> no, definitely not. UK's more That's not my garden brilliant, pond. Not cobalt. <laughs> now, could we do a bit of demo? Yeah, please? would you mind bringing the pattern over? I don't mind at all. Sure, yeah. Thank you. I've got one, but it could be anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Thank you Set very much. Instructions short the pattern pieces. Yeah, I just think just nice to sort of do a quick show because we've talked about um, you know the pattern having everything on there. So we've actually done it in two sheets. So it's quite um, quite a lot to go on here. So this one, um, here we go. It's good you've got big tables. It is. It? We've got big tables. It's we've got big spaces yeah. now. It's fast. So here we go. So if I turn it round, what I've actually done here for you is, um, I've actually sort of said that yes, you're going to cut one in your lining. So I've given you choices. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want to work with works for this. So it's nice to have that there just to give you an idea. It's great. And of course, it shows you where. When I say the centre, the bottom of your bag's going to be, and it shows you where your flap's going to be. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to make this longer, mm -hmm. you could make this bit longer, but oh, keep your flap superb. the same superb. if you wanted to. Yep. Or, of course, you could go that way to make it wider, like we've done. Mm -hmm. You've got your popper positions as well. And your handle, rather than drawing a whole oh. handle, we've given you the handle top and bottom. So you can cut those out and you can put it onto your fabric either side so you can then again make them as long as you want oh, but you've got the top and the bottom you can work with it i think that's a really nice way of doing that agreed so uh, you've, you've got everything you need looking on the next one thank you right, right. Look, glamorous uh. yeah <laughs> so here i've got the inner pocket again with the popper positions you've got your little center strip here that's the bit with the the fabric you know in the middle mm -hmm. here i've given you an outer pocket but in the instructions we cut it in one and then you uh, interface it, and then you actually cut it in half, so you've got the two. Mm -hmm. It's easier, I think, to interface. That's a good idea. But if you find that your you know, your fabric is a little bit narrower, you can always just cut two sections if mm -hmm. you want to, mm -hmm. so you've got options. I've actually shown you here how I've actually placed it on my material. Oh, that's an extra, extra bit. I like that. Yeah, so I've placed, I've literally got two, my two half metres, I've put them together, not folding or anything, mm -hmm. and completely put them all out on there so that really i think really helps yeah absolutely yeah, especially That's if you've never feature. done it before it's, it's a brilliant one agreed okay uh, a message uh, morning boys and girls <laughs> i did sandra's file bag for my tablet and tangle folder oh, if i did yeah. artwork folder could i odor coat it and when would i do that that's from jamie in greater manchester oh, just, yeah. so od coat is um, like a waterproofing oh, yeah, yeah. liquid yeah. and you apply it with almost like a credit card or you can use right, a, yeah, you know, yeah, a, yeah. A, a, a distance yeah. store card yeah. for it. Yes, you can eau de coat it, absolutely. Mm -hmm. If you want it to be waterproof, you'll need to apply three coats, water resistant, just one or two. Yeah, yeah. I would advise you eau de coat your fabric and then, and then make up your hands. bag. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So you could mark out your pattern pieces. Mm. I still wouldn't cut them out. Mm. I'd only cut up to the edges yeah. and then, then I would make it. it. Yeah. If you want it to be truly waterproof, once you've stitched your bag up together, things like your top stitching, I would just paint over the stitching yes, lines just to fill the holes. Absolutely. I've never yeah. used that before, actually. Oh, it's a good, yeah, it's a good I product. I think I need to try that. Absolutely. Yeah, it just goes on a bit like PVA glue. Yeah, which I've used all the time. Mod Podge, that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. I don't absolutely. know at what stage you would tangle. I think I'd do it before. Before because it, if and you then do it afterwards, the then the fine line of pens I do won't work, and you're going to need uh, a sharpie or something Understood. over the top, that kind of thing. Understood. So tangle first, and then finish it after. I cool. would, personally. Great. Well, All right. Tips. Okay, so I've got a couple of bags in different stages. Again, I'm not going to spend time sewing because we've got some stencils we want to show you. But just if you've never done it before, giving you the heads up. So what I've done here, I've got my inside. Now I've confused it a bit because I've got my inside and outside the same. Oh, well, that's okay, Lou. Liberty. Mm. So what I've actually done is I, in the instructions, it shows you that you need to sort of fold your pattern. You know, we talked about the flap mm -hmm. and the foldy bits. So I've got this. And yeah, it's all medium width, 
way it's interfacing on this because I want a bit more structure. Yeah, so that would be nothing else, just medium weight interfacing on the outer fabric. This is the inner fabric. Oh, the, on the line. Inner fabric for now, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I've actually done here, and it shows you in the instructions, I've cut myself a little notch here and here. Okay, I'm working in quarter inch inches, that kind of thing. And that shows me where the bottom of my bag's going to be. You see, I've got this lovely little square shape mm -hmm. here. And the reason this is really useful is because what you can do then is if you bring in... I do love my rulers. Mm. If you bring in your ruler, I'm going to measure from each edge of the square half inch in. So, let's see, half inch there, mm -hmm. half inch there. I mean, of course, you can do it with pins, things like that. But then I've got my inner pocket. I've top stitched the top, yeah, folded mm -hmm. it over, top stitched the top. And I've just pressed the bottom there, see? So, I've got my mm -hmm. quarter inch seam. So, just a single hem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what I'm going to do is place this here. Have you fussy cut that pocket so it all matches? Just the lines a little up? bit. <laughs> Just a little yeah, bit. I think one aisle. matches better than the other in a sense. It's, <laughs> it's whatever fabric I'd got. Really? So that That's then, funny. if I line it up there, yep. and then I just pin it in place, I can do then top stitch down the side here, and then up here inside the seam. Mm -hmm up here in the side of the seam, both sides, and then that gives you your inner pocket. Great. So that's dead easy to do, dead really easy. And you can subdivide those if you want. You can subdivide those if you want, but I've used them whole because, of course, I've put my grey board in. Right. So, so, that's, ah, so that's what the grey board's going inside. That's what the grey board's going to sit Understood. inside. Right. Okay. So if I bring in now my outer piece, mm -hmm. that's like the pocket for that one. So my outer piece, very, very similar. And I've actually used, uh, I've got Decaville on this one. See, so it's giving me a nice structure. So a medium weight interfacing inside, inside you use something a little bit heavier, heavier on, the, on outside. the outside. And what I've actually done here, let's just take that little bit off, is I've actually placed the pocket in exactly the same way as I placed the last one. So half an inch up, put my ruler across. You see, I've pinned it in. But before I top stitch this part of the pocket, you need your handles, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, really good tip if you've not got one of these. Oh, oh my goodness. The loop turners. Me. Oh, yeah. you need one of these in yeah. your life because trying to turn this out could take you hours, even if I give it to John. Mm. So use one of these, turns it out. Yeah. Um, just in terms of yes. a level for this bag, beginner, intermediate, advanced, <gasps> where are we at? Absolute, 100%. Beginner is brilliant. We've got. We've got these rectangle shapes, yep. we've got clear instructions, yep. everything's square, everything's yeah. straight. And full-size paper line. pattern pieces. You go a bit wobbly, don't matter. It's tangling. It's yeah. But, but full-size paper pattern pieces, so you don't even need to be able to measure it out and rotary no, it. No, not at all. So I say, before you top stitch the bottom of this pocket in place, you're going to take your handle and quarter, you see I've actually just got a little crease at quarter of an inch. I'm just going to unpin it and I'm going to put that underneath you see, so it's just, stick, just sticking out on that edge a little bit, because this is a raw edge. Mm -hmm. Just sticking out a little bit, and then I'm going to push it, or push it, fold it over, so it sits and it covers that edge of the pocket there. I've got you. And then what I would do is I would put a pin in here, and then I would measure from here up six inches, and that's the top bit. That's where we go to. Got you. So you'd stitch, again, straight lines all the way down across the top, put a little box in the top, a little cross in it, mm -hmm. and it's going to be nice and secure there because you're carrying things about. Same this side. This side, however, there's no pocket in there. So again, what I would do, use my ruler, quarter of an inch, mm -hmm. and then I'd take my handle, and just as before, see, just fold that little bit underneath, and I'd line this one up with this one here. Mm -hmm. You could do that by eye. It's pretty straightforward. And then this one, you would pin it, and you'd measure up eight inches, and then again, stitch around it, and you then turn your handle round and do the same on the other side. That gives you your handles. Got you. Okay, once you've done that, put it all together so you've got all your handles stuck inside, top and bottom together, right sides. Mm -hmm. Stitch it all the way around, and then all I would do here is just leave a little bit of a, a seam so you can actually fold it all over. Mm -hmm. Easy as that. Mm -hmm. And of course, this one here. And again, I think it's nice to see because we all like, you know, we like to see nicely pressed pieces. And we've got the fabric combo course, for this as well, yeah. haven't we? Well, that one hasn't been pressed. So when you get it, you think, oh, my goodness me, it doesn't look oh, very neat. Oh, it looks neat. lovely. But you can see, look, there's my six inches up there, eight yep. on the back. Mm -hmm. But it just needs a little bit more of a press around the edge. Mm -hmm. All the instructions show you how to do that. 
yeah. straightforward. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Love that project. And as you say, completely beginner friendly. Absolutely. It is. Honestly, it is, yes. Could be your first bag. Could be your first bag. Now, I've got... Ah. Oh, I oh, borrowed. I gave you the instructions, didn't I? Can you I have did. them back, I'm please? I'm just looking for where have I put them. Here we are. There you go. <laughs> there you have go. the grey board you as well. Can. Thank you. Can I just reach. Need a box. <laughs> Right, so for thirteen ninety nine, it's a fantastic price, isn't it? You get your full instructions, words, photographs, step by step, really broken down, very, very carefully into all those steps. You get full size pattern pieces spread across two sheets. There's nothing overlapping. You don't need to trace anything off. You could cut out these pattern pieces directly from the paper. Personally, I always trace them off. Yeah. So I keep my paper pattern intact. Yeah, honestly, whatever whatever works for you, I don't, it doesn't matter either. I, I like to cut mine out and physically use them, but yeah. then when you're cutting, you might lose a little bit as yeah. you're going. But no, whatever you want to do. And then you're also getting two pieces of grey board. This is really sort of very firm very firm card almost like mount board that have been cut to size these go inside your bag to create that sort of um art folder firmness so if it's sketches if it's artwork if it's your paper pattern pieces i'm really pushing down on the top here and this is staying firm and sort of stiff as a board um, to keep your artwork safe or your pattern pieces but you could leave those out you can also of course take them out when you want to wash the bag you've got a pocket on the front it's just a brilliant project now we have got some fabulous tangling stencils and this has blown me away. This is Haberdashery 2, Creating Clothes. Have a look at these. I am in love with these. This is like going into my wardrobe. They're, they're fabulous. That, actually, that jacket is my pink jacket. Oh, really? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So, so, uh, I'm showing you how to, how to draw a pink jacket. Not so that you have to keep it pink. But. Inside that, you're getting your stencil. We've mounted this onto a piece of card so you can see all the different shapes. So you can see there you've got dressmakers, mannequins. You've got the stands. You've also got shoe bases, bag bases. You've got different elements to create clothing as well but as always with Sandra's stencils the real genius comes when she starts using them and then of course you've got your full workbook showing you fully worked examples of how to use those stencils to create your basic shapes and how to then go in and add the all-important tangling to create an absolute wardrobe season after season of fantasy clothing. Uh, so that's Haberdashery 2. Of course, we have got Haberdashery 1. So Haberdashery 1, this came out just a little while ago, didn't yes, it? Yes, yeah, not that long ago. It's, uh, yeah, it's a really nice one. Lots of different pieces on there Ooh. that you can use to make your own designs with, or applique in particular work really well with this. Yeah, really nice. I see a dressmaker's mannequin, yes. I see a sewing machine, pin cushion, reel of threads, reels of thread, scissors. Mm -hmm. But I'm also seeing some other things which I'm not so sure about. Yeah, well, think cotton reels, think um, you, it's sort of got a bit of a wreath design to it, so you yeah. need a circle to put that in. Oh, nice. You've also got the, the mannequin's stand if you want yep. to. Yep. So yeah, lots of different bits and pieces in there that you can actually create your Let's own go. variations. And as well, of course, full instructions for how that wreath is superb. Ink tents, embroidery designs, appliques, you can make these out of fabric, brilliant. Um, now for all of this, you do need Sandra's amazing Santangle pens. We have a set of three. These are also great, can I just say, if you're making labels for your quilts or your bags, handmade by and details, you know, mm -hmm. these are great because they're fabric safe, they're washable, yep. um, they don't even need heat setting. No, nope, Just not let at them all. dry and they're permanent. Yep. You get two 03s, which are the fine ones, one 05, which is slightly thicker for filling in, yep. all three for 7 99 
all three. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? It's really it's good value. Price, that. Really good value. Even if you just need pens for marking labels for children's clothing, they are worth getting a set. They are, absolutely. They're completely washable. They right? are up to 40 degrees. We've yep. tried it on a range of fabrics and we've put them in the washing machine and we do a lot. Of course, bags and things like that I've drawn on. And, and yes, they don't. And my good friend Pam Holland in Australia, she um, does lots of applique. Yeah, yeah. And then she goes in with permanent fabric pens to add detail, Ex little dots, yes, lines, that's it. shading. She's tangling. Yeah, she <laughs> does need to start tangling, yeah, my goodness yeah, me. Yes. Yeah, absolutely fab. Grab those, grab those. Um, Yes, I'm just going to come over and come we're going on. to see some techniques. Just remind you as well, we've managed to get more of the wooden buttons and more of the heart handles. They sold out in the first hour. If you were um, wanting those, you, we've got them. Mm -hmm. So which, which stencil are you well, using? Well, I don't mind use either, but Should I've got the clothes Let's do Haberdashery too. Let's the clothes. do Haberdash the clothes. Yes, They're so lovely. Now, looking at my stencil, you can see there that I've actually numbered them. So looking at my instructions... There you go at the back, you see it, you've actually got numbers there. So make sure that you write your numbers to match what I've got. So you can see that you've got trousers, you've got two sizes of mannequin, mm -hmm. stands, you've got hats and shoes, all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do, we're going to have a look at this maxi summer dress. Lovely. Now, of course, I, I've given you one example, but you can create your own thing with it. Absolutely. So I'm going to bring one in. I've done it with friction pen. Let's just move the instructions to one side for a moment. How did I do this? So looking here, we've got this shape. There it is. That's what starts everything off as your mannequin there. Mm -hmm. So putting this in gives you that starting point. And then using a friction pen, I've actually followed the line and come down and drawn myself some curves mm -hmm. along both sides, a little wave at the bottom. To do my bow, you can see there it's a little bubble. So again, using a pen, a little bubble. And then I've joined this to this, like this, and this to this. We can also put some little lines in, but this will come later with your extra tangling. Mm -hmm. okay. The hat shape, if I bring my stencil back in, you see here, number mm -hmm. seven. If I put number seven in there, there you've it is. You've got your wide got brim. Your wide, and you've got different shaped brims that you can actually put in mm -hmm. and make your own sort of design with it if you want to. Exactly how hats are made. Exactly how hats are made. Exactly. Brims. So your little ribbon, a couple of bubbles and a few little loops. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's it's a straightforward few lines. Mm -hmm. So I've got one here that once it's been drawn in pen, so this is with my fine liners now, you see we've added those extra little tangles in. So creating these little butterflies. They're lovely, aren't they? Really cute. It's a case of it's a loop and a loop and another loop and another loop and two little lines yep butterflies so you can start to sort of think where do i want these how am i going to create this you could even bring in some little bubbles along the way and start to work Gorgeous. those in so it, it's 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 all up to you isn't it you are then the creator you've got the basic shape the main ideas you see here as well, we've got this extra little line come out. So we've got a little cap sleeve little in cap there. cap sleeve, very smart. And we can put some little... A little bit um, 1930s looking, I feel. A little bit, isn't 20s, it? 30s. Yeah. We've mm. got a few designs in there that you can mix and match. <laughs> and of course, if you wanted to do a smaller version, so if you wanted to do a mother and daughter, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. you could have this same, but a smaller version. Because Lovely. If we look at the mannequin there, you see there she is, look, she's mm -hmm. a little bit smaller. That would look lovely. Or if you it? want to bring a bit of perspective in and have one oh, person standing at the front, one person further course. back, or one outfit. Anything you want to do. Say. And of course, if you wanted to do the shoes at the side, you could do the shoes. So I love doing little faux stitching. It makes the ribbon look better, doesn't mm. it? So I'm just going to bring those little bits in there. And of course, you could do that all around and on the hat as well. So it's not that I'm putting anything in that's really tricky. We've done the drawing. We've Remove the friction pen, you've got the main outline, and now it's all about colouring it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when you've got your uh, ink tense pencils, because of course it's a really nice way to go with it, it's going to bring a little bit of colour in here. Now we've got ink tense pencils, don't they we? Are lovely. 
Ah, fantastic. This is the tin of 24 different colours, 55.99. They are, I've, I've got a set of ink tense pencils and I feel like they're almost like a lifetime purchase yes. because I've used them so much and I just don't think I'm ever going to use them up. No, they're, they're really, really good quality. And Great of course, investment. Yeah, you can actually, if you want to, in really when they call ink tense if you mm. want to really increase the intensity of the color and you want them to be more permanent then i would come in with a little bit of water mm -hmm. and use them sort of as a watercolor yep. and they brush out and yep. of course once you've done that uh, they are permanent yep and you can also use things like fabric medium or aloe vera gel as well to yep. create gorgeous, gorgeous effects with these. This is the tin that we've got. And did you notice we've managed to sneak in a little um, spit pay oh, on nice. these? Oh, nice. Really, but, um, oh, this is upsetting me. They're all, in, oh, they're not in the oh, colour order. This, this is, is making better, my eye it? twitch. Th this, this is it's Leslie. making my <laughs> eye twitch. Sorry, well, you know what I'm going to be doing for the next couple of minutes. Yeah, he's going to sort that out. I'll just out. be over here, thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's easy. You, know, Are I you do, like that? Uh, I, I do like, sometimes if I'm working with them, they end up all over the place. But when sure. I'm finished, I do like to put them back in order. Yes. Absolutely. But yeah, they, they work lovely. And you know, even if you're, you know, somebody's art college, mm -hmm. fashion college, that kind oh, of yeah. thing. You know, if they want something that they can design their own clothes on, but they need a little bit of structure. Yes. Because let's face it, drawing the human form is really tricky at times. I agree. Do you know what I'm thinking with this set? I would do um, a, like almost like a sampler quilt of all different fashions. Do them block by block. Oh, that'd be nice. And create a whole sort of, you could do seasonal. You could do, you know, kind of autumn, winter, yeah. spring. Maybe Absolutely. something like that. Yeah. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, right. I'm just adding a little bit of colour to this. I've, colour. I have got one coloured here that I'll show you in a minute, but I always wanted you to see, you know, I'm blending colours as I'm going. So I'm using them just as I would really on paper. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm, I'm bearing in mind that I could actually bring some water in and push them out a bit. So I'm not completely overloading it with colour. Right. I think when you, you're doing this and you want to add some water, it's nice to add a little bit. Yes. And then bring your water in and then add more if you need to. Yeah. So it's don't a bit ever subtle. completely fill it. Right. Yeah. So then a bit of water in and it'll look something like this. Oh. <gasps> wow. Now of course we talked about those background stencils earlier as well, didn't we? And that you can see is just those beautiful roses in the side. And it's just bringing in and making a lovely sort of cover. Colouring that in. You could add some little beads to that and all really sorts like of that. things. But of course, if you're into your applique and you want to go a little bit different, mm -hmm. you could do this. But instead of actually colouring it in, you could actually paper piece it. Okay. So let's have okay. a look at this one. There she is. Oh, that is beautiful. So we've got a couple yeah. little, you know, little folds in here of eyeing this on. You could stitch around it a little bit of a ribbon. And mm. there, you know, you've got two. If I bring both of them side by side, mm. you've got two variations of the same dress. But that's just one dress yeah. in there. There's dresses, there's trousers, there's jackets, there's all sorts of things. Looks amazing. And all, all... From that, there are so many things in there. We've not even included shoes. No, it's We've amazing. We've not included bags. bags. That's, this is haberdashery two. Two and of course, clothes. you do get your workbook, which is yes. worked examples showing you exactly how to use these templates. Can I just say, I feel <gasps> calmer now. <laughs> so Absolutely. much calmer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it. They're just lovely. I do have a couple of pictures. Let's have a look. We've got so much space. Oh, yeah. Just so you can see the different variations of what you could do. Mm -hmm. So this one, like you're using actually the mannequin stand as a table. Shoes on there, look. So fully dressed. <coughs> and then, of course, you've got um, a bit of a steam. Wow. Got five going on. Hello, Whitby. Yeah, there we go. Another lot. So again, you've got the front and the back showing there. Oh. Love the inking Steve in the background point. as well. Oh, fabulous. A little bit of a sketch. You know, we did sketchbooks mm. a while back. So if you want to sketch it, of course, there's... <gasps> wow. Steve. So you can see the mannequin now. Yeah. And, of course, if we look at the instructions, here it is. So there's the trousers and the jacket, look. There it is at the back. So doing the corset mm -hmm. and then adding the extra little swirls in to give you that wonderful 
ruche. So, so in the there. workbook, you show us how to take those basic shapes and create all of all these different of these outfits. All these different outfits. <coughs> so you don't need to be nope. sort of, you know, 100% happy with your own creativity. You'll get there, <laughs> won't all you? That. Everything you see on the cover, you've actually got the instructions on yeah. holding your hand all the way through, so taking you step by step and showing you how you can do it. But then you can change the sleeves, <coughs> you can change the length. You can add a skirt and a top. You could do the corset with the trousers. Mm. It's whatever you want to do. Have you even got a little cap in there, a little flat mm. cap kind oh, of Oh, yeah, the Baker Boy is brogues. gorgeous. There you go. And that's literally that's from a couple of shapes and a few curves. Mm. Uh, but, um, yeah, I look, the zip and the jacket and everything. Yeah, it's absolutely superb. So much there. fun. Yeah, step by step. Yeah. So, Absolutely gorgeous. Fabulous. And um, with your fabric, Sandra, yes. do you need to stabilise it before you start drawing? Well, it? if you're going to draw on it, it's it's always nice to have something underneath to give it a little bit of structure. And mm. I know we've talked about this a little bit before. Mm. If you're drawing straight onto fabric, fabric moves mm. and your pen sort of doesn't always want to move. So there's a couple of things. You can use some lightweight interfacing. Or you can use freezer paper. Right, which you can then, of course, peel off. Because, of course, off. you can peel it off. Gotcha. Just giving you that structure to actually move across the paper, uh, the fabric, but then take it away. So a little bit of structure, certainly mm. if you've not done it before, would really help. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Now, that's Haberdashery 2. It of is. course, its predecessor, Haberdashery 1, is the Haberdashery Tangled Wreath, which mm -hmm. absolutely blew me away. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, I've it? got the booklet and the stencils right here. So there's the um, yep. instructions. Here is the stencil. Again, we've glued this to a piece of card. Yours isn't on a piece of card, no. <laughs> but you just wouldn't be able to see very much. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So talk me through this one. Okay, Sandra. so here we go. Looking at, you can see some of the elements. Of course, you can see the sewing machine. Now, a sewing machine, you, it's a, when you look at any sewing machine, it's sort of, they're all a very similar shape. Mm. But they're personal to you. you, you you're going to have different ones and they're going to have buttons in different places. Right. So you're going to be able to customise that to actually work with your own machine. You've got your mannequin, which the mannequin will match the one in clothes too. Okay. So you can actually mix these components with that and vice versa. So is this versa. the same size? Or is same this... size. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Same size. So you've got oh. that. Of course, you're, you've got your different size rings. So if you want to do that wreath design that's Love on that. the front there, you see it's got like a tape measure in it, then that's going to give you that. You've got a smaller version. You've got buttons. You've got safety pins. Fabulous. Cotton reels. And it doesn't... Now I can see their safety yeah. pins, Sandra, but until you pointed them out... Absolutely. Now, th these don't look like cotton reels, but if you mix this with this, oh. there's your top. Yeah. So you can go as long or as wide as you want to be. Mm -hmm. You've got different types of scissors. Of course, you've got your little pin cushion. Oh, and I love the fact with this, you can actually have your scissors closed, open, open really open. Exactly. I'm giving you all the options there. So clever. So, um, the instructions show you how to create that piece, which oh. in its own right is a wonderful piece of it's art, incredible. isn't it? So you can, you can do that in whatever medium you want. But I want to show you how you can take elements and create something a bit different. So I've made a start. Shall I show that one? Oh, my God. Oh, go on, this show this. It's blew lovely. me away. It's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> so you can see the components. I mean, this is part of, when you think about it, the clothes. Yeah. And there is um, instructions how to do this mm -hmm. you know, on the dress. There's your mannequin, but there's part of it as well. You mm -hmm. stand. Mm -hmm. Your sewing machine, of course. And then these, you've got the rectangles and the squares, your cotton reels, your scissors. Beautiful. And then, of course, the ribbons. You're like, I can't draw a ribbon. Well, you could stitch ribbon on. Yeah. But, of course, in the instructions, it shows you how to do that. And is this puffy paint? It is, yes. Do you know, you've just <laughs> made an old man very happy. <laughs> How many times have I mentioned puffy paint? And finally, we've got it on. I know. Gorgeous. This is for the pins, isn't yeah, it? The of tops course, of the pins. absolutely. So you can mix and match whatever you've got. You know, if you want to do it just completely flat or if you actually want to do, um, you know, applique, you can do that as well. It's just beautiful. Now, Trace has asked a good question. She's in Devon. Morning, Tracy. Morning. She says, do I need to buy the haberdashery stencil before I buy the clothes stencil? So, like, yeah. haberdashery one, do you have to have that, or could you just buy haberdashery yeah, just two? Buy, yeah, they're a complete standalone. Standalone. They'll work well together, but... Standalone as well, absolutely. They do work really they nicely do. together. They do. So you've got a bit of everything there. Yeah, absolutely. Lovely, isn't it? Gorgeous. Yeah, love those. Love those. Now, I'm going to give you a moment to breathe, Sam. Okay. Um, I just want to... Oh, it's wrecking the set. 
It's having <laughs> these little stands. They're gorgeous. They're gorgeous. I'm there. I'm there. It's all right. Thank you. Right. So first off, this was your first show, wasn't it? 8 a.m. Yes. We've got a gorgeous bag. A couple of examples here. Um, we're oversubscribed on the main pattern bundle. So the main pattern bundle includes the full pattern, full-sized mm -hmm. pattern pieces on really good quality cartridge paper, full instructions, full photographic tutorial. You also get eight buttons. You need seven of them, so there's a little practice button. And you also get one set of cherry wood veneer handles to reproduce the bag that you can see right here. Now, obviously, Sandra's added some inking, some stencils to her handles. You can varnish them, oil them, ink them. You can paint them. You can add layers of decoupage. Incredibly limited stock. It's, it's, it's heavily oversubscribed. If you're quick, you can get it. So you get everything there. You just need to add fabric. Now, we've also got the buttons on their own. We've managed to get these back in stock. They sold out this morning. They're already flying out. And with good reason, this is a real sort of um, so is crafters basic, isn't it? You've got eight large flat wooden buttons and these are cherry wood veneer the same as all of the handles so if you want to mix and match them together absolutely the color yeah. the same wood everything works together it all yeah. works and what size buttons are these sandra they're 25 millimeters 25 mil thank you i knew you would know with two holes drilled in um lots of you multi-buying these packs i'm just thinking mod podge tana lawn all sorts of things. Seal them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, the so you could leave them completely like that if you want to. Yes, they are. They're but there's so many things. You've got that option. You can have that beautiful wood and just varnish it, cover it, draw on it, pyrography it, pyrography it, add glitter, whatever you want to do with them. They're I a really wanted sound to do base. Pyrography. Really? But you I, do could, it then? I could, I could, I could chop a finger off in an empty room, Sandra. Oh, so you, I yeah, cannot using be the soldier nine, it's very, I cannot yeah, it's be very trusted. hot. Very, yeah. But I admire it. Half the stock of the new buttons has gone already. This is another example of the beautiful bag. This is still under construction, of course, but just to give you the different look. Just gorgeous. Now, we've different handles. The heart sold out, but we've managed to get more in stock. So a pair, again, cherry wood veneer, same size slit in the bottom. Same size, same size slot. So all of these are interchangeable with the pattern. $8.99 for a pair for a pair. Absolutely brilliant value. If you missed out this morning, we have managed to get some some yeah, loads of stock. ideas this morning of not just bag handles wasn't it oh There's loads using of them top Thank and bottom that, of a wall hanging cross yeah. stitch embroidery i've only got eight of these rectangular handles remaining these have been very very popular can't believe 8.99 you know if these were you know cast plastic mm. 8.99 that i'd still think that was a bargain yeah, and yeah. that's cast plastic these are wood mm. these are cherry wood veneer they are they, are, yeah, they yeah. offer so many possibilities Absolutely. so many more possibilities they are yeah and they're, they're very they're nice to hold nice to handle really nice and i was like i was like wooden products anyway i'm an ex-technology teacher so <laughs> woodwork was my thing so Gorgeous. feel i love the feel of it it's yeah. not very natural they're lovely absolutely agree now if you want to reproduce the original bag kit and you want to do extras same handle you can buy those handles on their own two uh, sorry two handles for 8.99 so a pair of handles same size as before and then the last set that we've got is the round semicircles again so many possibilities for tangling embellishing Inking, varnishing, paint or, effects. Yeah, and you've got a really nice surface there that you can put a piece of a piece of artwork on. I mean, I'm always about the sand tangling, but you could actually put little flowers on there or have motifs on, mm. and it'll really they'll really stand out. They will really yeah, nice. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, tangle pens. Tangle pens. You can use these on wood. We were doing it earlier. We were doing we? it earlier. Yeah. Ever absolutely. so, ever so easy. Seven ninety nine for three. You get two O threes. They're the fine ones. They're the drawing pens, and then one O five, which is a little bit thicker for filling 
in. This is the same permanent pen that you use on fabric. You don't have to heat set it on fabric. Just let it dry and then you can machine wash it up to 40 degrees. Light safe as well. Archival, it doesn't damage the fabric. No, no, it doesn't. Now, next up, Sandra gave me one of these. My goodness, it's been useful. It's useful, isn't it? It's fantastic. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pokey tool. It's the Santangle pokey tool. Now, um, it looks vaguely surgical. <laughs> uh, what you've got, it is like a, like a thick, almost like a needle on the end, yes, isn't it? Yes, it is. Very, very sharp. But very, very sharp. In that sense, useful. Um, some ways I use this, paper crafting is great. It is, yeah, but you know when you you're trying to peel your your, your backings off your uh, oh what's it called bonder web and your vinyl. vinyl. So if you've got bonder web and you've you've stuck it on, you've cut out your shape, and you're like I can't peel it off. Mm -hmm. This in between the two, I tend to hold it in between the two, just lifts it, yeah. and you don't damage your fabric. You know, because sometimes it'll fray. It'll really fray. You don't damage it, and this is just going to help you to get in there and pull it off. Yeah, Brill, fantastic little tool. Two ninety nine. It comes with a lid. Don't lose the lid. It's so important to keep the lid on, keep it nice and safe. It's a little bit like the um, things that you put on bamboo canes in the garden. Yes, so absolutely. Cut your eye out. Yeah, yeah. Um, keep yeah, the lid. Just want to be careful with yeah. it. But they're, a, a they're brilliant. brilliant. They're a really nice tool. Yeah, great for two ninety nine. And we've also got some Santangle small sharp scissors with a guard. For two ninety nine, that's amazing. Well, we all need a, a nice little pair of snippy scissors, don't we? And it's just, yeah. You get one pair. One pair yeah. for two ninety nine. Yeah, it shows you with the casing in because they're very sharp again, and it shows the picture shows you without the casing. But we need those, <coughs> and actually, two ninety nine. If you use these as thread snips, that's a brilliant. Well, buy. I I've got a few pairs, and they're to buy my sewing machine. And yeah. if you've got to snip any little bits off, yeah. off they come, and they're brilliant yeah. for that. Yeah. No, absolutely. Course, absolutely. You know, on my little sofa armchair, I've got a pair. Yeah. So when I need, if I'm doing sewing, you sew my lining up, and then you yeah. can just snip it off afterwards. For sure, yeah. absolutely. Brilliant. You know, put a little, you know, the sticky Velcro dots on the front of your sewing machine. One on the back of here, so it's always stuck on the front of your machine. Lots of you multi buying these stocking fillers for Christmas. They're lovely little things, aren't they? In a little mug yeah. with some hot chocolate. Yeah, know, yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, Love yeah. those. Right, time for tea. Time for a brew. Oh, do you know, we love this and it has been on before, but brew. we did love it. Love it. Teapots, teacups, tangling, coffee cups and tangles galore. Um, you know how much I love my tea and my coffee occasionally. Yeah, I've really struggled to get my tea because I don't drink black tea, I drink green tea and I've yeah. had to go abroad to get it. Well, I haven't gone oh, abroad. any excuse for a holiday, Sandra. I haven't gone abroad, yeah. <laughs> you know there's supermarket. Do oh, you, I have a do specific, not, I have you a like specific a, fair enough. loose leaf tea. You're a tea snob. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Aren't, you, aren't we all? I'll only drink we Yorkshire are. tea. Yeah, I, mean, I used to. Yeah. I can't drink black tea anymore. Preferably so. made with Yorkshire water and Yorkshire milk. That helps. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> so tell me about time for a brew. Oh, do you know, this is just lovely. And you've got the stencil with the cover on there. Yeah, it works yeah, better. yeah, yeah. You, you can, can do lots there. of things. And I've actually got some samples there. So mm. That might help. You, you can see the... Uh, it's, Instructions wise, I've got four different projects in here, but of course you can make multiple of them. So this is just the teapot on its own. Look That's at this. That's beautiful. It's really pretty, isn't it? You can make quite a thing out of it and you can make quite a pattern. Really Very lends tangling. itself well to applique. Yeah. This is one that I've actually appliqued in and I show you how to do that in the instructions. Even a little spoon. Yeah, really yeah. cute. Same with this one. You've got these little teacups and of course all this we've appliqued but I've actually brought the, the fabric and I've picked out some of the flowers mm -hmm. to sort of tangle in. Again, very modern, very... Coffee cup? Yeah, because we don't tend to see these much. We see the traditional, yeah. but we don't always see the modern cup that we all carry around with us. Exactly. So this one as well. Exactly, so whenever I'm on a train. Fabulous. Yes, yeah. we've all got one of them, but do whatever you want to do with it. So yeah, uh, yeah I can show you how to... How Loads of brilliant it? ideas. Yes, please. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so first off then, what have we got here? I've started off and I've got a little, this is a little composition. I've just picked a few of the things out of my stencil. Very, very simple, so you don't even need to number these. Is you've got the different coffee and teacup, you've got your, your regular cups, a little coffee mug there, spoon, and you've got, of course, that um, 
modern one. Mm -hmm. So I've got my teacup and I've got my little cups and they're almost teetering off on, yeah, yeah, yeah. on my little tablecloth here. And of course, you can do that with your friction pen, so mm -hmm. you can iron off afterwards. So coming in with your regular pen, what you can actually do is draw around the bits you, you want. So see here, it's overlapping. Yeah. I, I've, I've not quite made my decision yet. Do I want my teapot in front? Do I want my cups in front? Mm. Probably my cups in front, yeah. really. So looking at this bit here, what I would do is I'd come in with my fine liner and I'd go over the top of where I've put my friction pen. And notice I'm actually turning it around so it's comfortable for me. So don't think you've got to try and draw it and uh, there you go, leave it completely in one place. But you see, following those lines, it just means that I've got something that I can work with mm. and I'm, I can create a... Look, this one's not even... It's teetering on the, it is. on the edge, look. So here, look, let's come down. And I've got a little mark there so I can bring that round. I think so often nice it's the round. basic structure that yeah. us non-artists struggle with. That's the thing, We yes. can do loops and bubbles and curls and squiggles. Exactly. It's just doing them in... in the order that it's going to make it look like mm, a cup mm. but again that it looks it looks great you could applique that as i have done on a yeah. sample but you see we've got these curves here let's bring another curve in here see similar mm -hmm. same here so you're just sort of mirroring yeah, that mirror, curve yeah, any of those curves or you could use the curve on the stencil and then i'm not going to split my space up as such i'm going to come in and i'm creating these little pointy shapes so they're little curves and you notice I started in the middle. I yeah, why was that? It's now, If you go out, start at the end, you don't quite get an even shape. Right. So in the middle, you've got a good head start. that You've got a full shape that you can then repeat. I suppose that's where along. your eye will be drawn as well, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. You see how you oh, sort yeah. of work with that. So taking this a step further, here it is drawn. Oh. So you can see the little pattern that started This is all very there. art deco. It is, isn't it? Lots of little curls. And again, mm. the bubbles have been started. You can even bring some bubbles out here if you want yeah. to. You know, it can start to get really fantastic. Oh, now that's a witch's brew. I know, look at that. That's not tea in there, <laughs> Yorkshire green or otherwise. But again, of course, you've, you've got your, uh, your ink tense pencils. So if I colour it in. Amazing. There it is, you know, a bit of cafe around there as well. So Lovely. we pick the colours out of mm -hmm. there. But you might decide that you want to go with a little bit of uh, fabric as well. So yeah. let's change the tablecloth to a bit of oh, fabric. Oh, I so love that. So we can mix that. everything in. So whatever you want to do with it. So if I go back to the original where we've got the friction pen, we build it you up. You can really see the steps now. You build it up. You add some colour to this great little cushion, isn't it? Yeah. And then if you want to do... This is fabric. You could even fold it, you know, like we did with the dress you earlier. Could. But there's your little tablecloth as well. So everything works together, doesn't it? It really Whatever does. Whatever you want to do with it, this is an integration into what you already make. And I just see so many opportunities as well for adding some hand embroidery, little oh, touches, yes. beads, buttons, there. just just really bringing sort of all the different elements of your sewing room craft room together. Oh, yeah. Imagine a quilt with all the different teapots and I the can tea imagine cups so and all many these quilts. things. I know. Yes. That'd be amazing. Oh, teacups piled up. Yeah. You know, just a brilliant showcase. Absolutely. It's just beautiful. Now, we've one more product, which is actually very, very close to my heart <laughs> because you made a sofa and armchair storage kit for me in my latest fabric range, which now lives that's on my really, sofa well, that's arm. that's nice because it's useful, isn't it? It works. Really useful. Yeah, absolutely. This was originally on the 8th of September. Um, it's a brilliant, brilliant sofa and armchair uh, storage caddy. Um, but it's so much more for 19.99. It's absolutely brilliant. I'm going to dive in and show yeah, you what you it. get. Because you don't just get the pattern. Or no, the nothing this. like, nothing like, like. Why? Why would we? Why would we? You this get your full fab. pattern. You get your full pattern for making your sofa. And this isn't one sofa caddy either, because nope. we've got different sizes of yes. armchair and sofa. Yes. So you've got three different sizes. I've given you that. Yeah, of course of you can make it caddy. bigger or small if you want to as well. Storage for yeah. pens. It could be crochet hooks. Uh -huh. It could be double pointed needles and your sock knitting. Of course. You've got pockets. Yeah. I've got that one with me. Would you like me to fetch it? Oh, yes, please. Yeah, I'm just going to yes, sort please. Of yeah, yeah, no problem. It. So you get your full pattern and instructions. But then also, look, you get a tangling kit. 
So next to your, or in your um, storage box, you're going to place your elements. So in here, well, this is really well oh. done up. Go there we go. There I'm in. It's I'm like in. A Christmas present. It is. So you get you get a tangling pen. Yeah, of course you do. An O3 tangling pen. You get a pencil. Yep. You get some tortillons. Oh, well You're done. Tortillons. I'm using them now there for smudging. Go. Yes. You get some tangling tiles. Yep. So in different colours. Yep. Name on the front and uh, the back, on the back rather, and then you do all your artwork on the front. Yeah. And then you get a wooden tangling board. This is superb. Now, I must be honest, I use this more when I'm hand sewing. Yes. I rest my sewing on top of this. I always like to work Perfect on a hard size, surface. Isn't it? Perfect and, size. And really comfortable in your hand. And then also, you get your little bulldog clip. So if you're working on a little That's bit of it. artwork yeah. or a sketch, you do it. These are brilliant. If you've been intrigued by tangling, it's a great way in. Again, Cherry Vanilla. Cherry so it vanilla. all matches, everything you've got matches. So you've got a cherry tree. Uh, <laughs> not quite. Not quite, but it would be nice. <laughs> we used to have. Uh, can I just let you know, we're now down to fewer than 20 yeah, of these once you've checked out your baskets. Piece. So you could give this, uh, there's the, the actual ones. So you could give this as a gift for somebody to make themselves, or you could make it for them. So this would go over one of those small like, armchairs yeah, with a, yeah. just a narrow exactly, arm. Yeah. You get three different you sizes, yeah. but actually it's quite easy to adapt know, as well. And, and, the nice thing about this as well is if you've got your little pens in there and you think, oh, I need to get up and go somewhere, your pen roll pops off. It does. It does. So it's on poppers. So you could take that little pen roll with you and then when you come back later, you can actually pop it back in. Yeah. There and then it look, is. opens out and then you've got your pens, your pencils. It could be your, your brushes. Or whatever, yeah. whatever you want to put Crochet in there. Crochet hooks. Absolutely. It's such a brilliantly thought out project. Very nice <laughs> It all sort of comes together, doesn't it? Is that it? one of the buttons we've got? It's, that's a smaller button. But so. same thing. But it's the same thing, Beautiful. Yeah. And then it all just goes back together. It pops back on, yeah. You get your pen, your pencil, your tangling tiles, your bulldog clip, your wooden tangling board. That's it. I've got less than 15. I've got less than 15. Sandra, we have to leave it I there. I know, it's been crazy, isn't it? It's gone really quick today. It's really been brilliant. Yeah, it's been absolutely it. brilliant. When are you back on? Uh, Sewing ooh, Street. Oh, um, I'm not sure. Definitely, ne It's definitely next month. Next month. And are you on Hobby Maker uh, before then? 30th of this month. On the 30th month, of this so. month. Fantastic. Thank you so I may much. Pop in. I'm in on Halloween, so really? I'll be around from the 30th oh. on my broomstick. In the broomstick. On my oh. broomstick. Okay, I might bring mine then too. <laughs> Stop it, I do not oh, have a mask that on was now. Mean. This is my face. That was it is mean. mean. Wasn't it? It's <laughs> funny. Mean. But mean. And on that mean <laughs> note, I'm going to end on a happy note. It's wonderful Absolute, to see yeah, you. Yeah, you too. Mwah. Take right. care. Take Safe care. journey home. Bye. Uh, I'll see you after the break with Gary from Dukey and an amazing overlocker. Don't touch that dial. Follow Sewing Street on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. If you're a Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy myself something fabulous. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. 
head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! Back by popular demand, introducing the one, the only, Gemporia Festive Ball. Party with your favourite presenters from Gems TV, Hobby Maker, Jewelry Maker and Sewing Street. We're all together for a night that's going to be the talk of the town. Situated at the fabulous Stratford Manor, close to the world famous Stratford upon Avon. Tickets are just £99 per person, including a welcome drink, a three course dinner, half a bottle of wine, and music that'll have you dancing all night long. There'll also be a shop at the party, and even a tombola if you're feeling lucky. Numbers are limited, so order your tickets today to avoid disappointment. Let's make it a night to remember at the Gemporia Festive Ball on Saturday, the 25th of November. See you there. Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. If you're a Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times, or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy myself something fabulous. Hi everybody, it's great to have your company here on Sewing Street. This hour I am joined by Gary from Juki. Gary, it's great to have you back. Thank you very much yeah, for our second hour together. This second is great hour this together. morning. This is it, yeah. And you, like no other, can demystify overlockers like nobody else I know. Thank you. We've got an amazing overlocker this hour. It's a Juki, so you know this is beautiful quality, reliable, built to last, easy to use. Uh, so many of you have emailed in this morning telling us wonderful reviews of your Juki sewing machines and overlockers. We really appreciate those messages. Also, I did mention earlier on, but I'll mention again, Gary is the expert on Juki. So if you've got any questions, any demos that you want to see on the overlocker or on the sewing machine, we are going, a lot of you checked out on the sewing machine earlier on, but we are going to have 15 minutes on the DX7 within this hour as well. And we've got some questions that we've yep. set aside and we'll answer those in the 15 minutes. So if you put in a question about the machine and also here, all of these samples, these are all extra feet that you get with your DX7. We will spend 15 minutes on that. So if you're interested in the sewing machine, do stick around. But right now we're going to talk about the overlocker. This is the Juki MO1000. 
thousand. You also get 20,000 meters of overlocking thread. Wow, included yeah. four cones of white, four cones of black. Now, the machine is amazing. It's an air threading overlocker, phew. Uh, it is £1,169. You can do four thread, three thread, two thread overlocking. You can do narrow rolled hems. There's all sorts you can do with this overlocker. It is absolutely superb. We've also got split pays, five of them. It's the maximum number of split pays to, well, hopefully make this a great day for you to buy the overlocker of your dreams. Now, there's no interest on split pays. You do not pay a penny more. You do not have to go through any credit checks either. There are no forms to fill in. It's just an option you choose as you're checking out. And then you make one payment today. Your payment today will be 2,000, uh, 200, 2,000, 200, 200, 233 pounds and 80 pence. <laughs> you get five overlockers. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the payment. Uh, just a little over 200 pounds. That's easy. Good. And then you get your overlocker home. You don't have to make all the payments. You just pay your first payment, 233 pounds and 80 pence. Air threading the overlocker of your dreams. This is Juki UK, the same Juki UK service, customer service, support, FaceTime, questions answered. If you need support and help with your overlocker or your sewing machine from Juki UK, you have got it there right when you need it. Absolutely superb. Two years warranty. Two year warranty, yeah. Amazing build, reliable. This is built for serious sewers. Even if serious sewing for you is you know, once a month, but you want beautiful quality results, professional consistent, finishing. professional. Absolutely on there. Yeah. Yeah, they, I've always said there's nothing better. And obviously if someone walks up to you and say, oh, where did you buy that? And knowing that you've made it. You made it yourself. And, and it looks that good. And obviously an overlocker is one of those tools that gives you that professional finish a lot quicker, a lot easier. So for anyone that doesn't know, what's an overlocker? Why do I need it? Is it an alternative to a sewing machine? Yeah, basically it's, it's not an alternative. It runs in conjunction with your sewing machine on there. And like with uh, the our machines themselves, it's all about that build quality performance wise as well. So buying the right machine and buying it once. As we know, overlockers get a bit of a poor reputation. Um, in what way? Threading. <laughs> because you Threading look at them. it and straight away you think, oh, we've got four threads to do it's yep. like on there. But also because it's unconventional in the way like a sewing machine we've been threading sewing machines all of our lives we can right. do it with our eyes closed it's not a problem give us a loop give us a couple of loopers which overlockers do have it's like oh what do i do with those right exactly but we've solved that issue we haven't got to worry about that because we're air threaders air, th yeah, air threading you so. thread that machine for me now absolutely so nice catch tray which comes with it at the front there so i'm just going to take that off Open any of the flaps, the machine itself has safety features. Again, we put a lot of these into businesses, a lot into schools, colleges. Safety is paramount for us. Absolutely. It really is. Obviously, you've got a lot of sharp moving metal bits in there as well. So you definitely don't want your dog or cat to come up and actually sit on your foot control without you realising when you're working inside your machine. So it completely opens up as well. That's and superb. the great thing about that, you can just blow the fluff through. It's great. Maintenance free virtually yeah. on that yeah. side of it. It really does look after itself. Also opening it up, I am going to turn it because it's part of what I'm proud of as well. As you can see the engineering in there, it is fantastic. It is complete metal chassis. It is all metal on there. Built to last. Built to Amazing last. Amazing quality. And, that's it. and it's like the DX7, uh, say, we are coming back to that because it, we were so busy on the first show. And to be fair, we didn't get to sew a lot. We sewed the important quality. And it's the yeah. same as with this, we show the important quality bits on there but it's once you've got that machine it's a it's a machine for life it's a machine you grow into and grow with yeah. rather than grow out of and that's what it makes it such a good investment so but what i'm going to do we, you can use cones and as we say we're giving twenty thousand meters of thread away with it as well and on the machine you have cone holders or anti-rattlers mm -hmm. on there so they're on your machine so when the cone goes on it stops from rattling around perfect there's on the tin sort of thing so but obviously we can use whatever size reels we want a lot of people when they look at overlockers they think oh you can only use the cones yes the I've, I've often thought that exactly. yeah yeah if you want to use your hundred meters of uh, Gutterman brands. Right. Like that. Don't get me wrong. Oh, you can. You can. It could be very expensive by the end of it, but yeah. <laughs> you yeah. can use it. So these are 1,000 metre reels. So again, you get a lot of thread for your money. So 
I've chosen yellow because obviously we usually try and match your colours in, but mm -hmm. we want to stand out. We want to make it stand out. Yeah. There. Yeah. So they just come off. So we just pop those off, and I'm just going to put those there as well. Done with a real flourish too, Gary. Oh, thank, thank you. you. That. Oh. <laughs> so I just want to add a bit to it. <laughs> so then I'm just going to pop the threads on. So why four threads? Why, why not two like a sewing machine? So Is this like a test, Gary? Because I think we need to practice. Is it? We could do it. Yeah. I oh, sorry, you're going to answer Oh, question. I'll answer my own question. Well, it's nice asking myself questions. I know the answer to my own question, <laughs> so it's always a winner that way. Gary, okay. why four threads? Why four threads? Right. Well, it's funny you should ask that. <laughs> what we have on an overlock is loopers. And this is what people don't really sort of recognise, or this is the bit sort of they're not necessarily sure to understand. Right. So loopers, which are these two bits of moving metal inside here, are the bits will actually form the overlock stitch. And this is why it is physically impossible for a sewing machine to do an overlock stitch like an overlocker. This is why it doesn't matter how good your overlock stitch is, you're always only going to ever be using two threads on your sewing machine, yeah. where you can use obviously up to your four threads on your overlocker, which will give you a much better sealing finish. But also the combination of threads gives you full elasticity within the stitch. Understood. Jerseys, lycras, stretch, absolutely brilliant that Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. So, but looking in there, you'd look at it and think, Ooh, where do I start on there? Nice. Obviously, we've got instruction manuals. The ours even comes with a DVD as well, so, which oh, is really nice. nice there. But it is very, very simple. So, being an air threading system, people who've got overlockers already would know a manual threading system obviously takes a lot longer as well, but you have to specifically thread it in the correct order. Yes, you do. So, if a thread breaks, if it runs out, or you just want to change one, generally you have to unthread it all, re thread it all again, so it's a pain. Ooh. This one, you can actually replace any individual thread at any time. So, it doesn't upset it at all. Right. Because right, right, it's its own, basically, direction around the machine. So, what we're going to do, first of all, to start and threading and how quick and easy it is, is this lever here. So I'm just going to pop that into place and then the hand wheel, the balance wheel, I'm going to turn that towards me. Just keep turning it and it will then just lock itself into place on there. So once that's done, it's now put the threading tubes across. Inside the front flap, nice thing about it, we've got our main tool stored. So yeah. our tweezers, our screwdriver, spare needle, so nice and easy. Nothing worse than obviously you fiddling around for 20 minutes to try to find your your, your screwdriver or tweezers have disappeared somewhere, so nice and easy there. I'm just going to take the first thread, purely because it's next to me, but as I say, I can thread it in what order I want. So start off with, there's a little metal guide, it just hooks underneath. That's just like on a sewing machine. Exactly, like you would So far, easy. Machine. Nice yep. and easy, no little hole to thread through, just hooks behind. Straight down the inline tensions, through the guide, and then behind the guide. And we notice it's also it's colour coded as well. So red and red, so we can make it easier that way. What we're going to do is just take the tail of the thread, and then next to the red dot is the hole, which is the threading hole. So I'm just going to poke the tail into that hole. Then all you need is in there is about a centimetre, sort of just under half an inch thereabouts. Yeah. We shall poke that in, and then what we do, if we then watch here, so where the end of the tweezers are, I'm just going to press the air on button and for a couple of seconds, there you go. <laughs> and that's, that's it, it. threaded. threaded. <laughs> so, obviously you can't get it wrong. Well, it did make far. me laugh. It did, Hannah's, my producer's laughing. She said, oh, I love that that made you laugh. But it's like, normally, threading an overlocker is hunched shoulders, slightly sweaty, stressful, and that was my nervousness coming out as a laugh, like, oh, is that it? And that's exactly it. You know, sometimes it's... when you go for a dental checkup and they say, no, you don't need any fillings. That's you, right. Like, laugh your way out. Oh, relief when you walk out. Yeah, and it's that's same, great. Like it's, and that's it again, the great thing, obviously, you know, we, we have all suffered the pains, obviously, growing up with overlockers, the, yeah. the earlier ones where there was nothing like this system it at all. It is the pain point of overlockers. Yeah. It, is the reason why so many people do not buy an overlocker or buy an overlocker and then never use it. <laughs> the amount of times, oh, I'm too frightened to get my overlocker out. I've sat it in a cupboard and it doesn't work. Obviously, we go to schools as yep. well and we sort of suddenly, one of the overlockers have come unthreaded. It was an older one or a sort of a budget one and they're just stuck in a cupboard and never use it. Who so. needs a machine <laughs> to hold them back? Who needs that? Who needs to spend money buying something that you can't use? This is easy. Look how easy it was to thread that. Are all of them the same? Are you um, do the so you've got one? two loopers. Yep. So this is now the second looper. Second so looper. the top part is exactly the same. Under the guide at the back, through the inline tensions. This is this time the blue dot. So we pull through. So the second looper, again, has the second hole to it. So all we do is pop the ends into the hole. 
And that's what okay. the tweezers are for, just to make it easy. It's just that extension of fingers. It just, just pop the thread life. down. I've just, yeah, certainly I find it a lot easier that way. So you just poke it into the hole. So again, with that, we just watch now from here. Just press the air on for a couple of seconds. There you go. There's your second thread. So as you know, the loopers are the ones that put people They're the off. ones that they are hard. They are the yeah, painful yeah. ones. We've got a lot more guides. But once they're done, we've dropped the two needles. So we've got your left and right hand needle. Again, this is very similar to your sewing machine. So first of all, before we thread the needles, we're gonna take the threading device off. So this little lever here, we're just gonna pop that back down. Mm -hmm. And on the balance wheel, there's a little mark. I'm not sure, I'll just turn the over like a slightly in there. You see, we've got a little, there's a black line there and there's a mark there as well. So that's just- We got that, the perfect. Into the highest position. Yep. So, cause it's got built-in needle threaders as well. Nice. And for the left and right hand needle. Nice. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna turn the overlocker sort of that way a little bit more because it's just the easier angle to see on there. But the top threading is similar to what your sewing machine would be. So you've got your top guide, you've got your tensions, you've got your take up lever. So again, it's color coded green on this one. Yeah. So over. This is just like a sewing machine. That's it. So then you've got your left hand needle and right hand needle. So this yep. is the left, the right hand tension. So follow it through, right hand needle. So this little switch here will go from left to right, depending on what needle, lock it into position. And now I can hook the thread onto the threader, lift the, oh, get my finger out of the way, lift the lever up, and there it has pulled that loop through the back. So there's your right hand needle threaded. And then your last one, but this threading path of the two, this, <coughs> these are the two upper threads. These are your two upper needles. Yeah, yeah. upper needles. So the first two we did with your Just lower like loopers. Just the sewing machine. And yeah. then say your two needles at the top on here. So again, we just go round, follow it through, colour coding round the guide. This time the needle thread will then come over to your left hand needle, lock it into position, hook the thread, and then lever up, and there you go. That's, That's the whole real. overlocker done. So it's one needle threader that just moves to the left and the right in order to, that's oh it. my goodness. That's nice brilliant. and easy, there's a little switch here which then just flicks it from left to right and on there. And that is your whole overlocker threaded. So the great thing about that, it's very difficult to get it wrong because it's certainly the loopers because it's got its own path to follow. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. can't do that. And then once it's all threaded that way, all I do is sew over a few times just to f start forming the stitch. Mm -hmm. So we just start locking. And that sort of just brings all four threads together. Exactly, yeah. So what I'm also going to then do, excuse me one second, sorry, I'm going to go camera a minute. Come back, <laughs> come back. I can't <laughs> running away, you. running away. <laughs> but like you said, Gary, if one thread breaks or you're, do, you're going from three to four and then you want to go back to, oh, sorry, you, you go from four thread to two thread overlocking and then you want to go back to four, it, it only takes a moment. That's and you can, thing. and you don't have to rethread the whole overlocker. Just the lower loopers or the upper needles. You can just do the one that needs thread. And that's the nice thing about it. Where a lot of people say, once you've got an overlocker, if you find it very awkward, let's, you're not going to play around with it. You're no. not going to try the three threads, the roll hem. You leave it set up, and very rarely you even change the colour because you're too frightened to sometimes yeah. on there. So with that system, yes, you're going to use the multiple stitching on there. You're going to use the matching colours as well. Mm. So therefore, a lot more flexibility out of it that way. Yeah. This is but, a fantastic opportunity to get the overlocker of your dreams. This is, this is an absolutely beautiful quality Juki overlocker. It's got a two year warranty, a two year warranty. Um, one year is, is mandatory, two years is just showing off. Um, absolutely superb. You get Juki UK support, customer services, you get the DVD, you can do FaceTimes if you're having any issues or you have any questions you want to ask. Um, you can use it with and without the blade. Absolutely. We've got full control over the, the blade. We can drop the blade out of the way. We've also got bike control. Unlike width control on a sewing machine, mm -hmm. we can move the blade left and right to give us different, uh, say, bite on there. And uh, don't forget those split pays. Five split pays. The total price is £1,169. Whether you choose to pay that whole amount today and you can do that if you like. But if you want to pay £233.80 today and then get your overlocker home this week, um, you can do that. 
no credit checks, no interest. You pay exactly the same amount as paying the whole amount in one go, but it's just spread over five months. It's what we call split pay, and it's an option you'll be offered as you're checking out. 3.95 postage. If you've already bought a pack of needles today or a <laughs> fat quarter or anything you've paid your postage it's one flat postage for the whole day even though these machines will come directly from Juki UK that's it we will handle everything so even if you ordered say the great pair on there as in the DX7 and that gain one only one postage charge and obviously yeah. we handle absolutely everything for you on there brilliant so for those who haven't seen an overlocker before what does an overlocker do that is basically what an overlocker will do. It will cut, seal and finish at the same time. Our cutting blade is here. There's a little lever here, so if I want to remove, drop the blade down, it's as quick and as easy as dropping the blade down by switching there. So um, that's very simple that way. We have our stitch bike control for stitch width. We have our roll hem lever here. We have our stitch length control. We also have our differential feed. What does that mean? That's exactly. Feed? What is all of this? Yes. <laughs> what does it do on there? So first of all, what we've done, we've just done a four thread. Four thread is using two needles and two loopers. Probably the most common stitch most people will use. Great for construction. Great for jersey stretch fabrics as well. Yeah, because a lot of people there. actually construct garments or soft furnishings with their overlocker. They do not use a sewing machine to construct, they construct and neaten in one step on the overlocker. Yeah. And, and that's using the four thread. That is using the four thread. And this is exactly where we come into our second question about overlockers. Number one is the threading. Yep. If we can solve the threading, that sort of That's more or less big, it, big yes. Second of all is the tensions. Yes. If we can solve the tension, then there's no reason why you would look anywhere else apart from the overlocker. Yeah, because I mean, so, a lot of people do think of overlockers and instantly think stretch fabrics. So, we, I mean, brilliant for lycra, spandex, jersey, knitted fabrics, that great. So that is just your calico. But that's calico. That's calico. Every day, again, should stitch on that absolutely perfect without any problems at all. But obviously what we want to do, and as you know what we like, we like to bring our Awkward fabrics as such to say. Is that a so, bit of spandex? Bit of spandex, two-way stretch, nylon lycra. Nice. Again, you can't get much anything more move than this Absolutely. on here as well. So again, like we sort of do with our sewing machines as well, they should be something you can just get on and go. Not fiddle, not play. Sure. So I'm not going to touch anything at all. So this is... We don't have to start changing the tension or the differential feed? No, nope, I'm or... not going to touch Levin's differential feed. I'm just going to go straight through. Obviously, Gary is working from the side, which is awkward on there. But also, just going to use the thread trimmer we've got on the side, like so. So we just pull that in like that. But what I am actually going to do, and my biggest mistake on there, is I'm going to pop the blade back up again. Of course. Because I tried to cut and there was no blade cutting. So yep. what I did, I just pulled it off and that's why I could Yeah, so I mean, off. you can use it without the, the cutter if you want to. That's it. But um, once it's in the gauge, you'll see what we're doing. We're cutting, sealing and finishing all at the same time. Oh, hello. So we've got a calico. I'm going to pop it in the centre on there as well. So that is two-way stretch nylon like Look at Moves that. Moves over the place, inside seaming as well. Again, really, really strong. But the main thing, so if I put that now and lay that next to the calico, then we'll be able to see the exact difference. Crystal well, there Ganser. isn't any. There isn't any difference. That's the point. That it's is exactly it. the same overlock. And it's not rippled. It doesn't look like a lettuce leaf. It is flat. It's not distorted. This is Crystal Organza. This is Crystal Organza. So again, complete contrast, very fine sheer fabrics. So as we can see, absolutely perfect. Now I lay that down again next to the lycra. Is this one of those spot the difference competitions? <coughs> well, they're, they're exactly What's it. What's the prize, Gary? And the prize is, is my lovely sample to take <laughs> away when you finish. <laughs> Brilliant. Double weight There's fleece. There's no difference. That's exactly. And again, double weight fleece. Stretch moves quite a lot heavier fabric as well. This type of fabric, generally, you wouldn't even put through your sewing machine. It would be no. constructed all generally on an overlocker. Yes, like because a baby Because you don't blanket. have seam allowances or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It would all be done that way. So... Onesies? Again, absolutely. Well... You've got to think nowadays, we say we're all talking about the heating bills going up and things like that. I love my onesie. We're all putting on extra layers. To make onesies and that out of an overlock, it takes moments. It really does. So we're going to take that straight through. Again, I'm not controlling it any difference. Let the machine do the work for you. 
and then we take that through and again we just show it on there we can see then sitting that next to that and we have got those four so we've done calico uh, lycra crystal organza fleece double weight fleece double weight fleece upholstery fabric upholstery obviously this sprays like anything this is sort of thing know, you really want teach to teach a lot of bag workshops yeah. and there it's a bit of a i mean you've got to overlock the edges if you do that, it's easy, but if you don't, the it, threads are everywhere. It just goes everywhere and catches, but with an overlocker, you are just con just uh, quickly just sealing it straight away. Right. Talk about those edges, they've got it caught in, so... <laughs> and then we just take it through, round again. If we look on there, so again, it's hard to see it with a slightly different pattern, but I roll that onto its edge. Yep. And if you say, let's have a little look underneath as well, you won't see any difference from there to there. Flawless. To there. Absolutely. Again, quite a heavyweight fabric as well. Mm -hmm. Very Didn't struggle heavy. going through. Mm -hmm. And talking about heavyweight fabrics, uh, upholstery vinyl again. Yeah, uh, faux that. leather. It doesn't fray on no. there. Why would I overlock it? Construction. Much yeah. easier, yeah. much quicker. Yeah. So instead of then... But also as well, it still looks really, really neat inside. If you're doing an unlined bag or something like that, it just looks better. Well, a lot of time now as well, certainly with something like this, a lot of people start using multicolour threads on the outside. Yeah. Make it decorative, make yeah. it creative. So just going to have to start it off because obviously the stiffness of it. But once it starts cutting, again, let the machine do the work for me. Just run it through. Again, as we can see, perfectly Absolutely even on gorgeous. the edge on there. And then it's the stitch quality, again, very, very smooth. But as you say, when going through, even cutting things like the upholstery vinyl, mm -hmm. it does a struggle going through it. So the extra power it's got, obviously, with Juki themselves being that industrial manufacturer, they want to know that the domestics are more than capable. Yes. But with machines like this, again, going into school, going into colleges, we have got them in businesses as well, certainly during lockdown. Mm -hmm. A lot of us started our small businesses from home. Oh, for and sure. Like that. And that's when a lot of people started realising the tool they've got they just outgrew or it wasn't good enough mm. to then go to that next level. Where obviously with the Juki side of it, people starting with the area and then the more they do, the more they're appreciating the machine yeah. is going to do it for them. Absolutely. Do you know, I yeah. always think with overlockers, much more than sewing machines, that I always, I always assume that anyone who buys an overlocker is... One of the key things is they want professional results. That's it. I know everyone that sews wants great results, but I always think anyone that buys an overlocker wants professional results, and that is what you're going to get with this machine from Juki. This is a quality build. This is built to last. This is built for reliability. The engineering heritage is quite phenomenal. And I mean, I think we can all see Gary's passion for the engineering that's behind. Speaking as a sewer, you know, I really appreciate that there are people who have that passion because all I want is a machine that does an amazing job that I don't have to think about. Yeah. That's being really honest. I don't want to know about the engineering. I no. just want to know that you're passionate, you've done it, and all I can do is sit on my machine that's and it. have fun. Well, your, your construction in your your construction is fabric and that main that's what your passion is that's, that's my passion you love, and you have a tool to do that yeah um i'm just step before that where my construction is the parts that put the machines exactly. together and knowing the right bits of construction are in the right places yeah that's where i can quite happily then go to a customer and say yep yeah knock yourself out i know this is going to be a tool that's gonna yes it's going to gain that investment side of it it well, is but as i say Overlockers, 95% of overlockers, whether it's a budget level or whether it's a top level, actually yeah. technically should do the same job. Yeah. They're four thread, three thread, differential thread. Yeah. But you get some machines, obviously, that just don't work properly. You get some machines that are so fiddly that you have to adjust them right. so much to that you're going to put yourself off. Yeah. So therefore, when you buy a sewing machine, you can buy different levels of sewing machines. You can. When you buy our overlockers, it's all about the quality. Yeah. You buy yourself a quality one, you've got an overlocker for life. Yeah. You're not going to be changing it in a year, two years, no. five years time. And it's also as well, how involved do you want to be in the setup, yeah. the, the sort of engineering side? If you're really into all of that, maybe you, you know, if you don't mind doing all the threading and that sort of thing. I got the time I don't want it. to do yeah. that, Harry. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I would much rather invest a little extra money and know that I've got a machine that I really don't have to think about. 
that I don't have to maintain, that I don't have to sort of get the manual out every time I want to change a thread. I don't want to use it and dread a thread breaking because I think I've got to go back to square one. You can thread any of the, either of the loopers, either of the needles independently. The rest can stay threaded up. You don't have to do them in a particular order. It's air threading. You've got a double needle threader for a thousand pounds, basically. On that. One thousand one hundred and sixty nine pounds. You can use the blade or not. Gary demonstrated not using the blade. That's right. He yeah. didn't want to demonstrate <laughs> that bit, but you did it anyway, Gary. And how easy it is to re-engage the blade. Exactly. Well, you can change the bite yeah. of that blade, more or less fabric as you're sewing. You can also change the length of the stitch. Now you mentioned different feet. Theme. That's what is it. that? So, so far, we've touched absolutely nothing, and uh, we've, it does a perfect job on It's done everything beautifully. A lot of people are actually afraid to start adjusting and playing. Oh, no, I can't do that. But let's mess around with the tension. Let's play. Let's fiddle. It doesn't matter, because even tension is back is number four. So I know it's going gonna, it's gonna to give me a steady stitch on there. The tensions are going to be even. doesn't matter what fabric. Okay. But sometimes you want to make the stitch uneven. We want to play around with it. So what we're going to do, do we? the stitch length one is on the side and you're going, yep. to, you're going to say, oh, of course that's what I want to do. So until I say that, you think, why do we want to mess around with the stitch? But sometimes you get a result you do want by messing around with the stitch, okay. i.e. stitch length up to four, differential feed. Most people, again, if you don't know so overlockers... So length you've increased? Increased up to number right. four from two and a half, three is an average. That's the average. So I've got it to the maximum. So to its highest, there's okay. maximum on that. Differential feed up to its maximum, which is two. So basically, with a differential feed, I'm going to use my hands again. because it's Good. All the, all the sewing machine's got one feed. It does that all day long, and obviously with ours, it's on that box motion. Overlockers have a front and back feed. So at the, generally, you have you've your differential on N, they both move together. I can adjust the feed so I can make that move faster or slower to either push or contract fabric. Oh. So, by turning I'm thinking up, gathering. There we go. You've hit the nail on the head. Ah. So, but what I'm going to do is also increase the needle tensions. Okay. Because I want, again, this is a personal thing. It's something you can vary and it matters on the type of fabric you're using mm. to how much gather you want on there. But just simply by increase, 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 I'm going to sew now a lighter weight poly cotton. And voila. Look at that. That is. See, I'd be terrible as a magician's assistant. Yeah. I'd be revealing <laughs> how or a comedy. That's yeah. right. That end but that's great. already. That's it. And because it's constant, yep. uh, unlike if you're doing it with a sewing machine or by hand where you're putting it up, you have to that, it's going to give you that constant gather a Completely lot quicker, consistent. a lot easier. But also because it's overlocked and finished it, it's a lot stronger. So let's play around with the overlocker. It will yep. allow you to do it. But then if I just pop them all back, so to number four, yep. number four. Two and a half, three, back to N. And I'm going to sew for a single layer of lightweight polycotton yep. on four thread. So you've put everything back to just normal. Everything back to normal, standard on there. So it just proves it doesn't upset the machine no. around with as much as you want. And that okay. took seconds. And that's four thread on a polycotton. Look at that. And again, not a single bit of puckering, not a single bit of pulling on there as well. Now, I you said know. a moment ago, I don't want to maintain a machine. I don't want to have to do stuff. But we yep. do have a question, because I'm going to have this machine for years and years and years. And Karen's asked, and I think we should know. Uh, loving the demos, maintaining the machine. Do we oil it? What do we do? How do we, you know, how often do we change the needles? Yes. What do we have to do to make sure we're still using our MO1000 from Juki? in five years' time. And it's still purring in five exactly. years' time, absolutely. Changing the needle on any sewing machine regular is very, very important. As you've recognised through my sewing machines, my overlook, I don't change size of needles. No. I use size 80 on virtually everything. Okay, fair enough. But I use brand new needles quite regular. Yeah, <laughs> every eight hours? Um, well, it's, to me, it's sound. Okay. Because you could sew nylon all day, and your needle will last four hours. Yeah. You are so cotton all day, it will last eight hours. Got you. Or thereabouts, Got obviously, you. on there. So it's not necessarily how much sewing you do, it's what you're sewing. What you're sewing. So that's the the very important. But generally, you, when you're sort of sewing, you, know, you think, oh, that sounds quiet. Hmm. Was it just making a little bit more of a fud noise or something yep. like that? Because the needle's getting popping. Blunt. So that's exactly because you're there. Or you find you're getting a slight little loop of stitch. Yeah. Probably a blunt Change needle. your needle. So again, first point of call on anything that way, I always say change the needles. Change the, the needles. First thing. What machine? What sorry, yeah. what needles? Yeah. Do I need I've seen overlocker needles, but I've also heard people talk about using regular sewing machines. That's needles. it. Ours are regular 
705 system needles. Same yep. as your sewing machine, everything that way as well. Flat side to the back, yep. in go. So exactly the same as what you're used to on your sewing yeah. machine. Nothing different at all. I must admit, I buy mine in packs of 100 now. Yeah. Because I change them really regularly. Well, for the cost of a needle. Yeah. And certainly when you outbalance to a cost of a service, yep. if you are then constantly putting a lot more strain through your machines, right. then, yeah, for replacing a needle for the matter of pence, yep. it's worth doing Do I need to oil it? On there. Because it's all metal construction inside, and obviously we do have a couple of metal shafts or piston movements on the loopers. Mm -hmm. So all we do is when we open it up, we can brush the fluff through, get rid of it, because obviously we're cutting constantly, so we right. are creating fluff all the time. So give it a brush out. I personally get some kitchen roll on non-lint, Sort of fabric on yep. there, put some oil on it. You do get oil with the machine as part of the package as well. Yep. And that acts like a magnet. So, and I do it on my sewing machines as well. Okay. So everything metal, I just wipe with this and you'll okay. find that'd be quite black the time you finish with lots of fluff and dirt, yep. which you don't necessarily see automatically. Machine but, turned off, unplugged, need I say more? Well, you say that, what? yes, normal case, but obviously we have safety features on us. Uh, so you want the light, it. you want the LED light to see it. So I that's the great it. thing there as well. Okay. So what we're going to do, everything we've done, I recognise... And do we need to oil anything or just a wipe over with Oh, sorry, oil? a drop of oil just drop on the oil piston. Here on the it does actually show us in there, but literally you can see this... Can we turn the machines or oh, can we see that? No, can it. we turn the oh, machines there we go. slightly? That's brilliant. So yeah. if I move that up there, you can see yeah. that piston there. So basically, that is where you need to put a drop of oil when you've you, you've cleaned it out. Yeah. And that's it. Maintenance free other than that. So. Yeah. We don't recognise, obviously, with an overlocker, there's no pattern mechanisms in there, there's no hook mechanisms no. or anything like that. There's a lot less sort of moving parts, right. such to say. So maintenance side is virtually non-existent, as long as you look after your machine, yep. clean it regular, change the needle regular, it will go on and, and on. Yeah. I know this is a hard question to answer, but in terms of um, servicing, yeah. I get asked this all the time. I have my sewing machine serviced every six months, and that is purely because I'm a professional sewer. Yeah. I'm sewing for hours and hours every single day. But how often would you have an overlocker service? Well, we've got these, as I say, that we can base it on, I've got them in schools and businesses, and they have them serviced every year. Right. There's a contract a year. every year. Doesn't mean they need servicing every year, but obviously, as we know, there's certain places you can put machines in. They're not really looked Am after. Am I wasting too, my right? money having it done every six months? Well. It depends. We get some. If you look after it yourself, yeah, you, you, it's, it's hard to say don't have it serviced because you, you, at that point where you don't have it done, oh, it's yeah. wrong. But doesn't yeah. the service. But the chance of needing it done every six months is such a remote thing. Sure, fair it, enough. Because you know how to look after your machine. So once a year, you know the sounds of it and things like that. Yeah. So certainly, you say even in business contracts, it's yeah. once a year that we do on there. But I've known people with the Mo One Thousand. They've had it over 10 years and they've not even had it serviced once and they use it on a regular basis as well. Yeah, so it's, absolutely. it's not like they haven't used it at Can all. Can I be really awful? Oh yeah, I go. Can I just go like, like this? Because that. <laughs> <please. laughs> that's the bit what people usually go, whoa, Could hang you? on a second. Would you be a love, Gary? What we do is break that last one, there we go. So lifting the foot up, I can then just pull all the threads out. <laughs> So that's, Is I that like awful? That. I feel that's really bad now. <laughs> well, I could say, do you want to come with Fred? I get my own back there. <laughs> I feel like I could. Uh, let's uh, so I know we're running out of time again quickly, aren't we? So, first of all, threading lever. We pop that up into place. We turn the hand wheel towards us, which then just locks the machine in. So I'm going to take the first thread, because it's next to me. So underneath the guide, through the inline tensions, behind the guide. So this is the red dot. Then all we go from there, and then we pop the ends into the hole. So again, about a centimetre, sort of thereabouts. Press the button, watch the thread here. Oh, so I got tangled with the other thread. Make sure it doesn't do that. <laughs> so always the way we've got that last one, we've got a few minutes left. And you sort of just rush it that little bit more. Why does that keep tangling with that? Right, so we take the ends, there we go, and then that just goes into the hole, so about a centimetre, yep. like so, 
And again, if we watch here, if you press the button for a few seconds, there we go. And there it goes. That's it literally one. fires out like water from a hose. That's the thing. It? We can't actually do that any slower because <laughs> it is a set speed. It's one of those also questions that people ask me, again, going back to the servicing issue and things like that, where they sort of, oh, how reliable is the threading system? Mm. Well, again, this is the same threading system we've had on these now over 10 years. We've not changed it at all. Mm -hmm. And what I will say to people on this, again, we just poke that in. Look at the hole here, press the air on, a few seconds, and there we there go. There it Close is. The loopers. But unlike some other threading, uh, auto, sort of the air threading ones, they have like manual pumping systems. Yes. Their, their bellows, their rubber, they need looking after eventually and things yeah, like that. Yeah, they can deteriorate. This is taken air straight from the motor. There is no moving parts in that. So that is the great thing. The reliability is fantastic that way. Yeah. So once from there, I'm going to take off the threading device. I'm moving the needles into the highest position like we did before. And then I'm just going to take the thread through the guide at the back. So again, it's the green one. Follow through over the green. This time it's the right hand guide. And then the right hand guide like so. And then flick it over to the right hand needle, the needle threader. Lock it into position. Hook the thread on. There and done. There we go. That's that it. is now threaded as the free thread. Yeah. On there. So what I'm going to do is we have that point. Uh, I know we. I'm just going to remove the left hand needle at this point. Mm -hmm. So instead of threading the fourth one, I'm going to turn it then into a free thread. So loosen that off, and that will just drop out. So you just there. take out that outer Literally needle. Literally just the outside needle. Just going to pop that in the sponge at the back. So now we've turned it into a free thread. So we are using then one needle instead of two needles. Mm -hmm. And then it will give us that nice, neat, narrow finishing stitch. You don't always want a bulkier edge. No, so this would be quite nice. Would it be, this would be nice for um, like necklines? Certainly hems? things like necklines on there, but also where you are then, if you're going to construct in your normal sort of way on there, i.e. like sort of wedding dresses, mm -hmm. bridal, anything like that, where you might then have to be taken in, taken out, where you want all your seams finished off. Right. So what we can do is using a free thread, because we also have what we call a narrow cutting bite, mm -hmm. so i.e. what that means is the blade is very close to the needle, so it's a very narrow stitch on there. Mm -hmm. So when we're on a free thread, what we can actually do is manoeuvre and curve. Oh, nice. So we can actually then cut out a pattern, finish, seal, all at the same time. So what we do is just go across the bottom. And then just going to run it down the side. So we are making pattern pieces, but also we're making things like a twirl or something like that as well. Um, this is absolutely ideal for that. Also, with the cost of patterns, so we're buying sort of paper patterns now. You can pay mm -hmm. sort of 15, 20, 25 pounds for some mm -hmm. patterns mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Last thing you want to do is be cutting them up in small pieces of paper and yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Make it out of fabric pieces. Amazing. Look at that. And obviously, with the overlocker, it's now finished it all at the same time. Obviously, we can cut shapes, anything like that. Obviously, this sort of thing as well, making pockets, yeah. pads, instantly does it. But as we can see, if I then pick up the forethread, I'll pick it up on the blue so I can put it next to there. Then if we look where we've got the second row of stitching on here, mm -hmm. so we've got the outside needle. So one thing is quite a lot of difference in the width, but because we've removed that second stitch on there, it's just a very neatening stitch. Yeah, lovely, then, neat, narrow. That's it. And then what we can do from there is on the machine itself is a little switch. If I flick that towards me, on there, it's then going to turn it into a roll hem finish as well. So from there, again, we can pick up the very lightweight, the crystal organzas as well. So I can switch the roll hem into place and leave it and just do the job. But what I am going to do is then make the stitch closer together for this type of fabric, so it's more of a satin stitch, like you were doing your sewing machine. Yes. Smaller number, closer your stitch on there. Yes. But also, I'm going to increase my tension. And this time I'm going to increase the red loop attention. I'm going to turn it up to number seven because I'm physically going to ask it to make it tighter. So I just run that through. And if we've recognised before, we can play with the tensions and it won't upset the machine at all. So no, absolutely not. And if I then run that off there, and if we look at that as the wow. royal hem. That is beautiful. And that is again on the crystal organza. 
That so is beautiful. It absolutely does give a, just a beautiful finish on there. Yeah. Again, very fine, very neat. And of course, in a matching thread, something oh. like that, that would just be Absolutely. heavenly. Yeah. <clears throat> it really is time to check out your baskets. I'm going to stop Gary demoing there now because I know you're watching intently. But important that you check out your basket, please. Uh, £1,169 for, I think I've been calling it the, the overlocker of your dreams. I think we can all agree now. It's got all the features that I would dream of in an overlocker. Air threading, robust, strong, professional results, easy to use, most importantly. Easy to thread, easy to use, easy to change from four to three to two thread, overlocking and stitching. Very, very easy to maintain, long lasting, robust. And that price I think is absolutely superb. Uh, five split pays, 233 pounds 80. I, I wouldn't pay the 1,169 pounds today. I'd go straight in with the first split pay, get the overlocker home because it's interest free. Okay, the amount you pay will not change due to interest rate rises. Uh, the amount you pay is no different to if you paid the full amount in one go. Five split pays, £233 and change, and you're getting an amazing machine. 20,000 metres of overlocking thread, four white, four black, included for free, £233 and 80 pence. That's all you need to pay. We're gonna leave the overlocker there. And I want to just recap, lots and lots of you have the overlocker in your baskets. And this is probably, we've had lots of comments today, haven't we? If I had bought a Juki first, I wouldn't have bought again. I'd have never have bought a second or a third or a fifth machine. I would have just bought the Juki. So this is that one purchase and you'll be happy, you'll be satisfied. It will do everything you need, easy to use. Easy to thread, easy to maintain. I think that that would be the only machine you would need. If it does everything, if it, if it gets everything done that you need it to do, if it works for you, if it's everything you need it to be and it's easy to use, it's done its job. Why would you need to ever look at another machine? And I think that's, that's, that's money well spent, isn't it? You know, they always, there's that phrase, isn't there? Buy cheap, buy twice. But it's not just about buying cheap, buying twice. If you buy the wrong machine, you'll buy twice or three times. The worst thing actually is that you buy an overlocker that you cannot thread and cannot get your head around and you never use. It not only is that's money wasted, but you'll probably never buy an overlocker ever again because you'll think, I didn't use that one. So, and that would be tragic, basically. So if you go for a machine that does everything you need it to do and is easy to use, easy to maintain, easy to thread, reliable, built to last, UK support, UK customer service, then I think that's the only machine you'll, you'll use. You'll be set, you'll be set. And it's not just for dressmaking, home decor, soft furnishings, absolutely superb. There's a DVD you can watch, there's online videos. You can even do FaceTime with the customer service team if you've got a specific question that you want to say, what's this for? Or actually show, or if you want to show your overlock and say, why, is it, why does it look like this on the back? You can't describe that. Sometimes you need to show it and you've got that support. Yeah, absolutely. So the amount of times, obviously, absolutely. I'm on the end of the phone as well. I'm yeah. on the end of email. I get off the even get... talk to Gary. Yeah, absolutely. We're all there and obviously we're all passionate all right. with it as well. So, yeah. Check out your baskets, please. Check out, check out. All now, right. well done if you have, by the way. You've <laughs> yes, got an amazing please. overlocker winging its way to you. So, yeah. Now, well done if you checked out on the DX7, an absolutely fabulous sewing machine. It really does it Thank all, Gary. It, that is it. So it's whether you're a quilter, a patchwork, whether you're a dressmaker, whether you do soft furnishings, whether you're using it for business, whether you're using it just for home pleasure, there's nothing better than having a tool that just does the job for you. Yeah. You say there's so much frustration out there of... So, and it's not just a sewing machine side, it's whatever. It's whether you buy the wrong power tools, it's whether you buy the wrong 
golf clubs or something like that, it doesn't matter. If you haven't got the right tool for, which makes you comfortable, mm. again, it's more likely you're not going to use it as much. The more you enjoy something, the more you use it, the easier it is to justify. Yeah, totally but also, agree. having a machine you can grow into rather than growing out of, to me, is very, very important on there. So I think that's very true. That's it. For the quilters, you've got then all your, your quilting feet, your walking feet, your free motion feet. Again, very, very easy to use. For your dressmakers, obviously, we're putting the extra dressmaking set which is the ninety pound bonus? Yeah, and you've got. I'm just going to come over and join yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. You've got your gathering foot, your narrow zip. Yeah. Bias binder. Bias binder on there. We've got a button sew on foot. We've got a double piping foot, which is Love lovely. That. The roll hem foot as well. The concealed zip foot. So that's concealed the extra zip. package on there. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. I get asked about that all the time. You're not paying for any of those feet. All of those feet are added in for free. That's £97.60. pence For free, you're welcome. You also get a knee lift. You also get an extension table. A car cover on there Gary, as for well. Me, a nice solid cover. The fact that you get a walking foot, darning foot, quarter inch foot and a Teflon non-stick foot. Bag makers, hello, need I say more? It's amazing. Please, Gary, could you tell us about free motion on the DX7, please? <laughs> I love that, because what have I just picked out of the bag? Because this is one of the questions the I get foot. asked a lot on there. Yep. So what I'm going to say, what I'm, first of all, what I'm going to say, and obviously it's what we've been used to over all these years, we would use a dining foot. Yep. This is not a dining foot. This is a free motion foot. What is the difference? Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's it. What is the difference? Well, that stopped me in So, no, that's all right. Well, because say that's what we always use was a darning foot. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. A darning foot, generally, when you put it onto the machine, it hops, it bounces, yes. and you move around. This floats. Ah, so on there. gotcha. And we've got an adjustable screw on the top. So, and that's a height adjustment. So I can I can nice. also adjust the foot the foot on the machine for yep. a different height, depending on there. But I've also got an adjustment on the foot as well. Because sometimes we use very thin waddings. Sometimes we use really thick, puffy waddings as but well. But also very much at the moment, things like thread painting and that, where right. we're texturising, <coughs> using layers and mm -hmm. things like that, where you will be different mediums, different heights will be needed that way. <laughs> very much so. So what <coughs> I'm going to do, the Makes walking sense. foot and the free motion foot screw into place. All the others do just clip on and off is what we be used to normally on there. So once that's on, uh, the table I'm just going to take off to show, first of all, yes, there's the free arm. It does come with a nice free arm. <coughs> and then you've got your extension tray with your accessories, which goes on to give a flat bed as well. So here we've got our drop feed. Push that across. Again, teeth, away you go on there as well. Nice, good, clunk, mechanical sound. Yeah, you on know it's one. happened. You know it's happened on there as well. And if you ever, ever start sewing on your sewing machine and nothing's feeding, check that you haven't pushed that switch because I felt it myself and thought, what have I done? Oh, and then I it. thought I was doing free motion quilting. It's fine, it's fine. I definitely, we've all been there, done that, absolutely. Now you're putting in a hoop, but you don't need yeah. to, do you? No, not at all. There's lot. You speak to 10 different people there tell you 10 different ways they yeah. do it. Some people use gloves, some people use horseshoe grips, some people use hoops. It's, it's some down people to just the individual. do not have the sort of sticky sticky fingers, <laughs> I oh, call it. it. Yeah. But some people <clears throat> really don't and they, just and they can't. can't get so a hoop will do it. With the grip it gives you that handle. It gives nice. you that. But I like also that. Uh, if, I, until you, if you're a beginner, mm -hmm. I, I would recommend the more you can support the fabric, the better. Fair enough. Again, as we know, what the biggest downfall for free motion embroidery is when the fabric hops. Right. That's what gives you loops of stitching, that's what makes you miss stitches. Folds, like tucks, that. things exactly, like that. Exactly, yeah. So the more you do freehand embroidery, the more you end up tensioning the fabric yourself. You know how to control it that way. Yeah. So as a beginner, I find that great because it just tensions it all fours and yeah. gives us handles. Yeah. So I'm also going to unplug the foot control. So, oh, I am not a freehand embroiderer. Okay. Don't get me wrong, I play, I dabble, um, but when it comes to actual creating as such, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to have to say George is the man on that. He, okay. His portraits are coming on absolutely fantastic. Are they? I like the it. The last one he did of me. The last one he did of me wasn't great, so I will say that. Well, but, Gary, I... Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, do you need to turn the machine around? No, so I'm going to really? do it like this okay. as well. Okay. So, using the start-stop button, but I'm going to... Set the speed to about three quarter. I'm going to go, obviously, it's just onto normal straight stitch on there, because a lot of time, the slower you go with free motion yep. embroidery, the jerkier it is. Yes. So you want to keep a nice constant flow. Yeah. So having the right machine, because technically any machine will freehand embroider, yeah. but there's some of them which won't, really won't do well because they're not smooth enough. Yeah. You want the smoothness. Gary, having taught hundreds of free motion machine quilting classes, I can't agree with that more. Absolutely. All you machines know are that. not. All <laughs> machines are not 
equal, and that is a plain and simple That's right. back. It's the very much to do with the drive, the yeah. belt tensioning, and obviously the bobbin systems as well, all that combination. So if we, and also the foot control, sometimes foot controls are not sensitive. They speed up, they slow down, so that. So all I'm gonna do, obviously I've just dropped the feed. I've not touched any of the threading or anything like that. I'm not playing yep. the tensions. No, you don't need to change the tension. You don't have to do anything like that at all. And again, we've got a start stop button on here. Oops, I keep pressing, sorry, pressing the screen there. Just gonna press start and then draw with it. So obviously I'm doing it from behind to get out of the way. You are pretty good at that actually, Gary. <laughs> I can do, I like my squiggles uh, on that. So obviously whether you're then making designs, layering, obviously doing like the vermicelli stitching and things like Listen that. Listen to you, I love it. Oh, yeah. and, but the machine itself just glides, it yeah. really does. I can see it's gliding. Yeah, and then just stand that, turn it off and then yeah. press the thread trimmers on there. So we're just gonna cut that, take that off like so. So what we're gonna do, so you have a look at the front and I know exactly what we're gonna do now from there as what we have to do is we have to turn it over. Very nice. <laughs> this is where you finished that's off. That's well, because I'm doing it from the back. It Very up. nice. But you see, there's no eye lashing. No. Or anything like that. Yeah. Obviously, that's just me standing behind it doing it as well. So it's not the easiest of positions. So turning it into free motion embroidery, again. This is where you finished off. It's, it's all about the smoothness and the machine, as you can hear and feel, it, it yeah, doesn't yeah. conk, it doesn't jerk around at all. It's absolutely. very smooth. So, no, absolutely can brilliant. I have a little go? You please do, absolutely. Can I turn it around though? Yeah, yes, and get comfortable <laughs> with it. Obviously, I'm more used to using it the other way Whoops. than that way. <laughs> well, just rip it apart, there we go. go. Can I just plug the foot pedal? Yeah, I do yeah. like a yeah. foot pedal, I'll be honest with you. Uh, so you lift, you press the foot, the extra high in you go, yeah. and then away you go. So lower press. Lower the foot. press the foot, of course. Oh, uh, on there, on here as well. You can do it on there. That's, that's it, it, right? Ah, oh, there we go. Oh yeah, and it's a different feeling it, actually. Well, you're going to put me completely to shame on. Because it's gliding. It's so smooth, isn't it? It's and a different it feel. That fabric's not going to hop or move at all because the height is perfectly correct on there. It's definitely, and you can really feel that it is gliding. And that's Whoa. exactly what you need for freehand, as you yeah. know, for the freehand Love that, love that. So um, it is brilliant. definitely a different feeling. It glides over the surface of the work rather than hopping around. So you can definitely feel that. It's got no vibration through the machine as well. You've no. got more control over it. Obviously your visual as well is a lot better because you've not got a piece of metal or plastic bouncing around in front mm, of you. So, amazing. Yeah. And this is the same machine that we saw earlier sewing through nine layers of eight ounce denim. <laughs> so that's the Isn't it? And that's what yeah. we should be able to do. Move from your creative sewing, move exactly. to your soft furnishing, move to your dressmaking. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely incredible. I'm impressed, Gary. Thank it you very takes much. Quite a lot to impress me, but that impressed me very much. And your free motion quilt. And indeed. <laughs> impressed me too. Well done if you've already checked out on your DX7. Superb machine. Just had a go. It was lush. Um, great price point. Great price point. This is what I would consider to be a mid-level machine. Well, certainly now, as we know with machinery, there's two levels of machinery. One lot is really getting budget, 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 yeah. because they are just being chucked together and made of plastic. Right. Or you can get that real high-end computer level embroidery systems machines, trying to do everything yeah. uh, on there. Or you've got high-end mechanical quality sewing. Absolutely. And this is where I would put this into that higher-end mechanical yes. quality. And it's very important I say mechanical, even though people look at it and think it's computerized, the, the foot system, even though it's got a needle, uh, a button you can press on that, it's all connected to a complete mechanical yeah. system. So I can got a foot lifter as normal. Old uh, school like quality. I've got a tension dial. Old got, school <laughs> quality. Exactly it. Julia's yeah. got in touch from Dorset. Morning, she says. Morning, my darling. Good morning. Bought this earlier this morning. Can't wait for it to be delivered. Wonderful. Thank you both, Julia. Yep. So they're in the warehouse. We'll be with you in a couple of days. Then. Yeah. Absolutely, indeed. Amazing. Yeah. And you're going to jump on, Julia and just have the best time. If this is sitting in your basket, don't miss this opportunity. This is a great opportunity to get a wonderful machine, a high-end, 
beautiful quality machine that can free motion quilt, that can do beautiful top stitching through nine layers of thick denim or so the lightest crystal organza with ease. It can gather, bag making, quilting. You get your walking foot. You're not going to have to buy anything else unless you want something incredibly specialist. You've got a concealed zip foot. You've got a piping foot. Uh, so many, so many features. The bias binding attacher, the ruffler, the open-toed embroidery foot, uh, just superb. And something which is brand new to me, that free motion quilting foot. Not a hopping foot, not a darning foot, but a free motion quilting foot. And that, of course, as well, would be superb for, you know, kind of Helen Newton style applique or Janet Clare style applique, where you're free motion stitching around raw edge applique. All of that thread painting. I mean, whether it's simple dressmaking, and basic patchwork, fabulous. Curtains, blinds, or if you want to do real like art pieces, experimental thread painting, you can do all of that. Uh, real machine to grow with, I feel. Gary, absolutely wonderful. Wonderful, thank you. I'll just show on here, just on. one other, just that extreme of something again. Yep. So this is coming very, very popular at the moment. This is proper hide leather. I was going to say, so is that is, suede? Yeah, it is. A, it is actually wow. a proper hide on there. Yeah. So on that it's hide. Yeah. So straight off. So it's real tough, real thick, real heavy. And if you, if you look at that, I've just done that real reinforced. Heavy Christine is there. Show me the back. There. Excellent. I like that. And actually, was that the back or was that? I wasn't, Christine. I just I don't wouldn't know. know. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter because it's all perfect. Gary, well, if I open that up, you are an absolute prince of men. Wonderful. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much for your amazing expertise. Anytime. Well done if you've got Thank your you. DX7. Well done if you've got your incredible MO1000 overlocker. Gary, superb to have your company today. Thank you, and it's a pleasure as always. And see Thank you soon. You. Thank We're you. We're going to nip to a quick break. When we come back, it's Yarn Lane and Sam Sabido is here. I'll see you after this. Follow Sewing String on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! Back by popular demand... Introducing the one, the only, Gemporia Festive Ball. Party with your favourite presenters from Gems TV, Hobby Maker, Jewelry Maker and Sewing Street. We're all together for a night that's going to be the talk of the town. Situated at the fabulous Stratford Manor, close to the world famous Stratford-upon-Avon. Tickets are just £99 per person, including a welcome drink, a three-course dinner, half a bottle of wine and music that'll have you dancing all night long. There'll also be a shop at the party and even a tombola if you're feeling lucky. 
Numbers are limited, so order your tickets today to avoid disappointment. Let's make it a night to remember at the Gemporia Festive Ball on Saturday the 25th of November. See you there. Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. If you're a Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times, or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy myself something fabulous. Welcome to Yarn Lane. I'm Stuart Hill and this is Sam Sabido. It is so good. So nice to see you. It's been ages. It's been ages. It's, it's been really too long. long. Yeah. So good to have you back at Yarn so Lane. So nice to be back. You've been so super, super busy. I have. And you oh, are creating yeah. some amazing crochet oh, projects. Thank you. My goodness me. This brand new shawl has been flying out today. Well done if you've already got it on pre-order. Uh, well done you. Four beautiful colourways, yeah. a gorgeous shawl. It is really beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. We're going to start, we're going to leap straight in with this because it's been so busy. Brambles, this is the one right in front of me. I'm going to grab the finished sample. This is beautiful. Could you take one of course in I can, for me? Yeah. How gorgeous is this? <laughs> Very long, isn't it? <clears throat> Now this is bramble, as the name suggests, like bramble jelly or bramble yeah, jam. Yeah, blackcurrants, blackberries, yeah, that Gorgeous. kind of thing. The photo on the web has been updated, but it's not been updated for everyone. You might need to refresh your screen. If you've um, checked out the wrong colourway by accident, just ring our call centre and they'll swap it around for you. It'll be no extra uh, cost. There's no cost for the call. This is bramble. This is absolutely delicious. It's lovely, isn't it? It's just... Yeah, it's just a really, that plum at the bottom there with the edging is just Gorgeous. Yeah. Well, the self-striping yarn through yeah. the main shawl, beautiful. Yeah. Are those trebles? They are trebles and you've got that sort of, I've got it, technically I guess it's a polygon, but I was sort of thinking along triangular. So you've got, it comes, it grows in a sloping way here. Yep. Then you work in just no increases, so just a straight line across here. And then you get to the end Stuart's at and you do decreases. Mm. Perfect. So you've got a very narrow, triangular-ish shawl. And the reason I did that shape is because we often talk about how to wear a shawl. Right. And I wanted something you wear much like a scarf. Mm. So I know a lot, of, a lot of shawls and shawls I've designed, they're lovely, but they can be a lot around your neck. So I wanted something that you could wear in several ways. It had that beautiful edging and still looked beautiful. And we do actually have a picture of a gorgeous lady called Sam wearing one of your <laughs> shawls. Here she is. There I am, modelling in my garden. Are. So, you know, the idea is you can really play about how you wear it, but if you start with the principle of a scarf, yep. you don't have all that bulk that you get with a shawl. So if you no. start by draping it around you, and then I would tend to just sort of throw it over one shoulder. Yeah, absolutely um, gorgeous. You can wear it with just like so. It's very long, as you saw. Mm. Or you can have both ends sort of poking around. Like yeah, so gorgeous. There's so many different ways to wear it. Once it's too versatile. 
This beautiful colorway bramble is very, very popular. More than a quarter of the stock's already gone. We're literally a couple of minutes into the show. If you want bramble, I think you're gonna need to be quick. It's that beautiful purples. There's some kind of slaty blue gray in there as well. And then that amazing damson color crocheted along the edge. But level wise, what sort of level crochet? It's are? actually, it, it's one of those brilliant projects that looks really complicated, but it's actually quite straightforward because as you you said you've got the trebles so you start with your color changing yarn you're working your just rows of trebles you start with that I will demonstrate this obviously in a minute mm -hmm. but you start with a small triangle and then it gets bigger and bigger um, and then you as I say you work just single rows so it's just rows to start with and then you've got the edging which again it's eight rows that gradually build up this lovely lacy look so it's much more straightforward than it looks, mm -hmm. which I love projects like that. Yeah. So I think it's the sort of thing you could easily make several of these as Christmas gifts in the time. Oh, OK, superb. Now. And Christmas. as long as maybe I'm a confident beginner, yeah. I could tackle this project. Absolutely. Because yeah. you are superb at explaining what to do. <laughs> so I think that's quite a confidence boost. Yeah, absolutely. Now, once you've checked out over half of Bramble has sold out, you will need to be quick. Look at all that gorgeous yarn, plus an exclusive pattern. You can't buy the pattern on its own. Now, the next one that I'm wearing, this is called Lakeside. I'm instantly drawn to Lakeside. I just love the blues. blues it's going to go with everything I own. Yeah, absolutely. Really very um, Now, there. again, the image got a bit confused on the internet. But if you thought Lakeside purple, is that right? You were right, it's wrong. <laughs> um, Lakeside is all these gorgeous blues. You'll get these blues. If that's not the colour that you wanted and you pre-ordered, just go on to customer services. Give customer services a ring and they will swap it over. It's a free phone number. It won't cost anything to swap it either. All right, so this is Lakeside. Lakeside, yes, as you were saying. I was thinking of Winter Lakes. So the idea is they've all been, it's called Shades of Winter, the actual design, and then each of the colourways are named after a winter scene. So Gorgeous. that's your lakeside one. Love this. Yeah. And I love self-striping or self-patterning yarns. It's so fun to work with and it's really interesting to work with. So yeah. if you did it in one colour, you might get a little bit bored of the repeats because it is just a for that building up the shape yeah. of the shawl. It is just a standard repeat. Yeah. But it's so fun seeing the I find it so change. motivating it's as well. Really, yeah, I can't put it down because I'm like, I just need to get to the next colour yeah. repeat. A bit addictive, if anything. Yes. Just another row, just another Very row. much so. Let's just hold this one out so everyone can see how beautiful it's shaped and also how the colours appear. Isn't that edging <laughs> superb? So pretty, isn't it? Really pretty. Really pretty. And do you work, can I ask, the the scallops, Yeah. do you work like the same row? Is it all along the full length or yes. do you build up a full scallop? No, you go all along the same length. I have oh, come you. prepared to demonstrate that today. Awesome. So I, I hope to get through a demonstration of that. Absolutely. So, yeah. That's lakeside. That's lakeside. Now, next up, let's do snow scene. You're wearing, wearing snow it. scene. Yeah. This is pretty. It's really pretty, isn't it? So, Yes, so I please. take it off so you can see the yeah. way the colours change. So this is, you've got the beiges, those sort of stone colours. Yeah. And then the rose as the edging. Can I be slightly controversial? Go on. I know that these are wintry and I get that kind <laughs> of, you know, um, uh, sunset in the winter. You know, yeah. But also this is giving me kind of beach vibes as oh, well. Yeah, so it's something you can wear all year round. Definitely. Cool evening walking on the beach. Yeah. This is giving me seashells. Oh, yeah, just and another layer of warmth. Yeah. 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 That's the nice thing about a shawl, isn't it's it? You so can wear pretty. it all year round. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah. Shawls and scarves, you really can wear all year round, can't you? And it's, I mean, the weather out there today is sort of warmish. I is thought it? it was going to be colder <laughs> than it was. But I was just happy to have this round my neck in the car because it was just that I've got just a, a light jumper Cozy. on yeah exactly I didn't mm. want a chilly neck so yeah it was just the right level of that's really beautiful cozy. isn't it need to let you know Bramble and Lakeside half the stock checked out and gone that's already good. already quarter of the stock of snow scene that's the one that Sam is wearing again gone so, a lot more in baskets as well. So, if you want snow scene, yes. you will need to be quick again. I keep saying this, but it's true. Um, very, very popular. 
you keep coming back with great design after well, great design. I, just, I actually did one a year ago that was similar to this, but a different shape that was so popular. So I know from the feedback I've had from customers how much they like this kind of shape. Mm. And look, it was, as I say, it was, it was almost a year ago. I think it was called Wrap Me Up Shawl. And I know lots of people made multiple shawls as Christmas gifts. Right. And I mean, one lady emailed me recently and said she'd made six of them. Amazing. So I just wanted something that was a variation on that sort of design. That was oh, yeah. a new design for you to try. A but new favourite. Knowing that people like that sort yeah, of design. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, composition of the yarn. Is it washable? Can I do it in the machine? Yes, it is washable. Um, yes. But the colour changing yarn has 20% wool in it. Mm -hmm. So it's really soft. So it's 80% acrylic, 20% wool, which makes it really soft. So just a nice cool machine wash. Yeah. Don't just spin be careful. it. And then just shape it. Yeah, just shape it again when you've taken it out of the washing machine. Now, the last colourway that we have is called forest yes woodland but yeah, woodland yeah, beg your pardon yeah, no that's fine no don't, don't let me start <laughs> same, renaming your work <laughs> same meaning <laughs> woodland oh the shades the colors in the self-patterning are so beautiful this, this one is stunning isn't it really lovely so terry ann made this one i should mention it's not me that's made all these four shawls um, Terry Ann made this one. Oh, Terry Ann, great work. It is just beautiful. And I love how the yarns sort of interplay with each other, the different colours and the colour of that edging. What's that edging called, the colour? Opal. Opal. Yeah. So it just, <gasps> yeah, brings out the up that green that comes every now and then in yeah. the shawl. Yeah. It's really, really gorgeous. I really like this one. But you can see me wearing them all on social media. And I was going to say, do you mind wearable. swapping, swapping no, out? Not at all. So we can see this one on. That's why I wore my black top today. <laughs> I can model them all for you. Fabulous. Thank you. I'm going to put um, Damson on while I get the chance before it sells out. Yes. Oh, Bramble, sorry. Sorry, I keep renaming your work. It's outrageous. We're just thinking on the same lines. Purple yes. fruit. <laughs> yes. Single figures on Bramble, single figures on Lakeside. Is it? Is that right? Yep. There we go. Oh, lovely. Really that looks nice. really good oh, on I you. I love this one. I think this might be my favourite. I love them all, but... It's never the one I made that's my favourite. It always ends up being the one I have to give back to somebody. It's very. It's a bit like that with food, though, one. isn't it? My favourite <laughs> meals are the ones I don't cook. Yes, true. So, I don't know. Yeah. But it's, oh, beautiful. Lovely yeah. message for you, Sam. Uh, these colours are beautiful. I can't decide which is my favourite. Oh, thank you. Um, it's really hard, isn't I it? I did a little, um, tal it's like hard. a poll, I suppose, on social media before I came on and asked people on the Yarn Lane fans page which one they like best mm. it was very mixed oh really it's very mixed i think unusual? blue took the edge but no there's of, often a clear winner okay but um yeah blue seemed to take the edge but they are all lovely yeah, they're like. all lovely i think that variegated yeah. color play yarn it, it it does then make it much harder to choose because exactly. you've got lots of your favorite colors yeah and I think, you know, this would be nice with a dress or with a top and jeans. Mm. I've just got myself a new jet denim jacket. Nice for denim Nice. Jacket, so. Yeah. Very nice. And I think the way you can wear it in different ways as well makes it so versatile, yeah, doesn't it? absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Really, really love the shape. Me too. I'm really happy with that. Really love the shape because you can wear it. I like to wear mine m much more around the neck, yes. shorter ends. You can do that, but you can also wear it traditional scarf yeah, style, yeah, can't you? Just kind of yeah, long on one you side and thrown over your you shoulder. Yeah. See, that, that looks lovely that looks too. Nice. Yeah. Does. Very nice. You get a shawl pin or a brooch if you want to hold it in place, but it's long enough that you don't need to. Yeah. So you can just tuck this end that's over my shoulder into the back of the shawl if you want and it secures it. Now, we'll even reach I need to very, very quickly recap Bramble because there are four left. Wow. Four kits <laughs> left and then it's gone. We can't get more of these. So Brambles, four left, 28 99 It's a really good price. It is a good price. I think it's a good price, yeah. For, you get those lovely colour changing yarns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them. And a beautiful yarn. Either make it for yourself or make it as a Christmas gift because we're kind of getting to that time of year, aren't we, with 
Christmas gifts being on everybody's radar. Exactly. So, yeah. And also as well, so many of us now, we don't have that big thick winter coat. We don't wear a big no. winter coat. It tends to be more shawls, wraps, scarves. It's yeah. those soft accessories. Exactly. We're in the car with heating on. We're in a building that's heated. Yeah. This is much more wearable. Yeah, definitely. And you get a lot more wear. Yeah, it's the sort of thing if you go into, well, <laughs> I, I often talk about my um, crochet club that meet on a Friday mm -hmm. in our garden centre cafe. Mm -hmm. And Lovely. the temperature is in there, cake? there is cake, yeah. tea, coffee, Good. lots of gossip. I'm it's there. very fun, yeah. But um, it's really hard to know what temperature you're going to be when you go there. So having something like this, yes. so you can take it on and off, yes. and add a layer, is really helpful, I think. Uh, over 30 of you have got the last two kits in your shopping basket. Wow. <laughs> uh, so please check out, check out, check out. I'm going to take Bramble off because I don't think we're going to see it again, I'm afraid. Let's pop Lakeside back on. I have a few more of Lakeside, but only seven. Oh, see, again, you could wear it like that, couldn't mm, you? That's nice. If you want to oh, really sort of cover your shoulders. A pin there, couldn't you? A or pin a, there. Yeah, a nice brooch or a badge. Or just, again, kind yeah. of scarf style as well. Do you know, I'm going to stick my neck out here and say you could crochet this without the edging or just the plain edging. If you wanted to make this for a man, if you didn't want yeah, to put absolutely. that scallop on, I think yeah. you could just put that edging on. Well, not that the sort of scallop edging would um, stop me wearing it. No, but Sam, you've got. But you're right. You've got. You've got. You've got a couple of rows there. That I'll show everybody. I'd still put those on. Yeah, you would. Yeah, I'd I think still put those that on. Finish. Yeah. And then, like you said, you could just wrap it around your neck once more, and then you've got that more sort of chunky, scarfy look to it. That sort of, yeah. yeah. But I really like it like that yeah, too. I love nice. showing off that bit of colour. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. These are beautiful colours, aren't they? Real kind of like smoky greys and slate and sky and ice and frost. And also as well, that kind of night sky in there as well. But that really special night sky in, this, in the winter. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah they're lovely colors. Mm, gorgeous, this is yeah. lakeside. Demo wise, right. what can you show okay, us? Okay, so I'm going to try, I see what I can get through. I'm going to try to um, show you first of all how you shape the shawl to give you the mm -hmm. idea of the fact it is really simple. Yes, please. And then I'd like to move on to doing a little bit of the edging, yes. so. Let's see how we get on. Okay, so you're going, you start with your colour changing yarn. So as I said, you start um, by making the body of that shawl. So you're going to start with colour changing and really straightforward repeat that's really easy to get the hang of. So I'll start that off for you. So you're going to do a chain of four to start with. Bramble sold out, by the way, which is why I'm removing it, which is a bit of an indication that Lakeside will follow very, very quickly. If you want Lakeside, grab it. Sorry, yeah, Sam. No, that's fine. That's good. OK, so you're going to start with a chain of four and you're going to make one treble in the fourth chain from the hook. So that is the chain that is right up next to where you've got your knot. So you're going to... Just put your yarn over your hook and then put your hook through that first chain. And then you're grabbing the yarn and putting it back through. So you've got three chains on your hook. And then you're going to grab one, your working yarn with your hook and put it through two of the loops and grab it again and put it through the last two so that you've got your first treble made. So then you're going to have a tiny, tiny little triangle, mm -hmm. which doesn't show up very well. Let's put it on the pattern. So you've got a oh, I can see that. chain three and one treble. And that is your short, tiny end of your triangle. Oh, okay. <laughs> I want to yeah. say rectangle, so I apologise if I have. I'm obviously uh, struggling with my two-dimensional shapes it's today. It's hard when there's a bit of a curve on it, isn't there? <laughs> Suddenly yeah. I don't know what shape exactly. it is. Exactly. When you make the um, body of the shawl, you'll notice this sort of triangular shape. So I apologise if I've said rectangle at some point today. <laughs> Get myself muddled. OK, so you're going to do a chain three next and then turn the work. And what you do is you're going to put an increase at one end only of your work. So the increase is going to go in the third of this three chain here. So I've done my um, 
chain three here, my turning chain, which acts as the treble for this post here, which was my last treble that I made. So now I'm going to put two trebles in the third of this turning chain, which is here. So yarn over, hook into that third of that three chain, pull your yarn back through, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. And then again, another one in that same place, so you get an increase at this end of the shawl. Ah, so when you do it in the same place, that's how you increase? That's how you increase, by doing two in the same place. And you can see already, you've got a straight edge here and a sloping edge, like the edge of your triangle mm -hmm. here. So you always increase on the same edge. So you don't want it to be growing on this side. You'll see a bit more as I go a bit mm -hmm. bigger. Chain three again. You always chain three when you do trebles before you turn it. And then we want to increase again on this side that's growing outwards. So you're going to put a treble in the stitch at the base of where you just made that chain three. Mm -hmm. So let's just get make sure I'm under the camera. So the treble is going in here. So you've got your chain three and that's your stitch. And again, that's going to be an increase. So for that very first stitch, you're making an increase. And then you're going to put a treble in the next stitch. And a treble in the third of your three chain. So you've got your flat edge here and your Curved. sloping, yeah. Yeah, yeah, curvy sloping edge growing here. So we're now on the flat edge, and this is all written in the pattern, so don't worry. So we're doing a chain three and turning it, and then not working into the stitch at the base of that chain three, because we do not want to increase on this edge. This is the flat edge, the straight edge. So you don't work into the stitch at the base. Instead, you're going to skip that because this chain three acts as a stitch for that one and do a treble in the following stitch. Gotcha. So when you're working from the straight edge, you don't do an increase. When you're working from the triangular edge, you do. One treble in the following. And that brings me to the third of the three chain and I'm going to put two trebles in there because I'm at the slopey edge. So I just want an increase. And every row, you'll end up with one more stitch. So again, I just want to be consistent. Mm -hmm. You've got your straight edge here. You can see how your triangle at this moment is growing. Yeah. And A message for you, Sam. <laughs> Good afternoon. The colours of the yarn are beautiful. And the shawl looks sharp. The shawl can't speak <laughs> and the shawl looks amazing variegated yarns also quickly weave into amazing patterns they, they really do. do they really do that's maria thank you marie beg your pardon uh, another message this is from lynn i found sam as a complete beginner and have now done a few of her beautiful kits they are all fabulous love lynn from hemel hempstead hi is lynn that hemel? that's yeah and lynn did find me through yarn lane and now ah. comes to my friday club that i just oh, mentioned brilliant. But, at the garden center yes with cake and tea exactly yeah i haven't seen her for a few weeks because she's been a little bit unwell but i hope to see you soon lynn oh, thanks okay, we'll for that not still yeah okay so chain three again and now because we're on the increase, we're going to turn it. And you can see we're on the sloping side, not the straight edge. So you need to put an in increase. So you do work into that stitch at the mm -hmm. base of that chain three. So that's the difference. It's all written into the pattern and that is growing it by one stitch always at this end, mm. at this side, so that you grow it outwards. One treble into everyone along. See, I'm a real novice and I could do this because you're working into the, the space, aren't you? It's not, I always find it so easy, so difficult to find where the stitch it needs is. to go. It is, it is difficult. It's actually the, into the stitch. Into the and stitch. It, yeah, but it is, if you get your tension right, it's easy to find that stitch. So if you are struggling to find the stitch, I always suggest going up a hook size. Ah, because it's too tight. It's likely it's too tight mm. and that's why you're struggling because with crochet, it's actually quite a loose, uh, yarn skill compared mm. to knitting right so you want to be working more loosely than you do with the knitting needle gotcha and therefore it should all quite it should be quite easy to see where the stitches are 
So I'm on the flat edge, I'm on the straight edge again. Mm -hmm. So I don't work into that stitch at the base of the three, the three chain. Um, I'm going to go straight into the following stitch. So I don't want an increase on this edge. And hopefully you can start to see how that triangle builds outwards. So all you're doing is increasing on the same end every row. So I'm coming up to the third of the three chain. So this is the triangular row that's sloping outwards. Put two in there. So this is where you put two into the this same place. This is where space. you put two in the same place. Chain three. And we're still, when I turn it, we're still on the slopey end, so we're just working back down. Mm -hmm. So we need another increase. So we put a stitch into the stitch at the base of the three chain. So we're always increasing, and it's always on the end that is growing outward, that's making your triangle shape. Got mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with my brain at the moment. <laughs> I've got a massive block between triangles and rectangles. Okay, and then you just put, wow, look, look, the colour's oh, changing, oh, very hello. exciting, very exciting. But we have colour to stop change. now, Sam. <laughs> keep going, oh, keep no, going. Can't stop. I need to see this pink coming through. Now, okay. do need to do a quick stock update, I think, on Lakeside. Lakeside, I've only got seven kits left. I'm going to grab Lakeside and just remind you of those beautiful blue shades, soft smoky greys and slaty blues. Gorgeous, there's over 40, there's 42 actually oh, baskets wow. okay. or seven. <laughs> so I know you want to watch the demos, but this is where the last remaining few kits can slip away and you don't even notice. So if you want to get lakeside, grab it now. The one we're working with right now, this is winter scene, over half the stock's gone. But again, we've got 40 odd in baskets, which we do not have. So again, if you want this version, winter scene. Snow scene. Snow scene. Snow scene, yeah. So close, but no cigar. <laughs> I'll have to and consult then, with you next time I name them. No, not them. at all. Your names are much better. I just, and then woodland. Yes. Woodland, is yes, that right? Yes, woodland. Which you're wearing. <laughs> yes. Again, lots in baskets, um, beautiful greens and blues here. A real kind of nature lovers palette. Definitely, I think. definitely. Um, Hannah, our producer said, I see myself wearing that for dog walking. Definitely. She doesn't have a dog, Sam. Oh, okay. She doesn't <laughs> have a dog. Just go for a walk so you can wear the shawl. <laughs> exactly. It's an excuse to go for a walk. No, she'd buy a dog just for the shawl. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's good. Don't do Priorities, that, Hannah. Right, crochet before, <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> Okay, so, okay to continue, Please. yeah, so I'm um, just, I've shown you the increase, hopefully that's clear, if not, don't worry, it's all written into the um, pattern, and then you will, here's my, here's one I prepared earlier, Lovely. you will then move on to just working one treble into every stitch along, and you can see where, it, yours will obviously be bigger than this, this is my mini sample, mm -hmm. but you will work it so that You've got your sloping edge, and it keeps going much further in the actual pattern. Then you do just one treble in every, every so you stop de uh, increasing. Mm -hmm. You don't add a stitch anymore every row. You just do one in every row, and that gives you this look. So this is the, the shape I was trying to describe sure. to you. So, and then after you've done a certain number of those rows, which I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's in the pattern, you then start decreasing. Oh, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it, trapezoid. Oh, is that, that the roof of the house, isn't it? Yeah. It's a straight bottom, and then the two sides come up, and then there's a bit of a straight bit in the middle. Okay, so it's yeah. a trapezoid. Yes. That sounds knowledgeable. I still sort of thought <laughs> roof of house first. It's probably why I'm getting muddled between a rectangle and a triangle, because it's kind of like the three, two it's triangles. Both bolted then. together. Yeah. <laughs> you were always it right, looks Sam. Great. <laughs> it looks awesome. It looks awesome. Okay, so. <laughs> Don't ever teach geometry. I know, Joe, I was a primary school teacher, would you believe? I know, me I too. Know. <laughs> I don't know where all that memory's I, I gone. I pity those children I have four who children I that I should do. <laughs> If Never I mind. didn't know the answer, I just made it up and said it with confidence. <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry, everybody. <laughs> oh, dear. OK, so now I'm ready to show you how to do the decrease. So for the decrease, you're going to do a chain one. So we want to bring it back down in an even way. Mm -hmm. So you get that sort of triangular, whatever we call it, yes. shape. 
So you want to bring it back down. If I just bring my hook uh, over like so, mm -hmm. like that. So yeah. chain one, turn it. So not chain three? Not chain three in this instance, because you're now going to treble two together. So you put your yarn over, you're going in that st stitch at the base, mm -hmm. so next to the chain one. So that place where we were increasing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So now we're starting a decrease in there. So yarn over into that stitch, pull back through. Like you've started a treble, you'll get three loop loops on your hook. Yarn over through two of them and leave two on there. Now you're going to work into the next stitch. So a decrease in crochet is called a treble two, in, with a treble decrease, called a treble two together. You're joining two together. So yarn over into that next stitch, pull back through yarn over through two, which leaves three loops on your hook, yarn over through all three. So that is joining those two stitches together. together. And already you can see the slope that makes. Mm. And then you just continue with one treble into every. So I, I, because I want to get on with the edging, I probably won't do too much more, but you've seen how to do that. Is that okay if I just yeah, for pause sure. there? But you can see basically with your decrease, you decrease at the end of every row and you decrease on the same end that you increased on. Yeah. So if, you want, want, if you're not sure how to do the decrease, you can watch that tutorial back. But it's a bit like did. doing half of the first treble yeah. and then doing it the second exactly one that. and bringing the two exactly together. Exactly that, yeah. That and makes it's perfect written, sense. In the pattern, I've written how to do it as well. So you've got that. So perfect. hopefully... Yeah. But because I'm very keen to show you how to do the edging, I think it's, it'd be more useful to move onwards. Please. So... Might be ace. Might be ace. So the first two rows for the... I will need to open my pattern now. Because... Um, I just want to make sure I read it to you correctly. So for the first two rows of the edging, you're just working into the end of the row and you'll get this block of colour mm -hmm. where you've made a certain number of stitches. So these are just double crochets here. Let me just pull my... Have to, hang on a minute, where's it gone? I made that loop massive loop so it doesn't come out. <laughs> I can't. That's it. So what I've done before I came along, it's just worked rows one and two of the edging, which is just double crochets. I'm going to demonstrate a double crochet now anyway, mm -hmm. into the end of the rows. It gives, that's the point where you could stop if you didn't want the frilly edging. So you've mm. still got a nice edge on it, but it's not the, um, I sort of call it floral in my mind. It's not that sort of lacy edging. Mm. So you're now going to do a chain one and turn it and you're going to make one double crochet into each of the next 10 stitches. Make that nice and clear. So with double crochets, you do always work into the first stitch because that chain one doesn't count as a stitch. So the first stitch is here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put a double crochet in there. That's number one. And a double crochet in and all the way until I've got to 10. So that's three, four, so for a double crochet, there's no yarn over, it's just straight in, pull the yarn back through, gives you two loops on your hook, yarn over through them both. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Now you're going to start creating those little loops that we've got at the edge of the shawl. So you then do a chain six in the air, so this might seem odd, like so. And then you're going to go straight back down to your double crochets and starting in the next double crochet along, make one double crochet in each of the next 20. Okay. So just continue. I'm looking at the shawl <laughs> and I'm actually seeing what you're doing. Can I just bring this in? So, so I'm seeing that you've done this bit here. This is your first, was it six? Uh, well, it's a bit low, it it's, it's 10. 10, ten double crochets with. there. Yeah. And then you've gone up in the air, and that's here, isn't it? Yeah, and that has made just a little loop it's like that, that you then work those stitches in. Makes sense. Yeah, so you Makes get, it's sense. really, it's fun. I won't be able to, I don't think I'll be able to show you all of it, but I can at least give you the idea of how it comes together. Sometimes so, it's just that foundation exactly, row or two, isn't it? And exactly. then it makes sense. Yeah. So I'm coming all the way along. I am going to make 20. Let's have a look. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 
19, 20, and then you do the same thing again. You chain six, just sticking up into the air, and then you're going to start, and this, because I'm at the other end, I'm going to do 10. As you work along, you'll have 20 gaps between each of your loops. Mm. But for now, I'm doing one into each. Do you have 10 at the very far end as well? Very, 10 at either end, gotcha. but 20 between those little loops gotcha. as you go along your yeah. whole shawl. Just along the whole So that is there. your repeat? That is that repeat. Lovely. Yeah, 20 double crochets, chain six, 20 double crochets, chain six, until you get to the very end where you'll just have 10 double crochets. Mm -hmm. So that is row three. For row four, you start to work into those loops. So you chain one, you turn it, and you're going to do one double crochet in each of the next seven. So starting with the very first one. Whoops, five, six, seven. Skip these three. So you don't even really need to worry about counting because you're basically skipping and you're going to start working into this loop here. Oh. So you don't do anything with these last three stitches. One, two, three. We're going into this loop here now. And in there, we're going to make 10 trebles. So back to our trebles, yarn over into that big hole pull the arm back through, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. So you do 10 of those. Oh, see, I'm well into my comfort zone there. <laughs> You're back to your trebles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> trebles and doubles, because I use doubles for joining knitting together. Oh, yes. Double that's crochets. so good for that, isn't Love it? it? Yeah. Love it. I think the thing that's nice about doing it that way rather than sewing is it doesn't pull tight. Sewing when you're joining oh. can pull it tight, can't it? And also it's it? a really decorative finish as well. Yes. Yeah, it I'm does. starting to fall in love with crochet, Sam. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Oh, oh my work here is done. You, honestly, <laughs> though, but, but doing shows together has definitely inspired oh, me. Oh, so nice to hear. You're an encourager. Oh, thank oh, you. Oh, that's lush. Doesn't that look pretty? See, I love that. Already yeah. that looks pretty. It really does. So then you skip the first three stitches. So all I've done, let me just take that out to show you. So what, what you do then is you get that shell look because they lay flat. So skip three double crochet in the fourth, the first one, and then in each of the next 13. So we end up with 14 stitches in the middle here. Right. So you can see just by but doing that skip, it makes it sit really nice and flat. So that was three. So I'm just going to get up to 14. Four. And that will give you just three left at the end. I think I'm really pleased to be able to show you at least a little bit of this because oh, yeah. um, it's one of those things that when you look at it, you're not too sure how to do it. But when you see it explained, it's like, oh, mm. that's much more straightforward than mm. I thought. Mm. And then I'm going to do, get to my next loop and do 10 trebles in there. And that's your repeat for this row. Yeah. Is that smoke coming off the end? I know. Of your <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, this is not. An, I wouldn't call this a comfortable speed to crochet at. I don't crochet like this at home. I'm, See, I'm like just apologising in advance. If you were there on the train <laughs> doing that, I'd be the man staring at your hands. <laughs> it's fascinating. I love it. Okay, and then I'm skipping three, and I'm doing one double crochet into each of the last seven. Yeah. And they will do that all the way along, except for the main repeat, it's one into each of the 14, because you've got a bigger mm -hmm. gap. Mm -hmm. And what is going to happen now is every row that you work, you'll do a little bit more to the stitches that are around your loops here, and they'll mm -hmm. change each time. Mm -hmm. So for row five, I'm going to chain one, turn it, make one double crochet into each of the next four, so one, two, three, four, like so, and then skipping straight onto that first treble that I made in the loop. I'm going to make a treble in there and then chain one mm -hmm. and then a treble in the next one, chain one, treble in the following, chain one. Right. So you're just building up this really pretty pattern on this sort of lacy edging here. So always do a chain one this time after your trebles. 
You know, Sam, looking at how you're constructing this now, it's making me feel confident because I've done sort of modified granny squares that have, you know, where, where this part is a half a circle, yeah. where it's a full circle. So I'm starting to see familiarity. Yeah, it's not, you know, it's, like I said, it's one of those ones that looks really technical. It kind of but looked it really a bit isn't. scary to begin yeah, with, absolutely. but it doesn't anymore. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm sure at home you're much, much more experienced crocheters. I'm really, really novice. But if there are any real beginners out there, don't look at this and think, couldn't do it, because... Because, I mean, I can just about do a granny square. But I'm looking at this thinking, I get it. I understand the principle now. That's why our experts come on and demo, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's really useful to see this done because it is so achievable. Yeah. It's really not. The, it looks so technical. But it looks it really like a magic isn't. trick to begin it with. It does, yeah. And it looks, yeah. you know, it looks amazing. So if you're making it as a it gift is amazing. to someone, yeah, they'll amazing. be really thrilled. But yeah. actually, when you come down to breaking it down and working out how to make it, it's really straightforward and it's just such fun because as you work along, you're changing those loops as you go and then the next round you do something else. And yeah. It, yeah, but you're basically working on a format of working into those stitches on that loop. It's really starting to take shape, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And I think once you can, even when you see that first row that changed from the double crochets, you can see then how the scallops form. Yes, exactly. So you can see now, look, they're looking even lacier. Yeah. Have I got time to show the next row? You've got about 60 seconds. Oh, OK. So probably yes, knowing you, Sam. <laughs> yes. Go for it. Do it, oh, do no. it. I'm only going to recap the colours that are left. OK. What I do need to say while you get ready for the last is that so oversubscribed on all of these colours, we just need you to check out your basket. So lingering. Don't let them linger. So. The colourway that we're working with right now, um, you're going to miss out. You're going to miss out. We are oversubscribed. We are oversubscribed on this. You will miss out. So please check out your baskets now. Brilliant. So all I want to really, I, I, did, I can't get to the stage I wanted to get to. You turn it, you chain one, you turn it. And now we don't work into any of the doubles. You're just working double crochet, double trebles. So for a double treble, it's yarn over twice into that stitch that is the first stitch around the loop, chain two. And I think I should, even with those 60 seconds, be able to show you the effect that makes. Of course you can. And that's going to close the gap between the loops because it goes really lacy. And these are English terms. These are English UK yes, terms. UK terms. UK terms. Sorry, not English. Well, UK yeah, terms. yeah. Beg yeah. your pardon. Beg your pardon. So where you do a double treble, which is a taller stitch because it's yarn over twice mm -hmm. into the stitch, pull the yarn back through, which gives you four. Yarn over through, two, two, two. You get that lacier look so you can see that. Yeah, can totally see it. Already, yeah. Love it. Love it. Love how you've demystified that exactly. for us. Exactly, that's what I really wanted to do, so hopefully I've achieved that. Absolutely, in spades. Thank you so much. Now, colourway, colourways, snow scene. That's this one right here. Those beautiful, soft, uh, winter sunset colours. Um, oversubscribed, you need to check out. 28 99 everything you need. Just add your hook in, size-wise. Four millimetre hook. Four mil Four hook. Millimeter Thank hook, yeah. you. Okay, next colourway is the forest, the woodland. That's called woodland. I know that. Yeah. You're wearing it. <laughs> I'm looking for it. You're wearing it. Woodland. Yeah. Beautiful. Single figures on that. May I hold one end and I'll just hold it out. Just gorgeous. Um, so beautiful. Hannah is currently on the internet looking for dogs. She's not really. <laughs> but she did say she had a dog walk in that, and I agree, yeah. it's gorgeous. Very outdoorsy. Lakeside, four not checked out. I'm at about 40 in baskets, but four not checked out. 42, in fact, not checked out, but four left. Four actual kits. Sam, amazing. Thank you so oh, much. You're very welcome. Please do the menu me. for tomorrow. Um, it is John. It is John uh, presenting tomorrow. Uh, let's see the menu. So to start with, it's sewing for children with African wax fabrics. That's a brand new book launch with Adaku Parker, brand new author for us. 
Can't wait to see that. Oh, we have had her on. We've had a dark hill on before, but not with the book. This is a brand new book, Sewing for Children with African Wax Fabrics. Um, at nine o'clock, Kim Sullivan's here with Six Penny Memories. Lots of quilty goodness there. At 10 o'clock, Fabrics and Tools. At 11 o'clock, Kim is back with more Six Penny Memories. And then at 12 o'clock, loads of gorgeous panels. Sam, when are you back? The 6th of November. Special or show. Oh, it is a special yeah. show. You're guesting. I'm guesting that Are day. You? I'm lovely. just going to be guesting that day. Oh, brilliant. But you'd be oh, proud nice of me doing a crochet blanket. Oh, exciting. Check me out. Can't wait to see that. I'm a chancer, aren't I? Oh, that sounds brilliant. Can't wait to see your project too. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, I will leave you there. Uh, see you very, very soon. In fact, I'm back on Halloween, so get ready for spooky times. Uh, see you then. Take care. Goodbye.